Good morning, everybody, and to our viewers online, and welcome to Prescott Hill Climb on this beautiful, sunny Sunday morning here uh, in the Gloucestershire Hills. Um, if you're just joining us, welcome. At the moment, we've just got a bit of a stoppage. Uh, car 705 of Sean Gould just did a bit of a donut up at the top. No problem, didn't hit anything, just spun the car around. So uh, literally, he's coming back down the hill and then we'll get restarted. Now what we're watching here, this is, this is uh, our Sunday morning practice warm up. Uh, following this, the, we will have our first timed runs and our first top 12 British runoff. And uh, there's a close. We have two, two combatants left for the championship. We have Wallace Menges, who's leading at the moment. We have Scott Moran, who's closely behind. And it'll be take a mathematician more than me to figure out all the points after the, the run. So as soon as we have information, we will, we will give it to you. If you're joining us online from various parts of the world, welcome. And thank you for joining us. And if you are spectating here with us today, uh, welcome to this beautiful, uh, it's a beautiful day here. Track's getting warm. I think, got some, I think we're gonna have some good times. Um, competitors yesterday, if you haven't joined us, they had four practice runs yesterday. And the times in some of the classes were within hundreds of a second. So this is really gonna be exciting today. So I hope you stay with us and enjoy it. On the start line right now, I have Graham Wynn in the Gould GRW 59. This car is, uh, is uh, shared. This is Scott Moran, uh, also drives his car, who obviously I've just mentioned is still involved in the championship hunt. So Graham's off to see how he did. Graham actually finished second the second runoff last weekend. Um, his best result to date. Uh, in the car. Bob is a bit of a retirement present and uh, he's actually having the time of his life. He's got Scott in the car this year helping him develop it and just let him loose. So excellent. Now, so you can see on the screen, Graham's just heading up all through the S's, exiting up the S's in the top and off the line uh, in the blue car. That's car 702. That's Lindsay Summers. That's Alex Summers' mum in the AFSP 4T. Now, if you're not familiar with that, this is Alex Summers actually designed and the family built this car and it's the first year out. Uh, in fairness, Alex told me earlier near, he basically built it for his wife and his mom. Well, mom's in the car. Alex is actually driving this car as well today. His regular steed has failed him. So I believe Alex's target is to see if he can get his own design car into the runoff for the first time. So we'll have to wait and see on that. But Lindsay's gone across the top with a 45.18. So that's a, that's a nice tidy practice time for the morning. Um, yesterday they were getting down into the 43s. Uh, we had a couple of 43s and 44. Off the line now is Edmund Burgess in the Gould GR55. He, in the Bugatti T51 uh, competition class there, he's actually the class record, course record holder in the Bugatti uh, that's uh, run here. Um, Prescott Hill Climb is looked after, uh, cared for by the Bugatti Owners Club. So, um, Yes, if you have any interest in Bugattis or anything, please talk to the club officials or if you're online, uh, check out the website for more information on that. So Edmund's doing quite well, already through semicircle, cross the line, this is a good time, 40.11, so that's a quick time. I think I got it my times wrong. We were in the 30s yesterday, so low 30s, so my apologies for that. Susan Young's on the line in the family ghoul, the GR51. Sue used to hold uh, several ladies' records in different hills. Derek, her husband Derek, used to race this car as well. Um, they sort of retired for a couple of years, but uh, they put a had a new engine built for the car, chucked it in the back, and Sue's back out competing again. Uh, Derek is on the Spanners, so out enjoying the uh, the atmosphere and the wonderful world of the British Hill Climb Championship. So she's doing well there. I don't want to say nice and tidy because that's an old uh, cliche, but uh, there you go. And uh, yeah, let's see, she's up the top already. Looking to get into the low 40s, I think. 
and that's Paul Crute uh, in an OMS 28 and it looks like the old one of the old uh, Jaguar uh, Formula One cars well the, he likes the delivery of it but it's actually got a V6 Jaguar engine in the back of it uh, that's uh, highly tuned about as far as you can go with the car so he's up there now this is all for uh, practice Sunday morning practice technically it's their fifth practice of the weekend but the Sunday morning warm-up, if you will, before we get to the we get to the big uh, the big event. So Paul's done a 42.93. That's a nice little tidy run there. And we've got Jack Cottrell, who actually he was uh, got into the runoffs last weekend in a slightly different configuration. Cars with Delara Cosworth. So the front end is a Delara chassis. The back end is kind of like a DJ Firestorm type situation. It's sort of a hybrid car. Um, his dad put it all together. So young Jack's in the car. He's doing all right. Set in purple sectors, so that's all right. And then on your screen is Harry Pick, who's, uh, I think he's transitioning from driving drift cars to this, because he's uh, his driving style is a flamboyant. And so you'll see the car sliding out. He has full control of the car. It's just his driving style. So uh, it makes some of the marshals twitch sometimes, but uh, he's entertaining to watch. So if you see him sliding a bit, it's not like, oh, 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 he's actually doing that on purpose. That's how he turns the car around and slides it across the line with a 4.0.29. So that's a fairly handy time. Next up, we've got Oliver Tomlin. Uh, this is Mom Sanders' car. They've been fighting a bit of a weird engine gremlin in this thing. It keeps shutting itself off here and there, and I think it just... It, I talked to her this morning and I thought that they had it sorted. They were looking at the data, trying to get it fixed, but looks like it's just not quite there yet. So a little bit there, but still Oliver putting in a solid run. Uh, Oliver is Sanders' son uh, in this one. Sometimes the son-in-law drives the car. He did last weekend. Uh, and on your screens now and in Torres coming and heading up toward part. That's Simon Andrews, car 715 in the OMS 28. RPE uh, shares this car with Bernard Kevel, and the two of them are partners. They've been running together for years. Uh, if they don't run this, they get the Formula Ford out and have some fun. So they uh, they enjoy the racing and they're having a good time. And they're always trying to beat each other. I think Bernard had the advantage yesterday over Simon in practice. But uh, there we go. Simon's done a 4.0.65. Now this is Stephen Owen on the track uh, in the OMS 28 RPE. Stephen Owen is the creator and proprietor and builder of OMS race cars. Hence the initials. Uh, backwards, but that's what OMS is. And both Stephen and his wife Lynn are competing this weekend. So it's good to see them out. But lots of OMS cars all over the place with different size engines and several different chassis designs as well. So. If you're looking for something, uh, always check out his website. He's got all sorts of stuff going on there. Well, he's on a 4.0.39. So that's quite reasonable. Terry Graves in the uh, venerable DJ55 XT, the Goulds, had this a long time. Um, the flying electrician. He comes up from uh, down south in the country and is an electrician by trade. So, again, this is all uh, fifth practice or... or Sunday morning warm-up practice, we'll call it this morning. And that rumbling, bumbling, and grumbling, if you can hear, that's Will Hall in his new to him this year, cool GR59J. So this one's the latest chassis. He had to wait a long time to get this. Uh, it's not even painted. That's what the carbon fiber looks like without, you know, when it's finished, it comes out of the molds and put together. So it's a neat looking car. Will's really getting to grips with it and has qualified for a lot of runoffs this year. Uh, been working on just getting the, the development of it and getting comfortable with it. So setting good time and mixing it up with the top runners and a 3687. So that's the first one I've seen in the this morning uh, since I've joined you. So next we've got David Uren on the line just launching off there the Ghoul GR55B. Sometimes shares his car with uh, Wallace Menke's wife, Nicola. She is not competing this weekend. David is on his own. Number six on the car, which means he finished sixth overall in the British Championship last year. 
There's going to be a lot of number shuffling this year. There's a lot to play for for these coveted top 10 numbers. You carry that number for the entire year, wherever you go. So it's 1 to 10. So, uh, yep, so David Aaron, he was actually about second or third quickest yesterday uh, in practice. So really, really going well. And he's done a 36-5-0, so that's a, a nice tidy practice time. Trevor Willis is on your screen in the OMS. I just spoke about that. This is OMS 28 with a big engine in the back. Um, and another, another regular top 10 competitor. As you can see, he was number four last year. Number four last year. So... We will uh, see where he goes in. So we're now looking, if you're just joining us, we're looking at the combatants for the top 10 runoff. These are all cars, all competitors that have been in the runoffs before and they want to be there today. They want to be there for the points action. Off the line is Scott Duran, the only other per only person other than Wallace Menges with a chance in the championship. He's currently second in the championship. He's got car number, a number three on the side of his car. So he finished third last year. Shares this car with Graham Wynn, and he'll be looking. So I've just seen cars go up in about a 36 range, so I think Scott's going to try and go in the same, be looking to go in the same neighborhood. Let's see what he does here. He's already out of the S's, heads up the top, around semicircle, out the other side. Scott, very nice and tidy. A 36-26, so that's, that's, that's right in there, so that's what we're looking for. Next up, we've got Alex Summers. This is the a AFSB 4T. I wish you would change the name on that. I cannot get my letters or numbers right. So his goal, Alex's one target this weekend, is to get this car into the top 12 runoff. It'll be, I believe it'll be the first time he's done it. You know, like I said, his regular firestorm is out of commission. It failed on him last week. There's just no time to fix it. So he's jumped into this to do some more development work. He designed and built this car along with the family. And he's done a 37-27. So he's only, only within a second of there. So the potential is there. Now on the line, we have the current points leader and the defending champion, uh, Wallace Menges, in his Gould GR59M. Um, it's just stalled on the line. You know, Wallace is making everybody wait for this. So, depending on how the runoffs go, we've got two runoffs today for points things. Well, we'll wait and see, folks. You're going to have to stick with us and watch for the day. Because I don't know. Nobody knows what's going to happen. I do know Wallace made it hard on himself. If you count the Shelsey Walsh footage, you know that he had an oopsie. And it took a Herculean task, a combination of the, the Sean Gould from Gould Cars, who built the chassis, and his uh, whole team behind him to get this car up and running again for Loden Park last weekend. So a Herculean effort, and hats off to everybody involved to get that thing going, including fellow competitors. So that's what Hill Climb's all about. Nobody wants a gimme, everybody wants it fair and square, straight up dog bike right to the end. Uh, so Wallace is just coming around the top. Let's see what he does. So everybody's been floating in the 36. He's done a 37.03, but uh, he's in the ballpark. He's just looking to qualify. Next up on the line, number five last year. Might be a better number this year. Matthew Ryder, young Matthew Ryder, shares his car with Sean Gould. And we just saw Sean before we just got on. Uh, on air we saw him before I got on. Sean spun it backwards in semicircle, but didn't hit anything that. So wasn't a problem just more of a, an embarrassment it was only practice so um, that's what practice is for a little bit of a drift for Matt coming out of Harden and he's heading through the S's coming out the other side so everybody's playing around in the low 36's so except for Wallace did a, and Alex are in the 37 so let's see what Matt does here he does a 36.47 puts him right in the mix there next up Coming up now, we've got Amanda George in the Chevron B19. So we've jumped into the uh, classic sports car class. We've got some beautiful uh, classic race cars coming up here. This is the Chevron. It's a B19. Amanda George behind the wheel on this one. And it's got a 1975cc engine in it and shares the car rich with Richard George. So. The Georges are sharing this car this weekend. Amanda's gone up the hill first. 
beautiful sports car. Even looking at the dashboard, it's got all this um, whizzy finished aluminium and traditional gauges and everything. It's quite uh, it's, it's beautiful. Uh, 48.86 for Amanda in her practice run. Next, we've got Andy Tippett with a Brabham BT30X. Now, this car is built in 1969. It was the test mule for all the Brabham development parts for their Formula One, Formula Two uh, racing series. It never raced on the circuits. It was only the test mule, but once they were done with it, it took it hill climbing. It's always been a hill climb car. It originally had a Coventry Climax V8. It, that didn't work so well, so they went to the uh, Rover V8, which was the Buick V8 for America. So he set a nice time. He was actually the leader in this class yesterday by a little bit, so consistently just that little bit quicker. Next we've got on the circuit is Grant Cratchley in a Brabham BT21B. Um, and that's followed by BT21, which follow along and we'll try to figure that out. So um, on screen now, just coming up to pardon, is Martin Jones in the Brabham BT21. That car was built as a Formula 2 car, but it's got a Formula 1 gearbox on the back of period because the car was built for uh, a driver uh, for hill climbing, but in the future, uh, that driver actually ended up in Formula One. And I can't remember the name, so I'll get yelled at later. So Martin's heading up to the top of semicircle, and on your screens now we have Ro uh, go heading into part. That's Robin Johnson in a Tiga SF83. Uh, little car. Uh, Tiga chassis has been around for a while. Um, I remember them in the 80s. Uh, they built a um, sports car chassis, sort of like Le Mans type prototypes, but they made the smaller one. They did the C2 class. Uh, we had them in, Amer in North America when I was racing over there, and uh, back in the 90s and the 80s. And uh, yeah, not bad for a 29 year old. Anyway, Robin's headed across the line with a 47.61. Right. So, theoretically, there should be some more cars somewhere. Hello, Owen. Ah, Benoit. Greetings, sir. Greetings, everyone. Um, I'm Benoit here at the top of the hill uh, overlooking Etteris in Pardon. I've got a wonderful view. A lot of spectators in front of me. Uh, it's going to be a great day of racing. It's a dry day, so no rain today. We'll see uh, what we can do. It was so close yesterday, and I was looking at the time uh, for the top 10 runners. They were about seven tenths within each other uh, so some great competition again uh, to be seen today yeah absolutely uh, Benoit, we're gonna have a great day's racing here um, if, you, if you're just joining us uh, your commentators today will be myself Owen Benoit and Chris Ponsford will be joining us and we're gonna be rotating in and out all day so when you get fed up with one of our accents we'll change it for you so we're going to be rotating around in and out. So hopefully you'll enjoy the day. And uh, we'll try to keep you as informed as possible or pretend we know what we're on about, whichever way comes first. On your screens and in front of you, if you're on the Spectator Hills, is Simon Braithwaite in the Ford Escort RS 1600. We're in the, these are the historic uh, cars. Um, yeah, over to you, Ben. Yes, um, Simon, uh, the only car in this class uh, this weekend, um, and uh, Simon, uh, just uh, having a chat with him this morning, was looking to get under the four, 50 seconds, looking to get into the 40s, uh, so let's see if he can do that today. Um, he posted a 50.40 um, on his third run uh, yesterday, so I'm sure we'll get there uh, today, so 50.59 for Simon. Yeah, not quite there, but it's only practice, and he's warming up. Um, the purpose of this morning practice is to get everybody warmed up and everything before the time runs. Matt Clark is on the hill in, you know, if there's a motorsport event in the UK, you must have a, at least one mini available for competition. It would be wrong not to have one. Matt Clark, beautifully prepared car and very quick wheelman in this car as well. Yes, and it has to has do all the right noise. It has to whine. It has to be a bit, uh, a bit of a clunky idle and uh, when he was warming the engine this morning what a beautiful sound 50.39 from Matt Clark yeah yeah it's got to sound like it's falling apart to be fast I think Tom Magarossi in a Renault Twingo 133 is nearly at the top of the hill um, 
And this is a, a handicap class. These are all uh, various competitors, and, and they use handicap. And on your screen right now, and coming up to part, is Martin Saunders in a Ford Escort Mark I. And Richard George is in the family Chevron on the line. Yes, uh, if you are watching live the action, uh, this is on page 27 of your program. Um, this uh, this Bugatti Owners Club um, home championship here running at Prescott. If you haven't uh, figured out, this is the Bugatti's home. This is the home of Bugatti's in the UK here at Prescott. All of those cars um, are divided into three categories. The selling cars, the sports cars and the race cars that we're going to see um, later on. And uh, this is a handicap series, so you're competing against yourself, usually your best uh, time, so your personal best on the hill, and uh, the closer that you get, the more points you earn. Yeah, yeah, handicap, it evens things out, so you don't have to spend a lot. You can run in a standard car, or you can, you can do, depending which class, uh, hill climb class you want to do, you can do some modifications, a lot of modifications, but if you enter a championship on handicap, you know, you're running against yourself, but you're trying to improve better than everybody else. So, uh, on your screens right now is Oliver Slater in the Janetta G15. We have a modified version of this car running in Mod Prod with George Russell. This is more of a standard version. And on the line, I have Austin Weltman in a Lotus Elise Series 1. Ben? Yes, uh, Oliver uh, just looking at the crossover. It looks like he was looking for a gear, uh, but no problem. Carried on. Um, on the second part of his run. This is one of the Genita G15, uh, one of two that we have today on the hill. This car was uh, built on the basis of the Ilman Hemp. I'm sure uh, some people re recognize this car from um, the 70s and this car is running a 1000cc four-cylinder engine at the back, uh, uh, built by Coventry Climax and they're very tunable. The engine is at the back, makes for great traction out of the line and through uh, the corners. A 59.69 for Oliver Slatter. Yep, Austin Wellman's almost coming through the S's now. Peter Hockey is down coming into Torres right now in the Renault Clio RS200. Essentially a completely standard road going car. So you can get involved in hill climbing. You don't need to buy a fancy race car or spend a lot of money. You can use your road car. Um, you can have an extra car just to fooling around. You can borrow your partner's car. Um, so, but there you go. So Peter Hockey's out. And off the line now is Jeremy Rivers Fletcher, who went home last night and changed cars. Uh, he had a, a very strangely named car yesterday, and today he's brought out his Triumph Special. And um, as you can see, it's, uh, it's a one-off designed car. Uh, over to you, Ben. I'm just going to quote what he just said to me this morning when I first saw the car. He said he gave his uh, car yesterday a bit of Weetabix and he's grown. It was the same color, so I'm pretty sure he's got a few kind of paint in the garage uh, to paint those cars. But yeah, this is a Triumph uh, built on uh, a GT6 uh, chassis, so special that he's built um, on his own. And uh, yeah, wonderful car to see again uh, today. He's been campaigning this for a few years now, and um, uh, Jeremy is always going well in that car. It'll be a time of uh, 55.06 for Jeremy. Yeah, that's not too bad. Uh, we do have a few cars here that you didn't see yesterday if you're watching here or on a live stream. And we'll fill you in as you go. On your screens now, just heading up in the part, and is Rebecca Cro Crocum. Uh, it's actually Becca. She goes by. And uh, she shares this car with Lawrence Marks. And so... Um, yeah, so she's going first. They're running in the handicap class. Lawrence will be up uh, shortly. So with this, if you, if you saw last week's uh, coverage, if you're following it online on Hill Climb TV, that the venue and that Shelby Walsh, we have to stop for batches. You know, so X number of cars go up the hill, and then uh, we have to stop and let them all come back down again. Prescott is unique. We have a return road. This is actually a driveway to several houses at the top of the hill. Um, but there's a return road, so that you, that's why you, we don't stop. This, this is the commentator, we don't get a break on this. this yeah, and you don't get a break, you're going to get non-stop action. Um, now what you're seeing on the screen here, Joe Mackerel and the Tiga, the shared Tiga to the 4580. Now this is Tom Brown in a Malik Mark 20B. Yesterday, they had a Malik Mark 17B that developed into problem. And so they went home, and this is actually Dad's circuit car. 
And they brought that out because, well, they had the entry, so they went all the way back to Berkshire last night, got this car, and then brought it out. So this car's a little bit slower than the one they ran yesterday, but they are out running, same class, same and the same number, same everything else, but it's literally <laughs> blue and three marks newer, but the car's essentially the same underneath, and he got a 48.3. And then we have Martin Rosson in the Toyota MR2, just heading into Parton. Ben, that's one of your favorite cars. Yeah, this is a fantastic sports car. Uh, Toyota made a lot of effort to uh, give it great handling. So you got the engine in the middle, and they really sorted um, the, the chassis on this car. The MR2 stands for Midship Runabout, and uh, this is exactly what this car is, but you can take it on the hill as well. And uh, I know there is a single make series here in the UK uh, where you can race those, and uh, they make for some a very affordable way to get into motorsports and to get um, your racecraft um, up, and, up and ready. So Martin Rosen is 60.18, quickly followed by Patrick Hadley um, in this beautiful Morgan Plus 8. This is running a Rover V8, 3.9 litre, all the grumble, all the right noise and uh, he's campaigning this car for a few years. He absolutely loved them. This is his six Morgans. He used to have a Porsche and he said to us yesterday, I sold it because it was way too complicated for me. Um, so, Patrick, just uh, through the finish line, a 55.22. Yeah, yeah, he, uh, he, he couldn't tinker on the Porsche where he can tinker on the Morgan, so that was, simplify that. Richard Morris in a Mazda MX-5, a completely standard car in this case. Like I said, you can, you can get into hill climbing very easily. I have seen people run uh, what I call station wagons. In this country, they're known as estate cars up the hills at times. Uh, so Richard in the MX-5 is still going. Rob Guttridge in the Renault Clio RS should be somewhere near Pardon. Richard's done the 6094. Uh, yeah, he's with you, Ben. Yeah, Rob in this uh, beautiful uh, Cl Clio Mark III uh, RS. This is running a 4-litre, 200 horsepower, 6-speed gearbox, uh, power to the front wheel, and a great chassis on this car. So this is the Bugatti's Owners Club New Barn um, Championship. So. Um, Again, we're running to a handicap in this, and uh, in this specific championship, we've got newbies and experts, depending on whether it's your first time uh, that you're hill climbing, or whether you had a few uh, events under your belt. He's quickly followed uh, by Strat Diaper, who's uh, really quick so far this weekend in this beautiful Caterham R310. This is running a four-cylinder Ford engine, a Sigma engine, and this is a car that you'll see also running in single make series in the Caterham Cup Academy. Uh, Strat Diaper through the finish line, 47.38. Yeah, Tim Stokes is in his little Suzuki Swift. He's running this car a few years now. Uh, relatively no modifications to it. I think he's got an air filter on it. Um, and uh, yeah, again, completely standard. Great way to get into hill climbing. And th in this case, you're part of a British Championship round weekend as well. So. Um, there you go. So high profile, and you're on Hill Climb TV, which you'll find on YouTube, and I think Motorsport UK may be picking up the feed a little bit later. So uh, yeah, and then you've got Jonathan Elwood uh, in the Honda Civic Type R. If uh, while we're going on here, if you are watching on Hill Climb TV and you haven't done this already, please like, share, uh, follow, and subscribe. To the channel it doesn't cost anything we are trying to get 10,000 subscribers before sort of the end of September and uh, you guys have been doing brilliant supporting the channel and everything so if you haven't subscribed yet please click that button right Jonathan Elwood somewhere up in the S's with you and George Perks is launched off the line in a Renault Clio 182 Ben yeah John Elwood uh, in the under Civic Type R this is a car he's just bought uh, to go hill climbing hasn't paid a lot of money and uh, he's really happy with it so far so uh, He's competing his, his first season uh, so far, so a uh, great car, a lot of rev in those uh, Civic Type R's. Those cars were made here in the UK, uh, back in Swindon in the factory uh, down south. And we've got George Perks uh, following him, again a first time competitor this season in his uh, Renault Clio 1A2. So again a wonderful car to start uh, hill climbing and any uh, sort of motorsport series that you can enter, a four cylinder, two litre naturally aspirated, a manual gearbox, the wheels at the four uh, corners, and a great handling car. It'll be going through the finish line at 55.78. Now, 
next step is Colin Richard uh, in car 194. This is one of the midgets, uh, the MG midgets, uh, running a 1380cc uh, engine, so a little bit bigger than you, what you would find uh, at the time coming out of the factory. This is running uh, basically a uh, mini engine, uh, but just mounted 90 degrees and the gearbox at the back. So, uh, wonderful car great way to get into uh, motorsport and that's a uh, great sports car that has been you know uh, used and abused since the 70s uh, by many drivers here in the UK. Quickly follow uh, Maggie Richards uh, in the um, Clio. Uh, this is um, one of the Mark III and you'll notice the uh, number plates. Uh, they were they're really proud about this one. The CL10 or Clio FTD uh, standing for um, fastest time of the day. Lawrence Marcus just uh, launched the uh, Formula Ford um, again, so uh, a car that um, she's uh, sharing. Uh, again, this is one of the uh, contenders in the Bugatti's New Barn Club. So again, you get to see all sort of cars in these championships and you can enter those cars um, like this. And running in the handicap means that you can still score points. Doesn't matter what you're running, you don't have to spend a lot of money to get into racing, you can enjoy yourself. Yeah, Lawrence, it, it, the car has a big British Women's Racing Drivers Club sticker on the front, so Lawrence keeps getting, th everybody thinks it's actually Rebecca in the car. So he's done a 51.42. Uh, ben, we are going to take a break from commentary for a few minutes. Um, there's going to be some interviews played. Hopefully you'll hear them over the intercom. These are interviews that Chris did with all, some of the drivers yesterday. So if you're watching online, stick with us because you should be able to see some interviews. And we will be back with you shortly for first timed runs of the day. So Ben, we'll, we'll take a break and we'll get back shortly. I'll well, catch you later. Well, this is a bit of a treat. Um, I'm actually chatting to Scott Moran, six times British Hill Climb champion. And in contention for this year's championship, uh, quite a big ask. We've got a couple of rounds to go. Um, what, have, what have you got to do to win, Scott? Um, well, I think I need four hill records out of four rounds, um, with Wallace scoring nothing, basically. So um, if anybody can nobble him tonight, that would be quite good. But no, it's, it's a big ask. But yeah, it's the, the damage was done earlier in the year, so uh, we're just, we're just going to see what we can do. Just hope for a bit of luck. So uh, anyway, you've got a rather nice car here, uh, Graham and yourself share this car, Graham Wynn, uh, uh, and top spec gold, isn't it? So essentially uh, different to Wallace's in the fact you've got a Judd in the back. So what sort of horsepower and you know, performance do these things have? Um, well, I think the Judd, Judd sort of, we haven't sort of seen a, a proper data sheet for this one, but it's about 700 horsepower, um, weighs about 420 kilos. So it's, it gives you a good punch in the back when you leave the line. And it carries on punching in the back all the way to the finish. So it's, uh, and uh, yeah, it's, it's fantastic. I, you know, I'm very privileged to be able to drive. You know, it's Graham's pride and joy. He bought his a retirement present to himself, and uh, he gets in it and drives it. And it was it was great to see last week had a, a second overall in the um, the second run off at Loughton, and that that was fantastic. You know, for 73 years old, that's not a bad achievement. So yeah, really pleased for him. That's an amazing achievement. Graham's a great driver, fantastic supporter of the sport. Um, I, I can't imagine what it's like sitting in something like this and getting propelled up the hill at such ridiculous speeds. And of course, the braking is unbelievable as well, isn't it, to be fair? Um, I remember last year at the rally day, you drove Dad's Skoda, which is over there. The, uh, you, you did rather well in that. You were one fastest time of the day, didn't you? Do you like driving that? How's, how different is that feel in, to a single seater? Yeah, well, the um, yeah the four-wheel drive system in the in the Skoda is it's a proven bit of kit, so it just it's just very effective, very efficient. It does the job. Um, I was quite surprised with the times. Like last year, we we came here and it was the first time I'd actually ever driven it. Um, I was quicker up there in the dark and in the wet in November than I ever drove my little Caterham up there. So I was I was amazed in how really how good it is. But uh, it's very different to this. It did in many ways. It felt very slow, but it's. But it's easy to catch you out, you know, you sort of you jump out of one of these into one of those and it, it's a very different animal. Um, there's obviously no aero, very little aero compared to one of these. Um, it's heavier, 
you sat, you know, so it's like, it feels like you sat on the roof of the thing rather than down on the floor. But um, no, it's 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 brilliant. It's great fun, and I, you know, hopefully, I'll, uh, hopefully, have another go in November in it again, and maybe have a, a couple of guest tries in it next year and see how we see how we fare. So, I just want to ask you quickly: um, out of all the hills you've been to over the years, you've been to loads. Do you have any particular favourites, and and why? Oh, crumbs! I, I like them all for various reasons, really. Like, I, you know, Prescott's always been a good hunting ground for me. It's quite technical and it's a tricky little place to. You don't really get to really get the performance out of these because you're not. You're only really getting it flat out for up to the up to the bridge, and then it's it's sort of quietly on the throttle the most of the way up. But um, probably Dune is for the ult ultimate sort of thrill. Dune is probably the my favourite out of all of them because it's just every time you get to the top, you have to take a deep breath to say thank God for that. <laughs> It's a, it's like an Armco barrier one side, a granite wall on the other, and it's it's sort of in these. It's about 130 mile hour through blind corners, and you it's half the width of Monaco. So it's like it, it's just it's one well it's probably less than that. It's one car width. So it's and like they they've they've had a few tin tops have done it. You know they've had a bit of an error, spun it halfway along the bottom of the track, and it's a bit of an Austin Powers to try and get it out. So it's uh, yeah, I think Dunes probably if I had to if I was going to say if anybody had to drive one hill once that would be the place so yeah I, i've not made it to dune yet i hope to get there next season everyone tells me how good it is in fact there's two rounds at dune next year isn't it, in the british hill climb championship which is uh, normally there's been one and one at loton this year so uh, next year rather so I, I just think it's great scott you're an amazing competitor um six times champion says a lot to me <laughs> there's not many have done that if any nobody's done that actually i don't think Tony Marsh. Oh, Tony Marsh. Scott, jolly good luck, old chap. Big ass, but I know you do your best. Cheers, buddy. We'd like to take this opportunity to introduce our live stream partner for today's British Hill Climb Championship and Cup meeting, Footman James. BHC Cup main sponsors, Footman James, have been at the heart of the classic vehicle movement for over 35 years and provide specialist classic vehicle insurance cover to owners, collectors, restorers, and traders. Their classic car and classic bike insurance policies come with show and events cover as standard. Plus, you can tailor your policy to suit your needs with their flexible FJ Plus options. These options have everything from agreed value to track day cover. To find out more, please visit www.footmanjames.co.uk. Right, we're back. So I hope you enjoyed that interview with Scott. Um, ben, you with me? Yes, I am. Excellent. Right, guess what? We've got David Garnett, not Garnett, Garnett on the line, shares this car with Ian Richards. Right, we're going to start off with Class A1. This is road cars, series production cars, up to two liter. Uh, these classes, the road going cars, you are allowed some modifications. Some of these cars have them, some of them don't. It just depends on what the owner fancies. So David Garnett shares this car with Ian Richards. That's the other... Oh, that's okay. That's the other brilliant thing about hill climbing. You can actually share a car, so you can switch two drivers one at a time. Like I said, there's a return road here, so David will finish this run, come down, and hand over to Ian. Right next up, I, and then so he's through Pardon, and David Wilson in the Peugeot 205 is on the start line, ready to go. Ben. Yes, uh, David Garnett, uh, those, uh, this is part of the Clio gang here uh, running today and uh, they were looking to get under the 52s. They were telling me this morning, well, we only got a 52 and we can't get into the 51, uh, nor is uh, uh, Ian able to do that. So let's see if they can do that today. It's a 53.02 and this is the, force, uh, the first uh, competitive run for them. Yeah, that's uh, opening the count in this class. Uh, hopefully you'll see that you start seeing the scores up on the screen shortly. Uh, this is David Wilson, rapidly quick, shares this car with Dad Robert. And uh, David's first up the hill, the little Persia 205. He's got a 1.9 liter in it, version of it. Very little car, but these cars are brilliant little uh, rally cars and very nimble handling little car. And I've got James, Ch uh, right, sorry Ben. David's done a 5.0.60, and you've got James Chalmers with the Mazda MX-5. Ooh, a little bit wide coming out of Pardon. Yes, uh, James, uh, taking a sort of a wide line 
This is a tricky corner for all the drivers. It tightens at the end, and it's quite, uh, it's very sharp. So uh, it catches a few drivers, and uh, sometimes you might end up in the gravel just outside. But James Sharma uh, managed to turn the car, no problem. Carried on the on his run, no problem for him. It's going to go through the finish straight, up the gears, through the finish line, and that's a 57.75 for him. Peter Seidel in uh, one of the uh, other Clios today running. This car is running a 2 litre, 240 horsepower. And yesterday he said straight to me, first conversation we had, he went, you know what, I'm just going to go for the hill record. Um, it's, uh, the engine in this car and the gearbox has been uh, properly modified and the engine in this car uh, is currently uh, the old climb uh, record order. So, uh, Peter's got something to prove he's going to try and uh, do it today, so he's got a few runs to try. Let's see what he can do. He's going to go through the finish line, up through the gears, and it's a 48.74. What is the re what is the class record, Ben? Do you know? Yeah, the uh, current record is held by uh, Robert Warwood, Marwood, sorry, a 48.52. So he's about two tenths um, off uh, his time. Oh, that's going to be one to watch. On the hill now is James Hudson in the Volkswagen Golf. This is a 1.8 uh, liter engine, 16 valve, about 180 some odd hour, uh, power. Uh, James does drive this car like he's still absolutely aggressive, but he's been giving Peter Siddle a run for his money this weekend. Ben? Yes, so James already through the finish line of 49.92. Uh, you can definitely hear all of the revs on that car. Um, but Richard Pats uh, now on the track, uh, just exiting Pardon and through uh, the straight into the S's in this beautiful MGF um, 160 trophy. This is the K uh, series and the trophy were sort of uh, the sporty version of the MGF. More power, bigger brakes and a uh, limited number. So I think there's a plaque inside. You didn't pay much for this car and this is a great way to get into motorsports. But Jonathan Langman in the uh, Lotus Elise for quickly follows him and uh, they've been uh, having a great battle with Peter Siddle. Uh, he's got about 190 horsepower in the back of that Lotus Elise. This is another K series uh, engine car. A great balance. The Lotus Elise has celebrated 25th anniversary uh, this year. Let's see what time he can do. I'm sure he'll be very close to what Peter has just posted. Let's see if he can be quicker than him. A 48.75. Yeah, I'm just trying to have a look. We're just gathering the time together. We'll try to give you an idea of where everybody is in class. This is David Meek uh, sharing the car with his son, Ollie. Uh, David is desperately trying to stay ahead of Ollie in the inter -daddle. That's a, actually over two liter road car, that one. Uh, just to give you an idea on the up to two liter, uh, Ben, uh, Peter Siddle, 48.74, Jonathan Langmead, one one hundredth behind with a 48.75, and the little golf is third at the moment. I think we've got more in that action later. David Meek goes across the line with a 49.45. These are cars over two liter. You got Phil James and that came and Ben. Yeah, we'll definitely watch the uh, battle in the under two litre class, but we're now moving up to class A2 uh, in the Going Series production car over two litre. Uh, so this is on page 13. If you're uh, watching live on your program, you'll see a gag all of uh, Cayman's uh, GT4s uh, today on the hill, uh, including uh, the Porsche 993 that we have, uh, driven by Simon Tarling. This is a 3.6 six-cylinder boxer engine at the back. Uh, the GT3 version of the 996 being uh, the track orientated uh, version. So basically the 996 uh, had small seats at the back. They've checked this out. Lighter uh, car and then more power. This is about 380 horsepower at the back. The engine hanging at the back in the classic fashion of the 911. You get another example of the 911 now running and exiting uh, etteries and going through the crossover. This is Ross McDonald in the 911 3.3 uh, litre. Uh, this is one of the more classic ones, so back into the 70s, this is a beautifully presented 911. Ross McDonald is always a very competitive competitor uh, here on the hill at Prescott. He'll be going through semicircles, a great way to get into racing at the 911s. Yeah, uh, he's done, he's always almost top of the hill. Rodney Isles in the Alfa Romeo 4C. He holds the class record, uh, and he's been holding off all these Porsches in this beautiful Alfa Romeo 4C. He's actually, he is the actual class record holder. He may have to set a new one today if, uh, if to keep his uh, chances. I think he's dealing with an overall championship situation as well. 
Uh, Ross McDonald did a 5-0.83. Rodney Isles just laid out a 46.85. That gives him a two-second lead at the moment. But we have more porches, Ben. Yes, uh, Rodney Isles actually, uh, I think it's a new class record uh, here. It, uh, his previous record here in the class was a 46.93, so he's uh, bettered that by about one-tenth. But back into the Porsches, uh, Richard York uh, in his uh, blue uh, GT4 already through the end of his run is going to go up the gears and Robert Lancaster um, in the beautiful GT4. This is running the four uh, liter engine, six uh, cylinder in the middle of the car. Great balance from those cars, great chassis, great brakes and you can really uh, attack the corners in those cars. For a long time, Porsche was holding back on the potential of the Cayman uh, because they didn't want it to um, harm the potential of the bigger sister, the 911 that we've seen driven by Simon just earlier on. Robert Lancaster through the finish line of 48.15. Yeah, that puts him in there. Now, I will let everybody know, uh, even though these times are generally correct, uh, we can't make them, we can't say they're official. Um, so the times, generally are all correct and everything, but we're not going to say they're official, so hence we're not sure about that class record yet, although it does look like he has done it. Uh, Robbie Farrell in the Porsche, Porsche, uh, Porsche Cayman uh, GTS, just heading up across the top to finish there with a 47.74, jumps him up into second place, moves uh, uh, Lancaster Gay down to third at the moment. And we've got Ian Richards back in the, uh, is he trying to make a lawnmower out of that car today, Ben? <laughs> yeah, it was a little bit wide uh, coming out of uh, Aturis uh, from the look of it, but um, no problem, hasn't kicked uh, too much of the gravel or the grass onto the track, so no sweeping action expected there. Um, he's just going through the S's and already exiting the uh, left hander. He's going to try and carry as much momentum through the semicircle. Let's see if they can get it under the 52 seconds uh, in this uh, class, in this car. So 52.30. Uh, that's a nice time, puts them ahead in the intercar battle. We've got Robert Wilson in the Peugeot 205. You saw David going up the hill. David's currently fourth in class. Peter Siddle still hanging on to the lead. Lead, sorry. And uh, Robert's possibly the quicker of the two. So he's looking to get into the 49s. And uh, yeah, Ian Richards is currently fifth with that 52.3. So, and then I've got Ian Fido. We're moving up to four wheel drive cars after this one. Yes, uh, Robert in this beautiful 205. Believe it or not, it's the 25th anniversary, 40th anniversary for the uh, Peugeot 205. What a wonderful car that saved Peugeot. 50.18 for Robert uh, Wilson. Yeah, that uh, he just jumped his co-driver David by a little bit, so they're wob they're squabbling for fourth and fifth. Right, four-wheel drive cars, production of any engine size. So we've got a couple of Toyota Yaris's in this class. Uh, we've got a uh, Big old Mitsubishi Evo 6, and a couple other things. Uh, so Ian Fido in the Yaris is already up the hill uh, heading towards you, and Izzy Lawrence in the Mitsubishi Evo 6 has just launched off about 600 horsepower, and uh, shes I think she's been setting PBs all weekend. I, think I need to go check on that. Yes, uh, Easy's been going uh, real well again uh, this weekend in this uh, Mitsubishi Evo 6. This is four cylinder, uh, two litre, four wheel drive, and a big turbo. This is moving to class A3, so this is page 15 on your program before you are watching live. Um, Easy, yeah, has been competing for a few years uh, in a few different cars. I think she has been campaigning a Clio, and now she's moved up to the four wheel drive and the big turbo power of that beautiful Evo 6. She's going up through the gears, through the finish line, and it'll be a 49.63 for Easy. Yeah, that puts her in the class lead, Ian Fido second. Now, Peter Richens is in his Yaris uh, going up the hill. Completely standard car. You can see the lights flashing from the ABS system, um, which is normal. It's a safety feature built into the car. Now, he, Pete yesterday actually set a new personal best. Uh, in practice, so he's looking for a 5-0, a low 5-0 to improve some more. So let's see what he does. And Ben Fisher, um, son of Phil, Ben's OMS Hornet, is single seater. Uh, the engine is uh, kaput at the moment, so he's jumped into Dad Subaru just to have some fun. And he's uh, he's got he's gone from a now race car to something with luxury seats. Pete's done a 5-0-9-0, and the Subaru should be growling your way. Yes, uh, Pete Richard 590, so very close to his uh, 
best uh, time yesterday over 50.87 so we'll be pleased with that first competitive run but that's quickly followed by Ben Fisher already through semi circle the four cylinder uh, boxer engine at the front of that car making all the right noises a 53.05 obviously the Subaru and Predzite car that we've seen uh, rallying over the years in the hands of uh, some very famous uh, drivers including uh, near Colin McRae and some very uh, big names. Yeah. David Mick has just uh, left the line, uh, 68 miles an hour under the bridge in the uh, VX220 Turbo. This is, uh, you might think it's very similar to the Elise. Well, it is. It's the same chassis. I think they were built in the same factory. The main difference is the engine at the back. So this is running a 2-litre turbo engine, and that usually gives them a bit more tuning potential than the Lotus Elises. Um, but the thing is, with the 2 litre turbo you get uh, in the next class really so you're competing against the Porsches uh, let's see what David can do in this uh, class in this beautiful uh, car David is um, the uh, dad of uh, Holly that we've seen uh, going uh, previously yeah David's head across the line oh dear it, it had to happen son has just gone faster than dad dad did a 50.14 but Holly did a 49.45 so uh, he was afraid that might happen. On course right now, in coming through par, that's Raymond Lohr in the Caterham 7 Super Sprint. Older version, I think this thing's still on carburetors if memory serves. So we're going up to Class B, Road Car Specialist Production. So I believe that's uh, page 14, Ben? Yes. Uh, page 15 in the manual. And Anthony Shearman in the Caterham 310R is following. Sorry, Ben, I'll just take it off the end there. 47.45 for Ray Lohr, so he's the opening salvo in this class yes a great time for uh, raymond lord uh, the uh, record uh, for reference in this class um, in uh, the catherine 7 uh, suzuki engine of 43.97 uh, obviously i believe this car must have been uh, powered by a bike engine so i'm not sure if any we have uh, the car here running with a bike engine maybe the fisher fury can get close um, to that time but yesterday, uh, Richard Price was one of the uh, quickest drivers in this class. He'll be uh, running it with number 51. Anthony Sherman already through the finish line at 50.72. Yeah, on the line is John Pick in an AMS Mertaya and Urtea, and you're sitting there going, what the heck is that? Well, the uh, AMS Mertaya, there's 42 of these cars built. It's a fiberglass body uh, kit sort of kit car thing on a Subaru Impreza chassis. And because they made more than 25 of them, it is legal for our road car specialist production. This car is road legal and it you know, fits in the class. So we'll see how it goes. It is obviously bigger and heavier than the Westfields and the Caterham, but we'll have to see what's happening here. Uh, on the line, I'm gonna have Jerry Neary on the Westfield SEI just launching off the line as we speak. Yes, and if you wondered uh, what the rumble on the AMS Motea is, well, this car is running um, an EV, uh, Super Impreza uh, running gear, so a four-cylinder boxer engine with a turbo at the front. Um, so, yeah, a beautiful uh, car, but quickly followed by uh, Jerry Neri in the, uh, the uh, Westfield SE1. This is running a two-litre Ford engine at the front, and those cars are very lightweight, about 500 kilos, uh, about 200 horsepower, so great power to weight ratio in this class great fun to drive and those cars are very very deceptively quick uh, when you get it on the hill very agile cars uh, great chassis already through uh, the entry of semi circles let's see what he can do on this run yeah jerry's coming around now rob lloyd uh, is just heading up the hill in the pardon jerry neary's done a 51 91 that slots him in the fourth place at the moment rob lloyd's already through pardon on the other side Richard Price has literally melted his tires in the tire warming area, ready to go uh, to attack. So this is going to be good. Squealing tires, everything off the line. He is attacking. Uh, Rob Lloyd's up with you. There, Rob Lloyd already through the second part of the course, carrying the speed through a semi-circle. But let's have a look at Richard Price. He was the quickest yesterday through practice. And I'm sure he's going to go through up the gear, through crossover, no problem for him, into the entry of Pardon. This is a tight left and an airpin corner through the straight up the gears through. Let's see what he can do. Beautiful car. And this is only a 1.6 engine car. He posted a time in the 46 yesterday. I'm sure he'll be looking to improve on this first competitive run 
uh, today. Look to carry the speed through semi-circle. Let's see what he can do. It'll be a time of 46.23, so he probably a little bit quicker than his best time yesterday. You'll be pleased with that. Yeah, that's actually jumped Ray Lord, put uh, right in first place at the moment in class with a 46.23. Steve Garner, another quick runner, up heading up the hill. He's actually purple sector, so he's ahead of Richard Price at the moment. Uh, he's lost a little bit of the S's, coming out of the S's now, heading to semicircle. Uh, hey, he's up going into semicircle. I'm going to take it across the line, Ben. 45.90, jumps the class lead by three tenths of a second. We got Phil Fisher. Uh, we're just jumping back to four wheel drive cars, double driven cars. This is Phil in the Subaru, Ben. Uh, and also a really great uh, run for uh, Steve Garner, impressive time. And uh, yeah, we've got Phil Fisher now going through uh, Croke Silver. Beautiful sun on those uh, Subarus, four-wheel drive. And those cars obviously have had a long, long campaign in rallies in the late 90s, in the early uh, 2000. And if you like your Subarus, um, don't leave just yet because we've got something very special uh, in the name of the Subaru legacy, uh, brilliantly driven by Damien Bradley, who's been snatching a lot of records uh, this season. Potentially all the class records in the hills of the UK so far is Phil Fisher through the finish line, 54.82. Yeah, we're moving up to modified cars, class C1 in your program. This is Andrew Russell in the Janetta G15, a longtime competitor in uh, the British Championship. And his competition today is Eric Morey in the Hillman Imp, who's ridiculously quick off the line because the engine's in the back then. Yes, uh, the Genius G15 uh, driven by um, Andrew Russell. Uh, a little bit fettled, 1100cc uh, at the back of this car. The Genitors were like very, very lightweight cars, about 500 kilos. 50.56 uh, for Andrew Russell, but quickly follow Eric Murray. We're now moving to class C1, the modified series production car up to 1400cc. Ilman Impa, a very competitive car, and he'll climb the engine at the back, gives them great traction out of the line, out of the corners, and you can really push that car. And this is what uh, Eric is doing today. He posted a time in the 49 yesterday in practice, so I'm sure we'll get very close to that, the 49.17. Yeah, that gives him the class lead. We're just going to go back to class B. We've got Joy Hoyle in the Caterham 7 Super Sprint. This is the car Ray shares with Ray Lohr. Uh, Ray is in third. Uh, Joy uh, is an instructor, actually, at Lowton Park. Um, she knows her way around this car, around the hills and everything, a long-time competitor. So let's see what she can do. And then we're going to move up to modify cars over to leader. And that's Duncan Andrews on the screen with a Porsche Cayman. Um, and that'll be followed by Stephen Moore. Uh, Joy did a 48.03, jumps her up to fourth in class right behind Ray. <laughs> a great time by Joy, uh, and usually uh, those two are having a great battle. And uh, when they come back, they do the maths to see uh, what would be the quickest time of the actual car by just combining all the sector times uh, of the two drivers. But Duncan Andrew in uh, the uh, Cayman uh, GT4, this is a 3.9 litre, so a little bit more capacity than uh, previously. We're now moving to uh, modify series production car. This is class C3. Um, just over two liters. This is page 16 on your program if you're following. Stephen Moore is going to have a great battle with Damien Bradley uh, today. Let's see what time he can do. 73 miles an hour under the bridge. He's going to try and uh, be as quick as he can in this car. But he's got great competition in the name of Damien Bradley, which is going to leave the line just now. Yeah, Stephen Moore has done that at 43.77. That's his quickest time of the weekend so far. I'm not sure his PB is, and that's in the territory. Now, Damien Bradley wasn't here yesterday because he was busy running the Brighton time trials down in Brighton. Uh, he did the quarter mile in 9.97 seconds, if that gives you any idea what's going on there. Um, anyway, so Damien did a practice run. This is his first time in time run. Stephen Moore has the class lead. Damien's going on nah, nah, Subaru over Mitsubishi, so he wants it back. Uh, let's see what he does. I'll take it to the end in there, sorry. Uh, two semi-circle already. Foot to the floor, across the line, and only a 43.89. Stephen Moore has the class lead. Uh, one more in this class is Nigel Elliott in the Twin Turbo V8. Yes, folks, it's Twin Turbos, two of them, in a Triumph TR7. 
wouldn't want to drive this in the wet weather, Ben. Yeah, fantastic time by Stephen Moore. Uh, much quicker than uh, in the practice yesterday. So uh, first time he get this car under the 44 seconds. But Nigel Peter quickly follows him through semi-circles. And uh, this is a yeah, wonderful car. This is running a Rover engine. And he thought, uh, you know, a V8 is not big enough. I just want to strap two turbos on it. A 52.58 for Nigel Elliott. Uh, we've now moved up uh, to Class D. Uh, this is uh, Strato in the Caterham Hayabusa engine. This is 1600cc four-cylinder bike engine. A very, very quick car. Um, that have got a lot of potential. He's going to try and get it into the 43 or 43.31 for uh, Stuart. Yeah, good time uh, all by himself today, but he was on Racing 6 and everything. So uh, now we're moving up to Class uh, F. This is Sport Libre cars up to two liter. And this is essentially kind of anything that doesn't quite fit into the production classes, if you will, or the race car classes. So we've got Mike West shares his car with uh, John McQuillum and uh, in the Fisher Fury. It's got a one liter Kawasaki engine in it. And then we've got Sam Nicholson in the Malik Mark 20. Yes, uh, Mike West already uh, through the finish straight and uh, through the finish line, it's a 47.13 uh, for Mike West. Uh, quickly followed by uh, Samuel uh, Mil Milkinson in the Malloc Mark 20. So a very, the Malocs are club cars, cars that we've seen here in the UK for a very, very long time. They make for very competitive cars. And uh, this is one of the front engine cars. This is sort of uh, very much what you'll find from all the Malocs. And they've got a great balance of 44.13. Yeah, that puts him first in class, the yes, Fisher Fury to second. However, Alan McDonald will have something to say about this. I think he got into the 41s yesterday with this car. Uh, hails from Scotland, used to do a mini four-wheel drive mini in the Sport Libre. He's got Force SR4, fancy to change. And he's already purple sectors all the way up far to not the, uh, up the top there. And getting on the line will be David Bickley, Radical SR1, Ben. Yeah, just looking at my screen, uh, Alan McDonald a 42.49 in practice yesterday, so uh, he was the quickest on that class, so let's see what he can do. He'll probably hope to get in the 41s, uh, but it's a big ask, and let's see what he can do. 42.54, so very consistent time from his practice runs yesterday. Yeah, so uh, that gives him the class lead, moves to Sam Nicholson down to second. Uh, David Bickley's on course right now in the Radical SR1, the Radical Car Company. You can buy, uh, they do various models for track day and circuit racing. And they're very handy weapon on the hill as well. 13, uh, I think David's got a 1340cc uh, Hayabusa engine in the back of this car, so motorcycle powered. And then I'm going to have Martin Watts in a Silver Riot. I'm not kidding folks, that's what it's called coming up. Yes, yeah, so the Radical Pro Sport and the Hayabusa engine has been a great couple, uh, giving it a great uh, traction off the line, but also great torque from that motorbike engine, 13cc. Uh, Suzuki made a great work on that engine at the time, back in the uh, late 90s when they first uh, got out the, this bike. It was the quickest bike of, at the time in the world. 46.61 for David Bickley. We'll find the Hayabusa engine in many of the single seaters as well. Um, it, across the uh, different single seaters that we're going to see coming up. But the silver arrival from Martin Watts already making uh, great progress. Uh, looking at the splits, uh, there's going to be a quick time probably in the 45s. Going through the uh, semi-circles, going to carry as much speed as possible. We've got Mike Lee here in uh, one of the uh, Force LM. Um, if you're wondering what this really uh, looks like, well, you could mistake it for a single seater. The catch is, well, the front wheels are covered and um, therefore it's not uh, considered a single seater. So you'd say it's probably not in the spirit of the rules, uh, but yet he's still uh, entered in the Sports Libre uh, category here. Mike Lee is gonna go through the finish straight and that's gonna be a time roughly in the 43.59. Ah, that jumps Mike Lee up to second place, uh, only a second behind Alan McDonald. Uh, we've got Richard Matassian in the OMS SC1 uh, already up near you, and I've got over two liter class car from Bob Penrose launching off the line, trying to tear the tarmac up as we go because he's got seven liters of Chevrolet V8. Uh, Richard Matassian, a 4325, puts him into second place ahead of Mike Lee. Alan McDonald is hanging on, but not by a lot. I think there's more to this story this afternoon. 
So Bob Penrose is just heading to you now, and then I've got Duncan Barnes in the Norma. Uh, Europeans, uh, normally you see on the European hills. Yes, uh, Bob Penrose in this uh, massive VH Chevrolet 7.3 litre at the back in this PLB MP92. This is carbon uh, chassis, and uh, if you like your V8 and uh, you want uh, something very powerful uh, pushing you out the back, this car is for sale if you wanted to uh, uh, buy it. Uh, Bob Penrose is going through the finish line. This is a 49.35, but Duncan Barnes in this beautiful Norma M20 FC. This is running a Civic Type R engine turbocharger, about 500 horsepower. You can hear the anti-lag and the pop and banging uh, of that engine sequential gearbox and these cars are very popular in the hill climb in across uh, Europe where uh, the course are a bit, little bit wider and they can really stretch the speed of uh, that car but very competitive car we'll get to see the times but it will be very close to one of the uh, to the few of the single seater that we see today a 41.37 yeah, Duncan's just laid down a solid time there. I'm not sure if anybody else is going to get anywhere near it. George Harding is next up in a Ford Escort 2 liter, and you're sitting there going, why is that in Sports Libra? It's turbocharged. It's a 2 liter Cosworth turbocharged engine in the car, and he's got to play against all these sports cars. Um, so he loves driving the car, so he's got somewhere to play with it. And then, um, so he's coming to you, and I've got Graham Lokes and the Lola T49. Yeah, T492 on the line with the 3.2 liter air-cooled Porsche engine that he built himself. And you see uh, George Harding is lifting that front wheel up all over the place. Uh, ben? Yeah, let me tell you, uh, this Ford Escort is so beautiful and attracts a lot of eyes and uh, uh, a lot of uh, photographers in the paddock. Obviously, uh, this is the uh, Cosworth turbo engine, so the uh, engine that we've seen in the Sierras and, and the Escorts uh, later on. Obviously, uh, the Mark II Escort never received that engine, so that's why it's in uh, this class. 49.81 for George Harding, but quickly followed by Graham Lux in this beautiful Lola T492. He's built this car uh, about two years ago. It took him an awful lot of time to get all the right bits uh, on uh, this car. He took the engine off his uh, Porsche 911. He said, well, you know what? I'm just going to stick it in this beautiful uh, Lola chassis. And it's a very well presented car. Graham is a great competitor, very regular one uh, here on the Oaklands across the UK. 45.25. Roger Moran uh, quickly follows him in uh, one of the uh, most exciting car today. This is a Skoda Fabia R5. Um, so this was uh, probably one of the top class that you'll see in the national championship, the R5. Uh, cars are four-wheel drive, 1.6 turbo, and they're beautifully built. Uh, they can take the punishment of the rally stages, whether that's on tarmac or gravels. And actually, I think the R5 has won the European uh, Rally Championship a few times as well. Uh, obviously, Skoda has got a long history of rallying, and so 45.88. Hello, Benoit. New sheriff in town. Pons is here. Hello, Pons. How are you doing, boy? <laughs> How are we doing? Happy Great days. Too. Happy days. Well, you know, I've jumped in because, you know, it's all about the single-seaters. I love them, don't I? But, I? but I was really impressed with those big saloons just now. Uh, Marvellous stuff. John McQuillan on the line in the Fisher Fury. Uh, they've been going really well this weekend, haven't they? Yes, uh, and we've got Mike Loka going through uh, the second part of his run. Uh, this is a a public's favorite really this is the Zolf GT and uh, you'll see the uh, steering wheel on the left side this is one of two of the Zolf uh, with the steering on the left side and in total they built 12 cars um, so wonderful car this is running a four-cylinder 2.3 litre uh, engine at the front beautifully built 48.45 for Mike Cloak yeah fabulous uh, on the line I've got Sam Nicholson in this glorious Mallet Mark 20 this is one of my favorite cars here today the old Cross flow engine car scorches off the line. Uh, actually, it's Robin Nicholson is driving that one. Uh, Sam is his son. He's not. It's not brothers. Uh, anyway, John McQuillan goes over the line in a 48.92. Uh, on the line very quickly. Ben Haver in an OMS 28. This is the 750cc turbocharged single seater Kawasaki engine. Have a look at that one when it gets to you. Yes, uh, Robin uh, going beautifully through uh, the second part of the hills, through the straight into the S's. 
no problem. Beautiful sound from uh, the four cylinder, the front of that uh, Malloc Mark 20. Uh, but uh, Ben Ham already uh, through uh, the uh, start line and through the bridge. Let's see what time and speed he can get out of that little 750 turbocharged engine. 89 miles an hour under the bridge. Great turn of speed uh, from uh, this car. Already through crossover into the entry of Harden. No problem. He's going to go up through the gears and he's going to go through the second part of his run. Yeah, well, I really find that little car exciting. They've had it a while. They've been developing it for a long while. I can't think of another one with the 750 Turbo Quacker. But anyway, Richard Weaver leaves the line in the Empire Evo. Uh, he'll be driving with his son in this one today. Uh, but yeah, Ben Hamer, 40.10 for Ben Hamer. Good time. Uh, so Richard Weaver's already with you. He'll be followed by Richard Summers in the DJ Firehawk. Yes, a great time for uh, Ben Hammer. A little bit um, uh, actually quicker than his practice run. His best time was a 40.44 and it just was still a 40.1. So, great improvement. He'll be pleased with that. Richard Weaver, uh, it quickly follows him through uh, the entry of semicircle. Let's see what time he can do in this beautiful uh, empire. He'll be going through the finish straight. It's a 41.52 from Richard. Yes, well, um, I've got on the line now, I've got Dylan Flesher. Uh, they come down from Harrogate. They're in this beautiful new OMS 28. They had a bump with this one, quite a big bump at Chelsea recently, but um, it was uh, miraculous rebuilt within a couple of weeks and uh, they're back on the hill. So uh, Dylan Flesher, uh, they're in the dental business. If you need teeth, they're the folk to go and see. Anyway, he leaves the line, 40.46 for Richard Summers in the DJ. Yes, the big challenge in this class is to get into the uh, 39 uh, seconds uh, for most of those cars a challenge. So you'll see a lot of 40s in this class, but a few have gone under uh, the 40 second mark in this class. Uh, Rich is really close to that in his uh, final run, but Dylan Flesher, uh, 92 miles an hour under the bridge at the start of the line. So uh, no slouch this car, and you're probably going to be looking at posting a better time, looking at the split times for Dylan. Uh, it's looking very good, about three tenths quicker uh, than Richard Summers in this run, a 40.06. Yeah, that takes him to the top of the class at the moment, 40.06. Uh, on, the, on the hill now is Tony Bonfield in the little Jedi Mark IV. Pretty little car, they've had some problems with this car this year in the respect that it got bumped at Gersten. They've had some engine problems, but actually already gone with you. Uh, what do you think of that one? Yes, I think uh, maybe uh, this class should be uh, sponsored by Star Wars because we've got a bit of a scene between uh, Jedi forces and uh, empires. So, uh, yeah, great to see the Jedi uh, running uh, again today into uh, this class. This is quite a short car when you look at it. Short wheelbase, but great handling through the corners of 44.41 for Tony Bunfield. Yes, indeed, 44.1. Uh, Nigel Pitt was already with that with you now, a uh, local man in his OMS 3000. 2022 uh, uh, bodied car, that one. Lovely little thing, local fast driver. Yes, uh, Nigel, uh, quickest so far in all the splits, so we're uh, probably going to um, snatch the class lead uh, on this first competitive run today. Uh, this Sunday is going to go through the finish line, and that's going to be under the 40s, I believe, of 39.92. Yes, well done, Nigel. Uh, the track's good, isn't it? It's nice and dry. Very grippy, I should think. The first time this season they've had these conditions, really. Uh, I think the last bit of sunshine. Oh, OK, Mark Schlank has just had a moment uh, exiting Pardon. Uh, he's had a spin, a half spin, and he's at 90 degrees to the track at the moment. I'm sure everything is fine. He's sat in the car. The marshals are now going to deal with it. Um, Robert Penrose is... Uh, just switched his engine off. He's in the big Pilbeam MP92, that big seven litres of Chevrolet power. Uh, next year, he was telling me they're going to maybe campaign a Porsche because they've. Uh, it's a big old car to, for his dad to take back to his uh, Welsh lair, and uh, they're going to take a Porsche, which will probably be a little bit easier to, to handle because uh, this car, well, it's really more of a Le Mans type car, isn't it? This one than a Hill Club car, Benoit. Yes, uh, obviously the Pilbeam looks like a big prototype, but Mark Shanklo uh, just made his way back. Um, so, yeah, he'll be frustrated with uh, this run. Uh, yeah, the car just turned on him uh, on the exit of uh, Pardon. No problem, didn't hit anything on the outside. There's um, 
a, a row of tyres on the outside of that uh, corner, but no problem. And uh, so it will be back up and running. The red flags are going down. So uh, yes, he, he is back into the paddock now. Uh, in fact, so yep, here comes uh, Robert Penrose. Uh, Dad has just taken the battery pack and started him up again. Uh, very impressive looking car. Open top car must be a bit of a beast to take up a hill climb. Uh, big long wheelbase. Be great at Limar doing 200 miles an hour, but up a tight uh, country track like this. Well, he's with you now. What do you think of that one? I think it's impressive. Yeah, this car would make a fantastic uh, sprint car on any uh, of the big tracks that we have around the UK. And yeah, as they, uh, they were telling me that they wanted to get back into uh, the road going class because it's a bit too much work for them at the moment. But yeah, uh, Robert Penrose can really drive this car, so he's gonna go through and his great sound V8 grumbles through the uh, second part of the hills, through the trees from uh, my comment to Rebox. It's a beautiful sound. Yes, we've got another pretty little car about to start. Graham Williams in his OMS 2000M, an elderly car, but little one litre bike engine in the back. Like most of them, they're Suzuki engines. Um, anyway, uh, I think this may be his first season driving this car. Uh, anyway, he's with you now. Yes, uh, the OMS uh, 2000M, uh, slightly older chassis than uh, the uh, 28 that we'll see uh, on this um, class today. But Graham uh, drives this uh, very well and looking at the splits, it's uh, going well. It's getting up to grips with the car. It's always a bit intimidating when you first start jumping into a single seater. And uh, obviously you want to make sure that you get the car back in one piece. It's going to go through semi-circle, try to carry as much speed through that corner. It's a tricky corner. It's got a little bit of a bank so you can carry some speed, but it can catch his drivers quite easily. 46.75 for Graham. Yes, uh, Emma Rayson's already well up the hill in her Empire Evo. Comes from the Channel Island and her husband drives the Sand Racer. So uh, anyway, Emma looks like she's stopped. Oh, hang on. Uh, yeah, she thinks she stopped on the track. They've stopped just above the start line. Uh, so at the moment, Nigel Pitt is leading the class. This is in the 600cc to 1100cc class, normally aspirated engines. Uh, Nigel Pitt on a 39.92, Dylan Flesher on a 40.06, Ben Hamer on a 40.10, and Richard Summers on a 40.46, then Richard Weaver 41.52. Tony Bonfield 44.41 and then Graham Williams 46.75. So we'll have a slight delay here. Um, yeah, the Emma's car has stopped just up there. I can't see any great dramas, but I can see quite a few marshals, including, my, uh, in fact, she's going to, somebody's going back into the paddock, I think. So we keep you appraised of that. Uh, any cars of the day so far, Benoit? Yes, um, well, I'm, I'm looking forward for... Um Olivia is uh, Cooper is going to be uh, running the Force TA. Uh, she posted uh, best times, and I always, uh, you know, uh, I will always look for any ladies on the hill uh, today. Who will be looking at posting their best times and making the best efforts. She's been racing for about 30 years. I had a quick chat for her, and I love the the car. It's a beautiful uh, pay pale blue and uh, have a look have a good look at this car but just looking at the times from uh, Nigel Pitt he'll be really pleased uh, with uh, him getting into the 39s uh, Nigel uh, his best practice run yesterday was a 40.42 uh, but we'll have to look for uh, the top class here uh, looking at the times we've got Dave Tutum who's uh, posted a 38.28 so tremendous great turn of speed uh, from Dave Tutum and let's uh, keep an eye on Stuart Bickley who's been going real well in this class as well. Yeah Dave Tatham yeah that lovely little OMS uh, actually no he's even the Firehawk wasn't he yesterday Dave? Uh, Dave's at Pete's in the, fire, uh, in the OMS and Dave was in the, the little um, force wasn't he? Um, yeah, the all-carbon tub force as well, actually. So the track is all clear again now. We've got uh, James Moore will be coming to the line shortly in another Empire. Um, and the Empires are well represented here today. Um, yeah, very nicely sorted little car, this one. I don't know a lot about this particular driver, but anyway, the car looks absolutely mint. 
Bill Chaplin is here today. He's the builder of these cars. Builds them down in Somerset, actually, and uh, doesn't build loads, but uh, he's not a big outfit, but my goodness, does he build a good car? Scorches off the line. Gosh, and the power to get out of these little bike engines is so impressive. There. That's uh, 89 across the speed trap over to you. And Stuart Bickley will be coming up in a minute in that black crescent yellow one. Yeah, so James Moore uh, carving a bit of an attitude coming out of it, Therese, but no problem. Perhaps through the gears uh, the crux over onto Pardon, no problem. Perhaps through the gears through the straights. This is not very straight, but it tries to make it as quick as possible. You don't want to hit uh, the uh, curb on the inside or the outside of those corners. They're quite aggressive in those for those single seaters. Carries the speed through semicircle, no problem. Great turn of speed, 41.23. But let's watch what Stuart uh, can do in this uh, run he'll be uh, looking to improve on his time let's see if he can get the lead of that class and snatch it from Dave uh, Tassum well Stuart Bickley well on his way uh, Gavin McLaren's just leading leaving the line in his OMS 2000 M so Stuart Bickley goes around semi-circle blasts up towards the finish he's up he's up he's up 39.46 takes the lead in the class Stuart Bickley class driver lovely car uh, Gavin McLaren with you. Yeah, great time from uh, Stuart, uh, but let's see if that's enough uh, for him to uh, get the best time so far in this class. Uh, we know that Dave will probably get into the 38. He's done that twice yesterday, but gave in uh, already through the second part of the hill here at the top. 86 miles an hour under the bridge on the first uh, part of the course, and he's going to try and carry as much speed through uh, Semi-circle, up through the finish straight, under the line of 42.7 sinks. For yes, Gavin. now Dave Tatum has just left the line in the DJ Firehawk. This is a well-sorted car. Beautiful, very good driver. Comes all the way from Yorkshire with his brother. Oh, he has a right moment coming out of Orchard there. Uh, with you. Yeah, Dave, uh, really uh, on the inside uh, of uh, Etoris, uh, eating a little bit of the kerb on the inside, but no problem, carries through. Impressive uh, split time, 17.82 uh, coming out of Pardon, 24.85 at Midway, and this is definitely a great run for him. Into the S is 28.28, let's see you the time and the entry of semi-circle, 33.15, great time, let's see what he can do, uh, 38.81. Yeah, it goes into the class lead, Will Kerr and the other little OMS, the Kawasaki turbocharged one, just on his way up to you now, but I don't think he'd be able to beat that. Yes, uh, Will uh, definitely uh, giving everything you can hear the rev of the engine going through uh, the second part of the hill already through the S's into the tricky 90 degree left hander dab of power exiting that corner into semicircle. let's see what he can do it's going to be quite close uh, looking at the split times the 39.59 yeah that's a good effort 39.59 in that little OMS so Tom Weaver now the other part of the Weaver dynasty the younger part of the Weaver dynasty <laughs> anyway He's a quick young driver. Do you remember how good he was in Formula 4s before he got into this thing? Anyway, Tom Weaver, can he get into the 38? That would be good, wouldn't it? Well, you can definitely hear Tom coming. Uh, great sound there, the popping and banging uh, as he goes through the gears at the uh, crossover into the entry of uh, Pardon. No problems through, gets the speed up into that carries all the way through the S's, let's see what he can do, or try and carry as much speed into the left hander, no problem. It's great to split so far, it's probably about three, four tenths uh, slower than Dave Totem so far, but it will be a time of a 39.25, second in class. Second in class, Debbie Summers on the hill in the DJ, the Summers family car, the DJ Firehawk, beautifully presented car, and what a quick driver she is, how's she going now? Yeah, fantastic time uh, for Debbie uh, so far in this class. Uh, 25.07 uh, midway, so very close to Tom. Uh, so let's see what she can do in this uh, first competitive run. Debbie is always a very great driver in this uh, beautiful DJ Firehawk. A beautiful chassis, a 40.05. Excellent, excellent. Jonathan Flesher on the line. Uh, this is Dylan's dad uh, in the OMS 28. Rebuilt car, He's got it absolutely singing and dancing. And in fact, I think at low, I'm not sure which, who was quicker actually, but uh, anyway, Dylan says he's quicker than Dad, who knows? 
Yeah, and also driver that's going to look to get under the 40 second marker. His best time yesterday, 40.33 in practice. Um, so you'll definitely look to improve on this first competitive run. It's a, such a competitive class. I hope you always love this class uh, running. And obviously the bike engine cars are quite a cost effective way to get into single seater racing here. A little bit of a puff of a smoke uh, through semi-circle, no problem. Through the finish line at 39.97 under the 40 second mark. Great. Yes, well done, Jonathan. Uh, yes, so uh, Ben Bonfield uh, just left the line in the little Jedi, the Mark IV Jedi. Uh, always a pretty little car, well driven actually by Ben. Yes, uh, second run for the uh, Jedi uh, here, the car shared here, so you're not uh, dreaming, this is another time for the car. Yeah, the Jedi, great chassis here uh, on the hill going through, and uh, decent times uh, so far from uh, Ben. ben Bonfield a 42.60 uh, for Ben. Yes, excellent. We seem to have a little clutch of Formula Ford cars now. We've just had uh, Kirsten Dodd just leave the line in the Van Diemen RF86. The RF86 is built in 86. The Formula Fords, they're all running the same engine, 1600 uh, Ford engine and uh, similar tyres. Anyway, uh, Kirsten's on her way and Carol Nichols has just left the line in the Nike. Yes, so this is now moving to class uh, J1, so this is a Formula Ford racing cars up to 1600cc, uh, so you'll see a uh, number of these uh, Formula Fords running in this class. This is always a very competitive class here, and actually um, the uh, ladies in this class have been the top runners uh, yesterday in practice, so let's see, we'll need to watch um, the competition between Sarah and Caroline Ryder in uh, the Van Diemen's. Uh, Carol Nichols, uh, running through uh, the uh, first competitive run. Carol is a great competitor. She'll be everywhere where she can run. And uh, yeah, it would be great to see her running today again. Yes, yeah, great to see Carol. She's a brilliant supporter of the sport, isn't she, to be fair. Uh, Charlie, Riley's, uh, Charlie Riley is already on the hill as well in his Van Diemen. And Les Buck is on the line in his Bring It Mistral. Yes, so you'll see a number of different chassis and uh, that you'll see. So we have the Merlin and, and the Van Diemen's and uh, obviously uh, those cars uh, were built in the uh, late 80s, early 90s. The Merlin is uh, obviously a, an older design uh, that you'll see. You can see the shape. It just looks like one of those Galax tricks that you probably had a kid. And uh, what a wonderful car. No driver assistance obviously in those cars. It's a four-cylinder Ford engine at the back, manual gearbox and yeah, great uh, way to get into single-seater racing. Uh, the young guns that we have seen, like Alex Kors and Tom Weaver, had a great battle uh, last year uh, in some of uh, the uh, their Formula Fords. So what a great way to get into motorsport. Yes, well, Les Buck is surrounding semi-circle off towards the finish. Paul Morecambe has just left the line in his little Merlin Mark 11. That's an immaculate little car, that one of Paul Morecambe's. Uh, Sarah Bosworth is going to be up shortly. She always has a big dice, doesn't she, with, uh, with, um, with Carolyn Ryder. And, uh, yeah, it's going to get interesting, isn't it? Yeah, Paul Morecambe uh, got into the 49s. Um, yesterday, 49.12 was the quickest time uh, from him. But uh, the top uh, class leaders uh, got the car into the 48. So let's have a look. Sarah Bosworth uh, now left the line already through the bridge, 67 miles an hour uh, through uh, under the bridge and through uh, Itoris, no problem. And through the crossover, let's see what she can do on this run. Yeah, I tell you what, Les Buck in his venerable car, uh, he's done a 49.03, showing them the way home so far. Paul Morgan, 49.08. Uh, uh, Kirsten Dodd, 49.62. I nearly said Ken Dodd then. <laughs> there you go, Kirsten. Uh, anyway, leaving the line. Oh, my days. We've got Adam Andrew Green and going up the hill in the Evo 3. This will be fireworks when it's Sarah Bosworth crossing the line. She goes across in 47.93, scorches into the lead in the class. Uh, have a look at Andrew Green. Yes, Andrew Green in uh, 90 miles an hour under the bridge, but a great time from Sarah Bucks with the 47.93. This is under the 48 second mark, so she'll be very pleased with uh, this run. Sarah is obviously a very competitive driver. She's a record holder, class record holder in a few places around the UK. Uh, she used to drive that beautiful Lotus Eclige uh, previously. Andrew Green already through the finish line at 38.37. Yeah, followed by Neil Coles in the OMS 28, Alex's dad. 
uh, beautifully turned out car. They travel up from Plymouth to most meetings. Uh, very nicely turned out car. Uh, let's see what he can do. Yeah, we've known... Oh, and Liam, uh, Liam Cooper, your favourite little force, uh, on his way up to shortly. Thank you, Chris. Uh, we've now moved to Class uh, J2, the racing cars of the uh, 11cc up to 1600cc. So most of those cars will still be running uh, motorbikes engines. Some will have quite a bit of development uh, onto them to uh, make the higher capacity engine. 40.31 for Neil Cause. Yes, you're quite right. We are in the 1100 to 1600 cc normally aspirated. These are all bike engines on this one. And in most cases, just about every case, I think we've got Suzuki engines actually um, in various uh, various forms and mostly Hayabusa engines. Liam Cooper actually already scorches off the line coming to you. And I've got looks like uh, Paul Jones or Rob Anscombe shortly. Yeah, this is the uh, start uh, for Liam, uh, 2.27 at uh, the 64 foot, but 93 miles an hour under the bridge, so uh, gains the speed uh, on the first part of the course. And uh, looking at the split, so uh, it's a decent uh, turn of speed from uh, Liam in this beautiful uh, Force TA. This is a full carbon tub uh, chassis, so quite an advanced uh, way of manufacturing this chassis, giving them great rigidity and uh, no flex, really. And uh, it's 39.09, uh, he'll be pleased with that run. Yes, he will. Uh, Rob Anscombe has just left the line. They had one or two issues to deal with yesterday, but hopefully all sorted. Rob, a uh, local man from Tempry, I'll say local, not far away. Uh, and he'll be followed by Alan Warburton in the Gaul GR59 that he's sharing with his son, David. Yeah, Rob, a uh, little bit of a uh, uh, drift uh, just uh, on the exit of Eater is uh, but great car control. Gaza did to Gaza, uh, took a steady approach probably into uh, part and didn't want it to have the car sideways again. Uh, already through the semi-circles, uh, let's see what it can do in this car. It's a 43 uh, dead, uh, so it'll be a bit disappointed. Probably lost a bit of time in the early part of his run. Alan Warburton quickly follows him, 90 miles an hour under the bridge. Uh, this is the class leader here uh, in this uh, car, Alan and David, uh, his son, who have been uh, very much so quick in this uh, class and in this car. This is a Gold GR59, so this is the latest spec, one of the best chassis you can have in this class. It's going to go through the finish line, it's a 38.74. Yes, that was uh, Sean Gould's uh, development car, actually, for the 59, that one. And uh, it's a certainly well-sorted car, very rapid, isn't it? Uh, Andy Short has left the line in his OMS Suzuki. That is a very nicely turned out car. Drives it well. Makes a nice exit out of Pardon. Over to you. Yes, uh, Andy Short, uh, slightly uh, behind in the splits uh, from Alan Warburton, but no problems through the second part of his run. Let's see what he can do. We'll try and make this up on the second part of his run is going to be a time in the 40s so 40.68 for Andy Short. Darren Gumbly, uh, yeah he's a very competitive local driver, always good, always trying, looking good so far, actually he's up. Yeah Darren Gumbly uh, going real well uh, so far, great turn of speed. Uh, barely couldn't catch him uh, at the S's and uh, going through semi-circles already. It's going to be a cracking time for him. This is going to be into the early 38s. It's a 38.72. Goes second in the class. Fantastic. Well done, Darren. Gary Hill has just left the line in another OMS 2000M. And, uh, and John Stockley in the Force PC is the next one to follow him. Yeah, it looks like uh, Gary couldn't really carry the speed uh, onto the tricky uh, Itoris in the first part of his run and then uh, looked for a gear uh, coming out of Pardon, but no problem on the second part. He'll try to make this up in the second part of the run. Great turn of speed so far into uh, the semicircle. It's going to be a time of 40.40 for Gary Hill. Lovely competitive class this, isn't it? Fantastic. I do like this class. John Stockley has left the line already in the fourth. And coming to the line is Robert Kappler in the Empire Red. This is a beautiful looking car in its green and grey colour scheme with its green helmet. Robert uh, comes from London. Been competing, competing quite a few years now and uh, works in the law industry. Yes, uh, I had a quick chat with him and apparently he's tried everything but now he's <laughs> gone into low so uh, yeah, great turn of speed for John uh, so far, it's a 40.76 for John. 
Yeah, excellent. So now we wait, Robert, this scintillating a power race. This is a well sorted car. What a pretty car this is. Uh, it's already going round into Orchard. 97 miles an hour through the speed track coming to you. Yeah, this is probably one of the most uh, advanced cars here today on the hill. Uh, this is follows the same principle that you'll find um, to this afternoon on the Formula One cars. This is two Venture Eternals on the side and this car can produce uh, downfalls from uh, low speeders uh, about 40 miles an hour uh, on this. And have a look at this car on the paddock, it's a beautiful thing. Uh, low drag and a lot of downfalls on that car, 38.44 for Robert Carter. Oh, that's a good time, isn't it? Yeah, well done, Robert. Uh, just that, that, that Formula One influence, did you realise that uh, Willem Toit uh, designed that car? And William Toit is a well-known aerodynamicist in F1, and he used to compete on hill climbs. Yes, yeah, Stephen Potter were uh, just uh, in the second part of his run here. Uh, no problems through uh, semi-circles already, and he'll be going probably a time uh, just under the 40-second mark, a 39.33 for Stephen Potter. So Adam Green still leads that class, but there's still a few to come in that class that might have something to say about that. Now, here comes Carolyn Ryder on the line in the little Formula Ford Van Diemen. Now, can she beat her good mate, Sarah Bosworth? Who knows? All the lady drivers are good friends, aren't they? Anyway, she leaves the line. Carolyn Ryder, mother of Matt Ryder, will be up late front in a rather fast goal. Yes, uh, those two have been having a great battle uh, in this uh, class. Always a competitive class. There's always a tense or two between all the drivers. Uh, just for record, uh, Sarah Books with a 47.93, so posted a very competitive time, just under the 48 second mark. It's sort of the target that you have uh, in this class with those uh, four minute thoughts. Looking at the split side, uh, it's looking a uh, decent run for uh, Caroline so far. Looking, uh, at the, looking at the splits, it's looking very good. She's up at the moment. Adam Greenham's just left the line in the Evo 3. Can he beat his brother? Caroline Ryder comes up to the line. She's going to go across in 48.11, which is just a bit slower than Sarah Bosworth's 47.93. Anyway, Adam Greenham with you. He's already up. He's showing great sector times. Yes, uh, Adam Greenham uh, yesterday got into uh, the early 39s. Uh, best time yesterday was a 39.23. So let's see if we can get an improve uh, on that time. You're probably going to be in this uh, class in the very top five. 37.91, a great time. Wow, wow, so that takes him into the class lead over his brother. Alex Coles leads the line in the OMS 28 that he shares with his dad. And uh, Alex may have something to say about this. He won't be trying, he'll be trying. Yes, I had a great chat with Alex this morning and he was like, yes, I'm definitely going to try. So let's have a look at the splits. It's looking good. 11.82 at it is and 17. Uh, 0.46 exiting pardon, so about three tenths uh, slower, but can he make it into the second part of the hill? He's going to be very quick through those last corners. It'll be a time probably in the early 38s. Let's see what he can do. Uh, 38.30. Yeah, good time, good time. Your friend Olivia Cooper in the Force TA, coming to see you. Yes, have a great look at this car. And Olivia is always a wonderful driver. She drives this car like she still leads 17.75, so great turn of speed uh, from her as well. 27.80 at the SEs, no problems through the second part of the hill. Let's see what she can do. I'm sure she'll be looking. She posted personal best last time uh, yesterday in practice, 38.64. Cracking time, that takes her fifth in the class. Just leaving the line, a possible winner of the class is David Walkerton in the ball GR59. Now this has got something to say about it. So is it Adam? Greenland's going to win the class, or is it going to be David Warburton? Yeah, David Warburton, a run of uh, contenders who will look to uh, get in the best time. He will uh, post it yesterday in practice. He posted a 36.85, and yeah, looking at the speed of the car through the trees from my commentary box, he's on course to do that. Let's see what he can do. He's off through the finish line, a 36.82. 36.82 actually made up quite a bit of time at the top of the hill there because uh, he was up and then he was down and then and all of a sudden towards the top of the hill semi-circle he must have really gunned it round there 
well done. Nicola Deard has just left the line in the lovely Delara. Uh, another lady driver, very competitive. Anyway, she's on her way to you. Yes, uh, Nicola, in this beautiful uh, Dallara F394, this is uh, powered by a two-litre uh, four-cylinder engine at the back, and uh, this was a circuit car before, and they've literally uh, ditched the side pod, so it doesn't have the uh, quite uh, distinctive shape of the Dallara cars. Then running no radiators, don't need that in the hard climb, 48.60 for Nicola Dirt. You've got Aaron Colborn now actually driving the now driving the Formula Renault Tatus 2000. So he's not in the Van Diemen, there may be a problem with that one. So he's already with you. Yes, yeah, so this is what happens when you put a four-cylinder, two-litre Renault engine at the back of a Formula uh, car, a uh, single-seater. So it's the same engine that you would find uh, on a Clio, really. Um, so not heavily stressed, but about 200 horsepower in uh, this car. Uh, but it's a car that takes me to my teenagers. This was a single series at the time, a 46.55. Kevin Creven on has already left the line in the Pilbeam MP88, sharing with Jonathan Evans. Uh, ex Mike Tregoning car, this one. Uh, my best wishes to Mike. He's, uh, he's a little unwell at the moment, having an operation next week. Hope it all goes well for you, Mike. Uh, watch it probably today in Cornwall. Uh, so we've now moved uh, to page 24 of your program if you're watching live. This is uh, class K1, so this is racing cars, 1600 to 2 litre, normally aspirated. Uh, came in already through the finish line of 43.85. Well, Trish Davis just left the line in the lovely Force TA, another of our very quick lady drivers. This is their new car this year. Got a 2 litre V8 in the back, built by her husband, very clever chap. Terry Davis built a jolly fine engine. Anyway, Trish drives the car very well, doesn't she? Yes, uh, no problem in the second, uh, first part of the run. Uh, a little bit of a finding gear moment on the exit of Pardon, always a tricky corner. Uh, probably uh, cost a few tents uh, trying to get uh, the car back and running and carry the speeds through the straight, but no problem in the second part of the run. Uh, great time at 42.19. Yeah, so we are actually in the uh, racing cars over 1600 cc up to two litre normally aspirated engines. Um, now, this looks like a rather nice car, the Empire Wraith. It's Clive Austin driving this one today. Um, this is the car that uh, is, is Jason Tunnicliffe will be driving later, but is also normally driven by Zach Zamet. And this car, uh, Clive has an empire, but he doesn't have one as quick as this. And I think he reckoned this was twice as twice the horsepower. So Clive leaves the line in the empire race while he'd be enjoying that car. Uh, may, he might want to buy this car afterwards, who knows? Yeah, there's definitely uh, some speed in this car. Clive is a great uh, driver. Hasn't been uh, competed as much as you expected and probably wanted to this season, but no problem. He's been increasing. Uh, he's been increasingly uh, quicker through practice uh, yesterday. His best time yesterday, 41.57. So I'm sure he'll be looking to improve uh, on this car. He's very fit family with this chassis, the Empire chassis is running a race. Um, usually this car is being currently being rebuilt, so he won't fancy to go again this year just to make sure he gets practice and seat time at 41.97. Here's one of our favourites, Ivan Price, the Force TA, came second at uh, third at Loden in uh, damp conditions in this little car, which was remarkable. Uh, anyway, Ivan is an ex rally driver from Wales, uh, great supporter of the sport, very quick driver too, isn't he? Yes, uh, Einan uh, got the car into the 38 uh, seconds uh, yesterday uh, through practice and it looks to be on course uh, to repeat this again. Uh, no problems through the uh, second part of the course, it looked to be a very clean run for him. A little bit of puff uh, at the back of the engine through semi-circle but up the gear through the finish line at 38.06. Well done Einan. Okay, just left the line. Is Ian Tucker in his OMS 28? Another competitor that comes from Cornwall, didn't bring any passengers up this time, but shame on him. Anyway, Ian Tucker in this lovely OMS, drives it very well, uh, over to you. Yes, uh, 91 miles an hour under the bridge, uh, uh, relatively uh, impressive turn of speed uh, from uh, this car. He looks to uh, going through the second part of his run. A great uh, driver Ian Tucker uh, on this uh, course again today time for him at 42.37. Now we've got another crowd, another crowd favourite, Jonathan Varley in the GWR Predator, the two-litre Perry Davis V8 in the back of it. 
He has had a fantastic season, such a quick driver. The car looks amazing. How low on the ground this car is, isn't it? This was Graham White's uh, Graham White design, and he, when Graham had the car, he had a big Formula 1 V8 in the back of it, and it was quick but very problematical. Anyway, Jonathan Varley, what's he going to do? Well, looking at this fleet, uh, 108 miles an hour under the bridge, and uh, so far quickest um, of uh, those cars in this category. Uh, Jonathan uh, got into the 38.17 uh, in practice yesterday. Let's see if he can get in under the 37 seconds. It's a 37.38, great time. Yeah, smashing time goes top of the class so far. Einem Price is second in 38.06, and Trish Davis third in 42.19. Uh, John Chalmers on the line in the roll. Now, this is spectacular. This one is very rapid indeed, isn't it, John, in this car? This sounds, and doesn't it sound amazing when it pops and bangs off the line? Off he goes any time now. And, oh, you can't miss that sound, can you? Well, I can't dance through your microphone, uh, Chris, so it must be loud. 190 miles an hour under the, uh, the bridge, no problem for a jump in this first part of this road. A lot of power, about 400, maybe 500 power, horsepower at the back of this car. And yeah, John uh, was uh, looking at uh, 39.63 yesterday, so just under the 40 second uh, mark. We've now moved to class K2, so this is racing cars. Uh, 1600 to 2 litre with force induction, so most of those cars will also be running a turbo or a supercharger at the back. It's a time of uh, 39.71 for John Chalmers. Yeah, nice time. So uh, I'm expecting, in fact, I can see Pete Tatham getting ready to have his run. Pete is, uh, I think, 10 times world champion. You know, these. Um, uh, ski board things but he put they put wheels on him he goes downhill on these ski board things with wheels and he's the world champion 10 times over won it again recently well wow, what an amazing guy he is the Tatham brothers are very competitive sportsmen aren't they they come from Yorkshire uh, in fact uh, Dave Tatham I think he's uh, running the family farm now actually he never he never really expected to do that amongst his other business interests but so he's now a gentleman farmer as well anyway Pete Tatham in the OMS beautifully turned out car he, he's had one or two little moments in this car to be fair uh, they had to uh, they had an off at Loughton didn't they do you remember that yeah and uh, we are back uh, to uh, looking at the class uh, I right so uh, back into the uh, under 1100 cc right yeah 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 that's right well anyway he's just about to leave the line he had the off at Loughton last week but it's all rebuilt he's all back in the game Scorching up the hill, 106 mile an hour through the speed trap. Over to you. Yeah, fantastic turn of speed for the team. Hit in the first part of his run. Uh, we're back to page uh, 21 uh, on your uh, program if you want to write down the time uh, after in a few seconds. Great turn of speed, up through the gears, through the straight, into the S's, try to carry as much speed through that part of the course into the 90 left uh, corner and into semicircle. Let's see what we can time. Looking at the splits, it's going to be a time of a 38.0 dead. Wow, that's a correct, that's a terrific time. It takes him, uh, takes him, well, he's in, he's in the 1600 to 2 litre class. I didn't think he had a 1600 in his, but never mind. Okay, Kelvin Broad is on the line in his Force TA. This is a little higher booster engine, turbocharged Suzuki engine, absolute scorch of a car. He comes up from Devon, regular competitor. Does a lot of a lot of work at uh, Wiscom and uh, Gersten. Anyway, and I've also got uh, well, that looks like Paul Haynes to me on the line. Uh, anyway, over to you. Yes, uh, Calvin Broad, second part of uh, this uh, run, no problem. Uh, decent uh, splits uh, so far on uh, this run, and uh, yeah, just looking at the uh, time splits, it's going to be probably just in the. Uh, 39s uh, looking at the different splits already through the uh, finish straight it's a time of 39.22 well stand by your beds Paul Hames is on the line in this beautiful gold GR59 stunning color scheme white and blue 1300 cc turbocharged Hayabusa drops the clutch anytime now scorches off the line my goodness me that is a quick car that's going to be to 100 over the speed trap for sure 110 mile an hour coming into your view now what do you think of that one 
Yeah, wonderful uh, turn of speed, uh, quickest uh, so far under the bridge. And uh, yeah, great turn of speed even uh, between Aitoris and Pardon. 16.52 uh, uh, just exiting Pardon and 22.76 at uh, Midway. Paul Hames was under in the 36 yesterday, his best time is 36.37. I'm sure he'll be looking to improve on this and it's looking like it is 36.07. 36.07, I think that's a very, very good chance of a runoff place. He's been up the top fives this year, hasn't he? Uh, Andrew Henson in his Dolores got brilliantly this year. Two litre boxing power in this one. Got about 270 brake horsepower, properly sorted car. And he'll be followed by Simon Barnwell in the Formula Renault Tatters 2000. Yes, yeah, so Andrew might not have all of the power in this car, but he can really drive this car and it's really quick driving through all those corners. Uh, there's a great handling car, this Dallara, and uh, yeah, gonna go through the finish line in a few seconds. And it's a beautiful uh, run for him, 40.19. Yeah, well done, Andrew. 40.19, good time. And Simon Barnwell's already on the hill with you now. Yes, he, uh, 40.19 puts uh, Andrew third in class um, so, so far. Uh, so great turn of speed for him. But Simon Barnwell uh, back in the uh, Formula Renault uh, car. So this is a Tatus chassis, and Tatus is uh, built in Italy, and they uh, still. Uh, manufacturing uh, racing cars. Uh, most of those cars uh, you'll see uh, in the Formula 3s and Formula 4s, uh, in the national championships, but also in the European championships. Yeah, 45-47 for Simon. Jonathan Evans has just left the line in the Pilbeam MP88, sharing this car with Kevin Freeman. Uh, and uh, that looks remarkably like Terry Davis uh, in his own car, car 1133. It is Terry Davis on the line. Jonathan Evans is already on the hill. Yeah, Jonathan, uh, quickest time uh, yesterday, 44.34, so let's see what I can do um, on this one. I'm sure I will be looking to get under the 43 uh, seconds, and they are trying to carry as much speed on the second part of this run already, uh, exiting semi-circle through the finish line of 44.18. Quicker than yesterday, you will be pleased with that run. Excellent. Terry Davis with you now in Force TA. This clever man built his own engines and for other competitors. Um, yeah, so uh, he's with you. Yes, uh, indeed. Uh, you put uh, four and four together, you put them in a V, and that's a V8. And uh, this is two Yamaha engine coupled together. Makes a wonderful sound, and it's been a very reliable engine uh, for many of the competitors that have adopted uh, this beautiful uh, engine at the back of their cars. Terry Davis, a 40.39. Well done, Terry. Now we've got Jason Tunnicliffe in the works Empire Raid that uh, Clive Austin drove earlier. And uh, he's scored, he got one off the line. He's going to be very quick. 107 over the speed trap, brilliant. Yes, uh, Jason, uh, 38 seconds uh, yesterday, 38.24. Engine popping and banging between a tourism pardon. Great turn of speed. Gas the car together, rotates the car, exiting pardon, up through the gears, no problem, into the S's. He'll try and carry as much speed, use the power of that turbocharged engine to power him out of the 90 left-hander into semi-circle, no problem. Off he goes into the finish straight, and that's the time of 39.17 for Jason. Yeah, nice time. Simon Tomlin just left the line in her own Pilbeam MP97. This is a 2013 car. There's not many Pilbeams on the hills these days. Gould seems to be the car of choice now in the pumps, the big classes. But anyway, Sandra drives this car. Four litres of Judd V8 in the back, and she spins it out of pardon. Okay, no damage done to the car. She's pointing to the inside of the track. There'll be a little stoppage while Sandra gets sorted out. She'll be a little bit annoyed. Uh, but anyway, these things happen when you're trying. Yeah, this is a tricky corner for all the drivers. It tightens at the end, and as you want to put your foot down, uh, sometimes the car over rotates. So we've seen uh, uh, Sharma is just uh, having a similar moment here. So, yeah, tricky corners for the drivers. Uh, Marshall's are already uh, looking to help her put her back uh, on the track and she'll be gently rolling down the hill um, so that Oliver uh, can jump in the car uh, later on. 
Yeah, she was obviously trying hard there, wasn't she? They're just showing the replay on the live stream as she's uh, approaching Pardon there. She's looking good so far, but then she probably just gets on the power a wee bit early. Very tricky coming out of Pardon, isn't it? So, uh, but anyway, I can see the marshals all trying to get her, get her pushed back. I don't know if it's out of gear. She's getting out of the car now. Uh, anyway, uh, Sandra's been competing for many a year. In fact, I remember before she had this car, one of the cars she had, she had a little Tigger sports car, which was a, um, it had a two-litre Pinto engine in the back, Ford engine in the back of that one. And, uh, yeah, but this, this is a lot of horsepower, this car. Oh, she's jumped back in now. So, right, come on, big shove, chaps and girls and whoever's up there. I, don't, I can't see who's there. Uh, I can, can give a shout out now to um, anyone that fancies becoming a marshal. Um, why don't you uh, approach one of the marshals or go to the office afterwards? Uh, full training is given. Uh, obviously, being a marshal, you get full access to the track. You, you'll be trained how to do it. You'll wear the orange overalls, and they do an amazing job. And without, without marshals, without all our officials that run these events, uh, we wouldn't go on. And so thank you. Big shout out to all our marshals on the track today. It's a hot day. Uh, they stand there in their overalls. Uh, it can be quite a long job because sometimes we can have a few incidents like this. Uh, Sandra's on her way back down. I can't see any damage to the car, just to her pride. You'll see her in view now. Yeah, so she'll take the car back. Uh, probably a little grumpy. <laughs> so don't go near her just yet. <laughs> but uh, anyway, we'll be back in action very shortly. I can see, uh, looks like, uh, probably Bernie Cavill, actually. He's got his... Uh, got his brolly over his head at the moment it must be quite hot out there now what's it we'd like to take this opportunity to introduce our live stream partner for today's hill climb championship and cup meeting footman james bhc cup main sponsors footman james have been at the heart of the classic vehicle movement for over 35 years and provide specialist classic vehicle insurance cover to owners collectors restorers and traders their classic car and classic bike insurance policies come with show and events cover as standard plus you can tailor your policy to suit your needs with their flexible fj plus options these options have everything from agreed value to track day cover. To find out more, please visit www.footmanjames.co.uk. I've been uh, marshals for a long time. I can hear a car on the start line. You certainly can. Your ears are good. You must be like Mr. Spock. Anyway, <laughs> you know Mr. Spock? But anyway, it might be before your time, but... Well, uh, Star Trek he was of course with the big ears not that I'm saying you've got big ears of course anyway but we have got a car on the line and yeah it's not telling me who it is but I'm thinking that looks like Bernie Cavill but I may be wrong we'll see in a second uh, right leaves the line on his way car 115 it is Bernie Cavill in the OMS 28 going well at the moment Yes, uh, always a great turn of speed from uh, Bernard Cavill uh, going through Ettore's and a uh, beautiful line. Those, uh, this car is obviously uh, shared and uh, yeah, great car to see uh, again today on the hill. Bernard uh, already through uh, the exit of Pardon, through the straight into the S's. Uh, good split so far. We've now moved up to um, the car up to um, two litre. Um, so yeah, we've got uh, this uh, gaggle car just going through uh, past us. Yes, we've actually got racing cars over two litres actually, and uh, I'm seeing some rather exciting stuff here. Uh, Anthony Hunt is just coming to the line. Terry Graves is called the GR55. That's a spectacular looking car, isn't it? And uh, yeah, that's a big Cosworth XD engine in the back of it, and I can see Sean Gould will be the next runner and rider after that. Sean is the builder, designer, Mr. Clever Man, builds these Goulds. Yeah, Lynn uh, managed to get the car under the 40.9 uh, on the 43 second uh, mark uh, yesterday. 43.47, so we uh, probably won't be that pleased with that run. But Anthony Hope quickly uh, follows in this uh, Gould uh, GR55 uh, with the uh, XD engines, so this is a Indy V8 at the back, quite a lot of power, probably about 600, 650 horsepower. Car has been a very, uh, the chassis has been very uh, competitive over the years and uh, held a few hill records across the UK. 
uh, Anthony Hearn through the finish uh, straight now, uh, looking at the time, 41.57. Now here's the man, Jean Gould, leaving the line in the Gould. He is Mr. Mastermind of the Gould Empire. What a fantastic driver he is too. Hell Hill record. He'll be looking to qualify for the runoff. What can he do at the moment? He's well up, he's well up. So over to you, come Sean, get, uh, get in that runoff. Yeah, Sean uh, uh, snatched one of the uh, runoff yeah, uh, last weekend at uh, Lawson. Uh, runoff that was affected by the rain, but uh, still a great turn of speed from him. Looking at the different splits uh, so far for Sean, he had a little bit of a spin earlier in practice this morning. 36.56 for Sean. Yeah, I think that'll get in there. Uh, Graham Wynn is on the line in his lovely GR59. This is the one that Scott Moran will be driving in a bit. Uh, Graham owns this car. He came second in our runoff at Loughton Park last weekend in damp conditions. He would have been very, very pleased. He's a grandparent. He's into his 70s, but still driving these big cars with summer plomb. Fair play to you, Graham. Oh, MBE too. Yes, uh, great, great turn of speed in the first part of uh, the hill. Uh, yeah, this beautiful car. This car had a bit of a technical issue yesterday uh, after uh, Will Berry on uh, the left right side uh, failed. But uh, the camaraderie and the um, great uh, people around him helped him fix the car. And actually, Wallace, uh, current uh, championship uh, contender, has been helping him get the car back up and running. Graham. Uh, through the finish line is 39.19. Okay, good, well done. Um, Lindsay Summers is just taken off the line in the glorious AFS P14 built by her son Alex. Uh, Alex will be looking to qualify that car into the runoff, hopefully. Uh, won't be as quick as the Goulds, but he has a good chance of getting in the runoff. Yeah, this is a home-built car right, that has been a project for many years in the Summers family and Lindsay uh, Mom of Alex Summers is driving this car beautifully again uh, today. This is running a V6 2.5 Opel engine from the German touring car from the late 90s. You might remember those. 44.41. Yeah, Ed Burgess on his way in the Gould. Uh, this is the X James Baxter Gould. It's very sinister in this black colour, isn't it? Uh, Ed is normally, well, used to drive Bugatti, still got Bugattis. But anyway, he's really enjoying himself in this big single seater this year. Uh, can he get into the runoff? Yes, I'm looking at the split and it's uh, looking good uh, for time under the 40 second. Let's see if we can do it. Yes, it is a 39.98. I'm so happy for Ed. I don't know if that's going to be good enough. We'll have to wait and see. But anyway, Sue Young just left the line in her gold. Uh, Rebuilt engine this year, had a break from the hill climbing for a while. Uh, breeds horses, amongst other things, very successfully. Uh, uh, trotting bonus, I think, is her favourite thing. Anyway, she's well on her way. She'll be followed by Paul Cruz in the OMS 28. Yes, uh, the Gold GR 51, a great chassis here again. A chassis that's been very popular. This held a number of uh, record across the hill and snatch uh, championships uh, in the past. Uh, Susan drove this car beautifully through the top of the hill now, through the finish line up, through the gears, and the finish line is 39.94. Well, that's a good time, good time. Paul Crute in his Jaguar engine, this came out of a road car, this one. Uh, it's only got, a, it's only, I say, it's only got about 300 horsepower on, which isn't a lot in a big single seater, but he travels up from Cornwall, here with his wife as well, regular competitor, nice to see him on the hill, and I don't think you'll see a better looking car here today, will you? Yeah, no, it's hard to beat it, and uh, Polo has, has this car immaculately clean. It, do, it does all the work on this uh, car, and probably down on power compared to the rest of the car. Probably about 300 horsepower at the back of the car, but no problems through the second part of the hills, already through the finish straight, under the finish line of 42.28 for Paul Cruz. Young hot shot just left the line, Jack Cottrell in the Dallara Cosworth. Jack, Jack is a young driver, very good, got an IndyCar engine in the back of this, uh, this Dallara Cosworth. Uh, quite a heavy car, he has a bit of a moment coming out of uh, Vittoris, over to you. Yeah, that was a bit slow coming out of Vittoris, but no problems through the second part into Pardon. Managed to uh, gather the speed, he's going to use all the power at the back of that engine. He posted a time of 37.34 yesterday in practice, so that was a really good time for him. And let's see what he can do in the second part of the run. He's already through the finish straight, through the finish line of 37.55. Yeah, I think that's got a chance. I think that's got a chance of getting in the runoff. Uh, Harry Pick in his brand new MS28. 
Now this is a quick car, brand new car, but he's got one of these IndyCar engines in the back of this one, does not he? Young driver, uh, works for Williams Engineering actually, so uh, knows his way around engineering and race cars. Yes, uh, it's just in turn with speed from Harry, 100, 100 miles an hour under the bridge, and uh, looking at the time, it's looking like a good time for him so far. Uh, it'll be probably a time into the 38, let's see what he can do in the second part of the run. Uh, already through the finish straight, a 38.89 for Harry Dick. Excellent, so he's getting the hang of that car, isn't he? Oliver Tomlin, Sandra's son, driving the family Pilby, and uh, my goodness me, has Oliver got a chance of getting in the runoff? Who knows? Yes, uh, Oliver needs, makes uh, this chassis justice and uh, yeah, great turn of speed, uh, rotated the car beautifully uh, at Harden, early on the throttle, no problem, through the S's, into the night, 90 degree left and on the entry of semi-circle now, let's see what he can do, looking at the splits, it's probably going to be a time around the 39 seconds for him, through the finish line, 39.77. It's all getting a bit close now. Simon Andrews on the hill, actually, in the OMS. He's sharing with Bernie Kevill. Uh, yeah, Simon drives this car very well indeed. Uh, can he make a runoff? Yes, uh, just looking at Simon Andrews' uh, time yesterday, 40.65. I don't think that will be uh, enough to get into the top 10, but no problem for him in the second part of his run. That was a tidy run for him. A 40.55 for Simon Andrews. Yeah, well done, uh, Simon. Yes, yeah, Stephen Owen, builder of these OMS cars. Uh, I think he's built about, I think you mentioned earlier, about 300 odd cars so far for customers. Uh, this is the top spec one, the OMS 28, the all carbon job. And uh, he's got a big, big V8 engine in the back of this one. A little bit sideways coming out of Pardon there. Over to you. Uh, no problem in the second part of the run quickly through the S's uh, yeah great uh, to see uh, Stephen Owen uh, you know competing and vouching for his own cars obviously it will probably help the development uh, of those cars as well getting all the feedback from the drivers 40.07 for uh, Stephen Owen now this is all getting very interesting now we've got uh, Perry Graves on the hill but I can see Will Hall just before the start line now We've got the big boys are coming to town. These are the ones that got serious contenders to win runoffs. Will Hall actually is driving his brand new Gould. Uh, Terry Graves making good progress up the hill. What's he going to finish in? Yes, uh, running the uh, 2.65 litre XD Cosworth engine at the back of 40.15 for Terry Graves, uh, quickest um, of his run uh, compared to his practice from yesterday. Well, here comes Will Hall. You can't miss this car. This is unpainted carbon. Looks absolutely fabulous. The latest spec Gould GR59. Got the Gould, the Judd V8 in the back of it. Got a pretty helmet. Vanity Hall is his company. Uh, Will Hall has now got a car. He can really show us what he can do. His previous car, which was a Force, he did have some problems with that and one or two big shunts. But this car, this is the car for Will. This is fantastic. He, I can't believe he's actually bought a car. Look at that. He scorches off the line. He'll be 100 plus over the speed trap for sure. Coming round uh, to the bridge, round Orchard, 119 mile an hour. Yeah, 1.8 second off the line. Uh, quicker so far today than we have seen. Well, we'll up the gears through between on the crossover, already into uh, Pardon. No problem exiting early on the throttle and uh, no problems through the S's. Uh, Will Hall uh, posted a 36.52, so definitely a runoff contender. He'll probably get to uh, the top 10, I believe, and I hope he does. Uh, that'll be a time of a 36, uh, 35.76. 35.76, well done, Will Hall. That'll get you in the runoff. Dave Uren has just left the line in the Gold GR55. This is the ex Martin Groves car. Shares this with Will Wallace's wife, Nicola. And uh, this car has broken hill records in the past. It's got big Cosworth power in the back, big V8. My goodness me, what can he get in the runoff? Yeah, David Aaron, I think, was a sort of force fastest in practice uh, yesterday. Yeah, best time of a 36.25 uh, yesterday. So great turn of speed from David in that car. Uh, let's see what he can do through this later part of the run, a 35.43. Wow, that's cracking time. That's got a, that's a runoff time. Uh, on the on the hill now, we're about to come off, Matthew Ryder. Interviewed him yesterday. What a charming young man he is. He's such a good driver. Holds hill records as one runoffs. He's in short Gould. 
GR59. This is the latest car. He has got the talent. He is a star now. He's going to be a hill climb champion of the future for sure. Already over to you, flying. Esparks coming out of the back uh, at the crossover as the uh, uh, rear of the hand uh, car of the car just touches the ground. No problems through the second pass already through the S's into the night. 90 degree left. He posted a time of a 36.31, so if Matt wants to get into the runoff, he'll get to need a 35 probably, a 35.79, and that's what he does exactly. Yes, he does that. Brilliant. Trevor Willis, our three times champion, is OMS 28. The most successful driver of the OMS is. Won the championship three times, uh, twice in this car, once in an OMS 25, I believe. Radical V8 engine in the back of it. A little bit sideways coming out. Pardon, over to you. Yeah, a little bit late on the throttle um, as the car uh, moved around him at the exit of uh, Pardon, but no problem looking at the splits. It's going to be a time probably in the 36, so my Grand Team uh, into the runoff. It's a 36.65. Great time for Trevor. Yeah, he'll get in the runoff with that, I'm sure. Scott Moran. Wow, wow, wow. Leaving the line. Six times champion. What a driver this man is. He just seems to be able to dial up the time. He said, right, I'm going to do that. And he goes and does it. And look how neat he is. He's fabulous, isn't he? Look at his lines over the year. Yes, uh, I remember watching that car uh, at the early uh, season testing uh, back in April. And I was so impressed by how cleanly Scott can drive this car. There's no first, nothing. Just pure terminal speed. And that grants him second uh, position on the championship so far still has a chance to snatch the championship 35.74 goes so second of our uh, of our contenders now uh, Alex Summers has just switched his engine off um, there's a I think they've oh I think one of the flat the little flaps up on uh, on the S's there has just been knocked out they're just going to put that back but so far then so amongst the serious cars for the runoff Davey Wren is leading the way at the moment in the racing cars over two litres so we won't know who's in the runoff you know till all the other times well we've seen the other times but i can't remember them all but but at the moment the these uh, 3543 for david wren and 3574 will hall in the 35s matt ryder in the 35s 36s for sean gould and trevor willis 37 for jack cottrell and harry pick in the 38s so i'll be really interested to see if alex with his talent, can put his own home-built car into a runoff. He hasn't, they haven't managed it yet, but this is the first time they've had dry conditions, the track's in good order, and I see we've only got Wallace Mingis uh, following Alex, and then we should have some idea of our runoff. Yeah. Alex starts his engine. Yeah, let me tell you, uh, Alex, uh, this morning uh, practice run a 37.27, so should be enough uh, to grant him a position in the runoff. But let's see what he can do. 1.8 off the line, 106 miles under the bridge. He's a great driver, Alex. He'll make sure that he can get into this runoff, and that's his objective for today. He's going to through the uh, crossover, no problems through. Beautiful turn of speed into Pardon on the throttle. This is running a V6 2.5 litre at the back and from the German touring cars and rev to uh, something like 14,000 RPM or uh, more if you wanted to. And it's going to go through the finish uh, straight in a few seconds. Let's see if you, what time he can post. A 37.27. Well, that's good driving, isn't it? 37.27, must have a good chance. Uh, on the line, our flying Scotsman, our own flying Scotsman, Wallace Mingis. He gets ready to get, try to get into the runoff, to try and win his fourth British title. So, Wallace is such a good driver, I don't want to be a commentator's curse. So, he comes round, he's looking good. He's going to do enough to get into a runoff. That's his first objective, isn't it? Uh, he's already over to you. What do you think? Yeah, if you're watching here at the bottom of it, or is a, you wondered uh, why one side is uh, black and the other side is red, well, uh, Wallace had a little bit of moment uh, early in this season at Chelsea, but no problem, he's a great uh, crew and uh, Gould managed to rebuild the car. Let's see, look at the split so far, it's almost the, one of the quickest so far, probably three tenths down, uh, looks as 36 dead, um, so that grants him a 
spot. Yeah, so the that gives him first fifth, runoff. Yeah, fifth, fifth place in the racing cars over two litres. All he needs to do is get into that runoff and then he'll do his business, won't he? Uh, Amanda George uh, in this beautiful Chevron B19. This is the car we talked about yesterday. Uh, ex Gerard LaRousse was the driver, the French driver, wasn't he? And uh, Joseph owned the car. Pretty, isn't it? Yeah, this is uh, such a pretty car. And the Chevrons of this series are such a uh, wonderful, clean car. And uh, really what you expect to see from a sports car of that era. This is running a four-cylinder, two-litre engine at the back, uh, obviously manual gearbox, no driver's heads, real driver's cars uh, that you can see already through semi-circle and through the finish uh, straight. It's a time of a 48.55 for Amanda. Andy Tippett is uh, just going by, you know, in the, the beautiful Brabham that uh, Owen described about earlier. He built this car himself. Isn't that fabulous? A Rover engine in the back of it. A proper old F1 type car, that. Yes, uh, Andy, uh, in his uh, practice run this morning, posted a 46.18. That was actually one second quicker uh, than his practice runs yesterday. So I'm sure we'll be very pleased with that. Let's see if we can repeat that to 45.20, almost a second quicker. You'll be very pleased with that. Yes, he certainly will. Martin Jones, actually. Uh, Grant Cratchley is on the hill in the Brabham PT21, the little twin cam engine version. And Martin Jones just leaving the line in the BT21 as well. Yes, uh, Grant, uh, looking at the time from uh, yesterday's, uh, managed to get under the 50 second marks. And uh, let's see if he can do this again. It's a 48.66, so track conditions are looking great for all those drivers that gives them the opportunity to push the cars uh, today. Yes, yeah, so Martin Jones on the hill, uh, just leaving the line is Robin Johnson in the little Tigger. This is that uh, Peugeot engine, rear, rear, rear engine Peugeot job. Uh, old car, but quite a later engine, really. Yes, uh, this was uh, originally built as a Formula uh, Ford car, so uh, received a four-cylinder uh, full engine in its early uh, days, but the Tigers are a beautiful chassis. I think the company folded it in the late 80s and they built about 300 cars uh, across uh, the, the Tigger uh, range, uh, different series of cars. This is running a 1.6 litre Peugeot engine with a 16 valve head, so quite a more more modern car than what you would find at the time. Uh, Robin Johnson already going through the gears and through the finish line. So 47.33. Brown, Tom Brown in the Mallet Mark 20B. I think I overheard uh, Owen saying earlier that they'd had to go home to pick this car up from Berkshire again last night. Anyway, uh, they've driven a lot of Mallocks. Uh, Richard Brown uh, as was, was a champion in a, in a Mallock, a brilliant driver. Yes, uh, Tom Brown uh, going through uh, this first uh, competitive run already through the entry of uh, semi circles, no problem on uh, this run. It's going to be a time very close to what Robin Johnson has just posted, a 46.45 for Tom Brown. Yes, now we're into some interesting stuff. Simon Breakway on the hill in his gorgeous RS 1600 in that beautiful blue colour scheme. He'll be followed by Matt Clark in the Austin Mini. Now, Matt and Simon have a good battle. Matt drives his socks off this little mini. He is such a quick driver. It doesn't look so fancy, does it? But my goodness me, does it go well in his hands. He drives it like a rear wheel drive car. So he'll be leaving the line shortly. Simon Braithwaite just going around semi-circle. Now he's going to be finishing in time uh, just 50.41. Now can Matt Clark beat that in the mini? He's quick off the line my goodness me this boy can drive and this little mini well it is an absolute it sorts them out doesn't it oh he's very sideways going around the orchard that is crazy driving <laughs> i just saw that uh, from my commentary box i could hear the tires squealing i was like oh my god i hope it's not the full tires so squealing but no problem for matt clark in the second part of the run he's definitely uh, giving it a go on this first uh, competitive run. We are now moving to the Bugatti's Owners Club handicap car. Um, so this is page uh, 27 on your program if you're uh, following live. And yeah, what a great uh, sight to see on the hills of the UK. Uh, Mini has to be there. It's a time of a 50.68 for Matt. 
Yeah, so 50.68, that takes him into the lead in that class. That's some going, isn't it? Uh, Martin Saunders just leaving the line in the glorious little escort, the, the grey one. Very pretty turned out car, that one, isn't it? But uh, he'll do well to beat Matt Clark. Yes, uh, Matt actually has been really consistent, uh, always posting times in the 50s uh, so far uh, this weekend. So great to see uh, Tom going through uh, the finish straight in a time of uh, 57.60 for Tom. No problem in the little twingo. Martin Sanders uh, in one of the second Ford Escorts that we have today uh, drives this car beautifully. This is a Mark 1 uh, car with a 2 litre engine at the front. It's already through the second part of the hill, no problem for Martin so far on that run. Yes, so Oliver Slater has left the line in that red Ginetta G15. There's not many of those around, is there, to be fair? Um, and he'll be followed by Austin Weltman. But yeah, so Mark Oliver Slater in that Ginetta is actually up on times at the moment. Yes, uh, obviously uh, those uh, cars are running towards a handicap, but we can always compare the time um, to one another. There's always a great competition uh, between all of those cars. And Austin Weltman uh, just in the first part uh, going through a crossover, then the entry of uh, pardon in this beautiful Lotus Elise. Believe it or not, this is a car that has celebrated its 25th anniversary and it was such an innovative car at the time. Perfect sports car for many uh, drivers and some people will rave about them because they drive so well. Uh, it was a very innovative way of putting a chassis together instead of welding it, they glued it together. So a uh, great way and obviously uh, the body is very light, about 800 kilos in those cars, 120 horsepower through the finish line, and it's a great run for Austin at 56 dead. Yeah, that was a great run. Uh, come to be in the lead in that class there, in a class of two, I think. So um, Richard George is on the line in the Chevron B9. Oh, no, Richard George is already well up the hill. Sorry. Yes, um, in fact, uh, just. Uh, figured out I've got the handicap time now not even official but um, I think uh, handicap time for Austin Weltman in the uh, Lotus Elise was a 55.5 so it got very close to that so probably gonna uh, snatch uh, all the points possible in this class. Uh, Rebecca Bro Crocom in this uh, Formula Ford uh, now running again a uh, great uh, turn of speed again for this car uh, a great way to get into single-seater racing through those Formula Fords. I'll just interrupt you. Jeremy Rivers Fletcher has just left the line in his Triumph Special. Now, this is a handicap job. Uh, he's got to do 52.91. Um, he's car number 170 in this rather nice old Triumph. What do you think of that one? Pretty, isn't it? Yes, uh, Jeremy uh, pushing quite hard into uh, the first uh, two airpin here on the uh, course. This is, uh, as you said, a Triumph Special, so uh, built on a uh, GT6 uh, chassis. So when you look closely and if you know your Triumphs, you'll probably uh, recognize uh, the way the chassis looks. It's a very distinctive way of uh, the front suspension arrangement. And he's built this car himself. Uh, he'll be going through the finish straight in a few seconds, but quickly followed by Peter Hockey. Uh, in this uh, beautiful uh, white clear. This is the Mark III and uh, we are now running into the Bugatti's Owners Club uh, Championship. So uh, this uh, championship is made for newcomers to the sport. A great way to get into uh, motorsports and progress through the ranks of uh, your climbing. Yes, well, as I see on the line, I've got uh, Patrick Hadley in the Morgan Plus 8. Uh, Martin Rawson is on the hill at the moment in the MR2 Toyota. Going well up the hill already, just gone round Baden. Uh, the big growling V8 of uh, Patrick Hadley goes away. I do like the sound of those big Rover V8 Morgans. They are rather spectacular, aren't they? Yes, uh, just to fill you up with the time, a 56.92 for Peter Hockey and just looking at uh, Martin Ronson just going through the finish straight now. Uh, it's going to be a quick time for him. It's uh, 56.51. And then we've got Patrick Hadley already through Pardon. This is a beautiful Morgan uh, V8. 3.9 litre, all the right sound. And he's enjoying himself uh, in this uh, championship run by the Bugatti's Owners Club here at Prescott. 
Yes, it'll be interesting to see what the, uh, the, the Morgan can do. At the moment, he's uh, maybe just marginally down. Uh, there's a right mixture of cars here at the moment. The Tigger's having another go. Uh, he's on the line. So uh, Patrick Hadley goes over the line in 54.67, which takes him into the lead in the class. Uh, Richard Morris is already on the hill, isn't he, in the Mazda MX-5. And it'll be Joe Mackerel in the shared Tigger drive today. He'll be the next one you'll see. Yes, uh, just looking at the um, handicap times, I don't know if they are uh, precise, but I'll give you what I have on my screen so far. Uh, <laughs> Peter Oki is 0.01 off uh, his handicap time, so a great uh, turn of speed uh, for him. Wonderful to see, so probably going to look at uh, leading this, but quickly followed by Joe Mackerel, uh, already through uh, the entry of Pardon in this beautiful uh, Tiga car that is shared. Uh, this car is running a four-cylinder 1.6 Peugeot engine at the back. A wonderful car, it does make all the right noises and it's the great shapes I would love to see from the single-seaters. Yes, well we've got uh, Joe well on the way up the hill. Rob Guttridge has already left the line in the, the little French Clio uh, RS, I think it's a two-litre Clio. And uh, he'll be followed by Stuart Diaper in the Caterham. R310 so we've got such a mixture of cars in this class haven't we yes uh, and for Rob we're looking for a handicap time of 62 seconds so keep an eye on the clock and let's see how close he can get to that time no problem through um, his run uh, in the uh, second part is already through the straight but quickly followed start diaper 71 miles an hour uh, in this Caterham R310 and uh, in this championship it's uh, you can your handicap time is set by your personal best, so you have to push yourself, and the first competition is yourself. Start Diaper is uh, looking for a time in the 47, 47.62 is his handicap time, so keep an eye on the clock. He's been going so well in this uh, beautiful Caterham, and he's going to get quite close to that, I believe, just looking at the splits. Um, he looks to be on course to do that, and potentially a uh, personal best of 46.91, very close to that. Well done, Stuart. Yeah, so Tim Stokes is on his way too in the Suzuki Swift Sports. Rapid little cars, these actually, and uh, nice little road car, aren't they? Yeah, the Suzuki Swift has always been a very uh, good car, great car to uh, drive around. This is sort of a sporty version, uh, but you can have all the gizmos inside, so no uh, problem. We're looking for a uh, handicap time of 58 second dead for uh, Team Stokes, so obviously the track conditions are probably going to help those drivers to actually improve on their personal best, it's a 56.87. Yeah, Jonathan Elwood with you, isn't he, in the Son Honda Civic Type R, and we'll be followed by George Perks in the Renault Clio 182, the little silver one that's on the line at the moment. So Jonathan Elwood, well up the hill, uh, what's he got to do? Yes, uh, John uh, using all the rev on that four-cylinder engine, uh, not a many modification in this uh, car, just a uh, air filter and a uh, louder exhaust at the back as you would expect on your Civic Type R. Makes all the right noises. Uh, we're going through a uh, time of a 58.32 is the target time that uh, Jonathan has. It's a 58.54 so he got really close to that. George Perk is uh, already through the second part of the hill and uh, halfway through uh, his uh, run. George Perk is going through, we're looking at a target time of a 56 uh, second, um, so quite a, a big ask in this car, but let's see what he can do in this run. He's going to go through the finish line and uh, meanwhile we had Colin Richards uh, leaving the start line already through uh, the entry of Pardon in this beautiful MG uh, midget. Uh, Colin is looking for a time in the 60 seconds and uh, let's see what it can do in the second part. Time for Judge Perk, 55.81. Yes. Colin Richard making his way through the second part of the hill uh, onto the entry of semi circles on here. Uh, 50, uh, to, uh, a time, sorry, of uh, 57, 58, 59, 60.33, I'll get this right. <laughs> I hope so, I hope so. I've just had a visit from his lordship, Owen Cool. He had a great big burger in his hand and a drink. He's gonna 
retired to the office to watch the live stream run off and eat his burger. Now, obviously, yesterday he had the burger, didn't he, yesterday? So uh, he's succumbed again, hasn't he? Don't, we, we're not supposed to say this on the live stream. <laughs> what are we not supposed to say? He succumbed to the burger. <laughs> yeah, yes, he did. He's been on a diet lately. He's been going to the gym as well. And uh, Maggie Richards on the hill in the Renault Clear, another one of your little French masterpieces. Uh, and uh, actually, I think she'll be the last runner before the runoff, which I have news about that when she's finished. Yeah, wonderful. Uh, thank you, Chris. And uh, well, on the topic of food, if you haven't made any arrangements, uh, we're coming closer to uh, lunchtime before uh, we have the next runoff. So uh, you can head to the paddock. Um, the, we've got a great uh, burger van. And to be fair, when I looked at them yesterday, they looked incredible. Uh, you can head to the uh, clubhouse as well. Uh, you have a selection of food there, sandwiches, everything that you uh, want to have for your lunch and uh, Friends of Prescott as well will um, give you uh, anything that you need uh, right in the middle of the paddock as well. So have a look through and it will give you a great occasion to have a closer look at the wonderful cars that we have uh, on the hill uh, today. Well, wow. the excitement is mounting folks. This is, uh, this is what it's all about. We've got a runoff now. We have two runoffs today. The fastest 12 cars that have qualified for the runoff, the top 10 of them will get championship points. But the big thing is that Wallace Ming is, he can beat, if he beats Scott, he could well end up with champion. I'm not giving out who's going to be champion over the mic till we have official confirmation from Rich Danby and the officials. But nevertheless, we've got the runoff coming up. Now, I have news about the runoff. Um, the qualifiers for the runoff and the first car to run will be Sean Gould. And because it's a dual driven car, he will get that back down the hill where Scott Moran will take over that. Um, the next qualifier is Jack Cottrell, followed by Jonathan Varley, followed by Alex Summers, followed by David Warburton. Trevor Willis, Paul Hames, Wallace Mingis, Matthew Ryder, Will Hall, Scott Moran, and David Duren. So David Duren qualified the old Gould into first place, but it means nothing now. It actually all that matters now is uh, who wins this runoff, who gets the points. Will Wallace Mingis be? Doing, be able to do enough to edge Scott out and win his fourth championship. That's what's on, that's what's on issue here now. Uh, it'll be another runoff later on if they both qualify. But he, he actually has the chance now to qualify for the runoff, uh, to win the runoff and win the championship for the fourth time. He travels all the way from Alloa in Scotland. Fantastic supporter of the sport, Wallace. He's, uh, he's, he's, he puts a lot of money into the sport for other competitors. And only yesterday, he gave a wheel bearing to Scott Moran, his greatest rival in the championship this year, because Scott had done a wheel bearing. So, uh, so they'll both be in the championship. In fact, I can see I can see Scott and Wallace down in the paddock now. If you look on the, you see the live stream, probably wishing each other good luck. Uh, who's going to win? Uh, so are you still up there, Benoit? Yes, uh, just looking at the uh, qualifying times, a great time for uh, David. Uh, we've got four drivers in uh, under the 36 uh, seconds, um, so it's going to be very close. I look at the times between Scott Will and Matt Ryder, and they're all in the 35.7. So, yeah, what a wonderful uh, runoff we are going to see. Uh, today. Obviously uh, we've got quite a few um, contenders at uh, the bottom of that list. John Varley here is competing for uh, to get into the uh, obviously British uh, points but his main aim is the British Hill Climb Cup uh, of which he's leading and they are all tied up with 141 points uh, at the top with three drivers on the same point so a big ask for Scott um, if he wants to run that championship so let's see what that can do we might have a new uh, champion today at the end of the day 
Yes, well, obviously they both won the championship. Wallace has already won it three times and Scott has won it six times in the past. Now, Scott has got a massive ask to do today. Wallace has secured so many points earlier in the season and as you know, there's a drop score situation as well. It's quite complicated. I'm not going to call it how that works. All I know is that Wallace is in pole position to win his fourth championship, isn't he? Which would be a fantastic achievement, to be fair. And uh, he... He's been always driving the big goal, doesn't he? The big red goal we've all become very familiar with. He's got an incredible team around him, actually. Tom New, Duncan and co. They do a fantastic job. And the remarkable thing is that they, they got this car with the help of Sean Gould rebuilt after the big Shelsley crash, which was a major, sh major accident. And that was only three weeks ago, wasn't it? And they got the car rebuilt in two weeks to go to Lopen Park last week and score some points. Now I see the course car is just coming down now. Uh, everything is in order, I suspect. Uh, the red flags have been put back. The marshals are getting on their posts there. Yeah, in fact, I hear engines starting. I've got a car coming to the line. I've got Sean Gould coming to the line now. Now, Sean, is a fantastic driver and I can't emphasize enough as talking to him yesterday he built and designed this car and this is the car to have the Gould GR59 it's got proper Formula One technology in it and Sean is not a young man anymore he won't mind me saying that but my goodness me he can still build and he can really drive a racing car now I've got all the split times that will show me uh, who's doing what Sean comes to the line. He won last weekend in damp conditions at Loughton Park. Uh, he might have had the best of the conditions, but nevertheless, you've still got to get the car up the hill to win. Now, this car looks amazing, actually. He's got the black helmet. He gets ready. He leaves the line any moment now. He revs the engine, drops the clutch, scorches off the line. My goodness me, heads up towards Bridge now. He is absolutely flying 100 mile an hour through the speed trap. Heading in towards the Tories now. He's got a good line going through there, keeping it all on the island at the moment. Heading up towards Pardon now. Now, Sean will put the marker down. Oh, a bit sideways coming out of Pardon. And he's going back, he's heading up towards the S's. This is a tricky part, very brave part of the track for them gets around the S's, oh my, yeah, he's a little bit sideways, going up towards semi-circle, boots the power down, over to and up to the line, 36.81 is our starter for 10, or starter for 12 actually, so well done Sean Gould, 36.81, now that he is going to come back down the hill, down the back track, and he'll hand over to Matt Ryder, but Nevertheless, we will have Jack Cottrell as our next runner and rider. Slight delay as uh, Jack gets to here. They're just readying themselves in the paddock. Unlike Loughton last weekend when we had the wet dry track, didn't we? Uh, this weekend we got full dry track. Everything is looking really good. Is a hill record in danger today? That would be a big ask, wouldn't it? But uh, more importantly, will Wallace Mingus win the championship today. Let's see, let's see. So, Benoit, what do you think of that bit so far? Yeah, sh a great run from uh, showing uh, just a little bit of uh, uh, sideways uh, action. And actually, uh, Sean was a little bit uh, slower than his qualifying uh, run, about 310. So, yeah, it looks like he ha wasn't able to really fire the tyres uh, on this run. But a great run nonetheless from Sean Gould. Let's see where he's going to end up at the end of this uh, runoff. Uh, the record of the hill here uh, for everyone is a 34.65, uh, currently by Wallace in this uh, beautiful GR59, uh, a record they posted back in September uh, 21, so about two years ago. Let's see if we can repeat that uh, again today. Okay, thank you very much for that. That's a great update. Uh, Jack Cottrell on the line in the Dallara Cosworth. Now, this one is actually the heaviest car amongst these big single seaters but it was designed as a track car really by Delara which is an Italian make anyway he's got big powerful V8 and IndyCar engine in the back of it 
He's a young driver, extremely talented, and he leads the life. Now, what can Jack Cottrell do? He's qualified for the run-off. Well done to Jack. He goes through there at 106 miles an hour through the speed track on his way into a tourist now. Takes a nice line out of there, puts the power down, heading towards Pardon, down the dip, up towards the tight left-hander that is Pardon. He's away from there already. He is just marginally down on Sean Gould by 0.25 of a second through the S's, which is always very, very scary. Heads out of the S's, heads up towards semicircle, just about 0.32 down, blasts the power down to the finish, finishes in a time of 37.14, which puts him second to Sean Gould at this stage. Now, coming to the line now, they're coming in a start, coming thick and fast. We've got Jonathan Farley, who's qualified for yet another runoff in the Predator. Now, this is only a two-litre car, so he's up against much bigger engine cars. But if you look at this car, doesn't it look fantastic? So low slung, designed by Graham White and run by Graham White. Now in the hands of Jonathan Varley with the V8 in the back, leaves the line. What can Jonathan Varley do? At the moment, he's just a fraction down. He's 107 mile an hour of the speed trap. Oh my days, he was very quick through that ground. Goes around in Tory, looking good so far, heading up towards Pardon. Is he going up on Sean Gould? No, he's back. Half a second down at the moment, but he is giving away a lot of power on this dry track. Anyway, making a jolly good effort. He's 0.78 down at the moment through the S's, gets it round the S's, heading up towards semi-circle. He's, he's now 0.69 down, uh, heads towards the finish, but the power of the engine won't be enough. 0.76 down, 37.57 goes third so far well this is a bit exciting we've got alex summers alex summers in his own home built car what a pretty car this is as benoit said to you earlier opal v6 power in the back of it but this car took seven years to build at home so he leaves the line he's not mucking about he's on his way he is actually up at the moment on everybody so well done alex 198 mile an hour through the speed track Heading on his way up to Torres. He's such a masterful driver. He's already won the championship in the past. He's runner-up as well. Heads up towards Pardon. What sort of time can he do? He's just slightly down on Sean Gould at this stage, but the engine won't have so much power. But with Alex's talent, uh, yeah, he's falling behind a little bit at the moment, but he's going to head round the S's. He's on his way up to semi-circle. He's slightly down at the moment on Sean, heads up towards the finish, puts the power down, and he finishes at 37.69, which puts him fourth so far. Which actually, he'll be very pleased that he made the runoff, which is a great achievement. First time he's done it in that car. Well done to Alex, and his firestorm is not running this weekend. Uh, the next runner and rider is Dave Warburton in the beautiful little Gould GR59. This is a lovely little car but he's only got a 1600cc Hayabusa engine in the back of it, so it's a bike engine car, but he certainly can drive this car. He's been making runoffs on such a regular basis, embarrassing some of the bigger runners and riders. Anyway, at the moment, he's left the line. He's going through the speed trap at 103 mile an hour, on his way up to Etoris. So far, so good. Is he going to be able to get amongst the big classes? If he had finished in the top six, he'd have done extremely well, to be fair. He's actually only marginally down on Sean Gould. So that's pretty encouraging stuff. Heading towards the S's. This is a very brave part of the track where they make they can make or break the time. He's point, one point, point oh six. He's actually up at the moment. Like, come on, put your foot down, boy. Go to the finish. Yes, he goes into the lead. 36.57. That's brilliant driving, isn't it? Brilliant driving. Well, this is all hotting up now, isn't it? It's all hotting up. On the line, Trevor Willis, our three times champion in his little OMS. This guy, he knows how to put a racing car up the hill. He's an instructor. Uh, he, he's just, he, we, you call, we call him Scary Trevor. He's, he's, he's just such a brilliant campaigner. Leaves the line. What can Trevor do? Can he beat David Warburton? At the moment, yes, he's up. He is up at the moment. He heads up there. He's 101 mile an hour through the speed run. Into a tourist. Now, gets round there cleanly. Powers it down there. Going up towards Pardon. This tricky hairpin. 
good line through there. He's 0.45 up at the moment. So Trevor is showing him the way. He's 0.52 up at the moment as he heads towards the S's. Wow, this is looking good, isn't it? This is looking really, really good. Heading towards semicircle, 0.67 up, heads towards the line. Yes, that's going to go into the lead. 0.76 into the lead. 3, 5, 35.81 for Trevor Willis goes into the lead. Well done, Trevor. Fantastic. Now our next driver is Paul Hames in this Gould GR59. 1300 cc Suzuki Hayabusa with a turbo on it. One of the most immaculate cars here today. Blue color scheme with white. He's got blue and white helmet as well. He readies himself now. Trevor has laid down a marker, 35.81. That was a blooming good time. 36.57 for David Warburton. 36.81 for Sean Gould. So he's going to have to go into the 35s, which I think he's capable of doing. Revs it up. Oh, and he stalls it. But the rear wheels haven't gone over the line. Uh, so that's not the end of the world. He will get, he'll fire the engine up again. Uh, as long as the rear wheels don't cross the line, he gets another go. Right, fires it up. Motorbike engine. Starts it up. Now, let's see whether he can get a clean start this time. He will be zoned in. That's all he will see is that ribbon of track just in front of him. Puts it into gear. Revs it up. Fires it. Yeah, fires it off the line. Not the cleanest of starts, so he's already a little bit down on his start, but he'll have to make it up up the hill. But he's absolutely flying 110 mile an hour through the speed trap, heading into a tour. He's going to be a man on a mission now because he knows he's got to really go. As he approaches Pardon, we'll see what he does on his split times. He's 0.8 down at the moment, so it's cost him a little bit sideways out of Pardon. He'll be a bit raggedy up the hill now, I suspect. On his way up towards the S's, a scary part of the track. Exits the X's, heading up towards semicircle, which is another scary. He's 0.81 down, not his best run of the day. Uh, heads over the line in 36.73, which puts him third. But he's behind David Warburton and Trevor Willis. Now, here he is. This is where it all counts. Wallace Mingus. He did enough to qualify, brings his magnificent ball to the line. What a colour scheme on that car and those, those wheels. It just looks amazing, doesn't it? Tilly Cultree's Quarries, he is the man. He owns that company, three times championship. I love the Union Jack helmet he's got, but he's a Scotsman from Alloa. His wife races as well. Now, this is his big chance. Now, Wallace, you can win the championship on this run, and he will be aware of that better than me. Visor goes down, off he goes, brilliant start, I love that start, that was quick, that was quick. Okay, he's going through the speed trap at 108 miles an hour, heading towards the Torres now, his lines look really, really good, he doesn't necessarily have to win the runoff to win the championship. So he's heading towards Pardon in this magnificent goal. He's got so much power and he drives it so well. It's a very clean run so far. Yes, he's up at the moment. He's up in both sectors. He's just up on Trevor Willis, which is good news for Wallace. And he's, uh, he's going further ahead, 0.03. Heads around semi-circle, heading up towards the finish in a 35.6. Goes into the lead with only four runners to come. Well... So basically, well, I can't say who's if he's going to win or not, but Matthew Ryder. Matthew Ryder will be looking to win this runoff. Of course he will. Brilliant young driver, top spec Gould. Matthew, he's just such a calm, quiet lad when you meet him around the paddock. He's so nice to everybody. He's, uh, he's an absolute credit to his parents. But I tell you what, don't be fooled. He can drive a racing car, this boy. He's well capable of doing this job here today. At the moment, he's just a fraction down, but uh, let's see what he can do as he powers around Orchard at 111 miles an hour. He's already rounded Tories, heading towards Pardon at the moment. I'm not seeing, Yes, he's up on time. He's 0.39 up. He exit Pardon. That's good news. That's a tricky corner. Heading towards the S's, which is a very tricky part. You've got to be brave through there. At the moment, he's 0.46 up. He's going to do this, you know. He's round semi-circle. Puts the power down. Going to the finish. Over the line. 34.95. 34.95. Puts him into the lead. 
Wallace Meng is second. Trevor Willis third. Well, this is Will Hall will be the next contender. Will Hall. He's got a car that can do the business. Stalls the engine. Never mind. They can restart that. That's it. They put the battery pack on the back. Will Hall has got a car that uh, he can do. He can show his talent with. And uh, my goodness me, he's doing a great job this year. Unpainted carbon. Is he stalled again? Come on, Will. Get your finger out. Come on. Anyway, so uh, it's getting exciting, isn't it? Matthew Ryder in pole position at the moment. Is he going to win yet another runoff this season? Pretty amazing stuff. Okay, Will Hall's revving the engine. He's come to the line. He says, right, that's enough of that nonsense starting the engine up. This is how visor goes down. Will Hall's capable of winning a runoff. The unpainted carbon, I think it looks fantastic in that. You can see all the different types of carbon used, different sheets. The latest spec, four litres of Judd V8 power. Will Hall, visors down, revs the engine. I need a very clean start. That's looking very good so far. Nothing in it at this stage. Nothing in it. Heads towards Orchard. My goodness me, he's absolutely flying. He's round the Taurus already. Not seeing the splits just yet, but he heads it on to course pardon. Here he comes now. What's he going to do? He's just a tenth down on Matthew Ryder at this stage. So at the moment, that puts him probably ahead of Wallace. He's 0.17 down to Matthew. Heading round the S's, up towards semicircle. Heads towards the finish. Now, down the foot, he's going to be 048. Up 35, 43, puts him in second place. Wallace is third. The excitement is palpable. Scott Moran, six times British champion coming to the line he seems to be able to dial in a time he's what a talent he is again another quiet man when you talk to him so modest but what an achiever to win the british championship six times it's still on it's still possible scott moran i think he wants to try and break a hill record he leaves the line he scorches off the line he's just a fraction down he heads up through towards bridge 113 miles an hour heads towards in Torres. At the moment, he's heading towards the park. We'll get an idea of the time then. At the moment, he's looking pretty good. If anyone can do it, it's Scott Moran. Round part of the air, that's around. He's slightly down on Matthew Ryder. He's slightly down still, 0.017. Heads towards, up towards semicircle. The power will go round any moment now. Round semicircle, up towards the line. Can he do it? Can he do it? Oh! Hang on, we've got a dead heat, folks. Matthew Ryder and, Matt and Scott Moran, 34.95. We've got a dead heat. Well, that's really interesting. At the moment, we've got a dead heat between Scott Moran and Matthew Ryder. Will Hall third, and Wallace Ming is fourth, Trevor Willis fifth. Now, I don't know what that means in terms of British championships. All I know is that was one heck of a runoff. Goodness me, we don't actually see many dead heats. I can't remember one. Oh, here's, hang on a minute. There's still another runner and rider. We've got Dave Uren. Goodness me, Ponzi, get your act together. Dave Uren said, I can still have a say in this. He's got to go into the 34s. He's got to go under 35 seconds. Now, that should be the last runner because he was obviously the fastest in qualification. So, it's all to play for. So we've got a very interesting championship. I think we could be heading, possibly, we could be heading to the second runoff. We'll have to wait and see. Anyway, Dave Uren comes to the line very shortly. This is the X Marching Rose Gold. This car has been around many, many years, but it's got a very well driven car and it's held hill records in the 22s at Shelsley. Dave Uren. He's a superb driver. I completely forgot about him coming to the line. I'm so used to Wallace coming up towards the finish. Anyway, Dave Uren, can he win the runoff? He's got to beat 34.95. Let's see where he's, in fact, Wallace Ming is 35.60. Is he going to do Wallace a favour? At the moment, he's slightly down, but he's certainly trying hard. He's going on his way, Brandon Torres. Nice clean line, little bit sideways out of there. Heading towards Pardon, this tight hairpin. Oh my goodness me. Whoa, really puts the power down. He is actually up. 
Believe it or not, folks, he is up. He's winning this runoff at this stage. He's now slightly down, and he heads out of the S's up towards semicircle, 0.45 down. He's not going to win the runoff, I don't think. So over the line, 35.66 goes fifth. Wallace Ming is his fourth. Will Hall is third, and tied Scott Moran and Matthew Ryder. Now I'm just looking into the paddock. I'm seeing some shaking of hands. They don't know whether he's done enough. Who knows? We will get a confirmation shortly. Wallace is shaking a lot of hands down in the paddock. Has he won the British Championship for the fourth time? I can't confirm it, but I can see an awful lot of shaking of hands. Any moment now we will know, because Rich will be around the back there working it all out with the officials and our timekeepers. Not sure yet. Can't confirm anything yet. Either way, what an incredible runoff that was, to be fair. I can't recall seeing a tied runoff before. Scott Moran and Matthew Ryder. Scott, just an amazing driver. And Matthew Ryder, what an incredible young driver. Will Hall, really on the pace in that new gold. And Wallace, the flying Scotsman, as there seems to be a lot of happiness in the paddock down there at the moment. But I have had no official news. Yeah, what a great runoff, uh, Chris. Uh, Joe was just looking and taking notes of uh, the different uh, improvement between the qualifying runs and their uh, times in the runoff. And uh, what a great time and effort uh, from Scott Murren. Uh, he actually increased, improved his uh, time in this runoff by seven tenths. So a great turn of speed for Scott. Really gave it all in this one. But David Oren, who was uh, qualified first, in this runoff, uh, it was about two tenths slower. I really thought he was going to uh, do it, uh, but it had a big slide uh, at Pardon, it, almost like a rally car where you would have pulled the handbrake. I don't know how you control this one. Uh, that probably where he lost time because he couldn't carry this speed through the straight on the second part uh, of the hill. But yes, what a great uh, time and effort for Dave to get the GR55 up there this is uh fifth uh position sorry uh yeah fifth position for dave so great uh time for this but matt Ryder obviously uh, will be um i think the winner of uh, this uh, runoff uh, i think when you do uh, when you're the first to do the time uh, then you're you're the first person to to win but uh let's see what the officials will do uh great time for uh William Hall as well, 35.43, 30 in this uh, championships, in this uh, runoff. Beautiful time for him. Yeah, we're not sure. Uh, I can't confirm or deny whether Wallace has won the championship yet. So um, that was, is still to be a certain. I've had no official news, but there's certainly a lot of uh, shaking of hands and hugs around the paddock. But uh, who knows when we have it officially, we will tell you. But that was one good runoff, that was, to be fair. And we live for these runoffs, don't we, Benoit? Yes, and I want to uh, mention as well a big shout out to Trevor Willis in this uh, runoff. Improved his uh, qualifying time by eight tenths in this uh, runoff. So, tremendous effort in uh, this. And we know Trevor can do it. And he did it again uh, this time. I'm just going to find out how long we've got for lunch. Right, I, have, I can confirm that actually it is lunch now. We do restart at 2.15 uh, when we may have more official news. If as soon as I hear anything... Ah, uh, Wallace Ming is, is champion. It's come up on our live stream. Well done, Wallace. It's just amazing. This is such a lovely moment, getting a hug there from Sandra. <laughs> Sandra Tomlin. Everyone's giving him a hug shaking the hands congratulations to wallace mingis our champion for this year four times champion brilliant unbelievable stuff well folks it is lunch uh it's time to go and calm down get yourself some grub 215 start and we'll see you a bit see you in a minute
there, mate. No, there's nothing. Nothing. Just a hot. Okay, Wallace, well, congratulations on another championship. Uh, taking out the year where we didn't have a championship, that's actually four in a row. How are you feeling about this? Yeah, that is four championships in a row. So, yeah, really chuffed. Really, really chuffed. Relieved, actually, right now is probably more of the emotion having the last sort of post Chelsea onwards. But, um, yeah, really pleased, really grateful to all the, the effort that Tommy and the boys put in to get the car back and going. Sean and David Gould as well, and Chris. And then uh, the guys that run it, you know, Russ and Dunk as well, and Stuart this weekend with Mikey. So it's a team effort, but I'm, I'm kind of really, really relieved to get it over the line and super chuffed as well, really. When, when they got the car back together and got you to Loughton Park like last weekend, were you, were you nervous getting in the car at all? Like, were you apprehensive or are the boys are just so good at what they do, you knew right away you had, a, you had your weapon back the way you wanted it? No, listen, Tommy's got the whole thing set up between him and Russ now within points a millimetres where everything goes so Sean and David were, were happy enough to make the repair to get us going again um, and get us out finish the year off so no it was the car was exactly the same you've always got every driver has some form of a hangover from an incident um, but no we're pretty good to go and, you know we just need to get on short Scottish short tails last weekend at Lowton which we place one place behind him each time and then this weekend obviously a kind of similar thing of a fourth to, to get it over the line so yeah Pretty relieved and chuffed. Yeah, good. Well, Scott Moran wasn't going to let you off the hook, was he? He was going to push you all the way to the end on this. No, and, and, and you can't just keep that down to Scotty. You know, it, the last bit's been Scotty, but all year, you know, Alex has had some... He's had a really character-building season, I think, the way toward it. He's had his challenges uh, with a car, not his driving, because his driving's phenomenal. Trevi's back up and on it. Dave, you know, Dave just qualified quickest and was up until the end of it. Um, obviously, Matt... They are just one again along with Scotty and Sean's, yeah. Sean's there on a good day. So there's, there's only one of half a dozen to eight drivers that can, that can bang it in the lead. So it's been a really tough, long, hard season, but really, really competitive and it'll all be out next year. So you are coming back next year for, uh, to defend your titles, shall we say? Uh, no, it's only, only ever counts as title. <laughs> You've only ever got it for that moment in time. So yeah, we'll be back out next year trying our hardest. That's the plan at the minute anyway. Well, thank you for your time, Wallace. I know you got things for this afternoon, so appreciate your time. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.
Well, Scott, you pushed him all the way. You did everything you had to do. You, you won the runoff. You tied it with Matt Ryder. Um, could you have done any more? Um, not really, no. He's too big to push, though, isn't he? That's the trouble. <laughs> like, we are going out live, just to yeah, let yeah, you know. Um, no, you, you weren't going to let him off the hook. You, you literally pushed him all the way. Last week at Lowton, they got the car back. Um, you were able to squeak ahead of him a little bit, but uh, he just wouldn't go away, would he? No, no, he's been, it's been, you know, they've had an awesome year, Wallace and the team, they, they've just come out of the gate running and we've just needed to keep up. But it's been, uh, yeah, second half of the season for us has been really good. We've found a few little bits on the car that we've improved and that's, that's found us a bit more pace, but it's just not quite enough to, to get in front of him. He just got that lead a bit too far away. So, uh, no, they've done a fantastic job. And to be fair, if it wasn't for those guys, you know, Wallace, we had a wheel bearing collapse yesterday and that, that would have put us out, you know, if they hadn't had a spare. And they came across with one, so uh, that you know, if that hadn't happened, it would have been all done and dusted, this, you know, earlier. But uh, no, it's all good. You know, congratulations to Wallace and the team. They've, uh, yeah, they've just done a better job. <laughs> it, it is true. Uh, Wallace actually dug through his spare parts to get you out today, yeah. didn't he? Yeah. Yeah. No, that's that's the spirit of hill climbing. You know, we've always done that. I mean, back in '97, when Dad, Dad is had his championship, his co-driver put the car off earlier in the day on the, at the final round, and. Uh, there was people actually leaving the track to hold the meeting up to slow it <laughs> to, so they could get his fix. And those people come with, they do their run, pinch bits off their car, get them on dad's, and he, yeah, it's, that's how it's always been. So it's, it's nice it's, to see it. Nice yeah, to see it. it's, it's still like that today, isn't it? The, the camaraderie between everybody. Yeah. Um, I heard a rumor that you might not come out and play in the big, in the big cars next year. Is, yeah. Are you going to say anything, or am I just going to poke the bear here, trying to get a press, <laughs> trying to get a lot, you know, yeah. trying, to get, trying to get into the latest gossip? No, I think um, no, I'll probably have a, have a few years out. It's uh, time for a bit more family time. Just, you know, we've, you know, our kids have, they've grown up around this, which is great. It's a great sport to be around. But every weekend is, you know, there's something, oh, we've tried to like, we'd like to go there. It's, oh, well, we're going racing, sorry. <laughs> so it's, it's just, to, you know, give them yeah. a few years and, uh, and then it's, it's the sort of, we can come back. And like Ollie, our eldest, he's 13 now. He's chomping at the bit to get out in a car, so ah, yeah, right. we, we will be back. <laughs> so there's going to be a third generation, you think, uh, getting onto the hills. I, I will say your son's actually behind the behind the controls on this yeah, at the moment. Yeah, he's yeah he's happy in there. Rich has given him the reins, so yeah, he's he's doing. I think he's doing a good job. I think he's missed like, too much, so yeah, yeah, it's good. Well, we still got another runoff this afternoon. Are you are you going to uh, establish that? Your top gun here at the at the track for the weekend. I'll give it. I'll give it a go, but uh, didn't work out so well this morning. But yeah, it's good. We'll have a go. Thanks for your time, Scott. Thank you. Cheers. Right, Alex, um, let's just catch the fans up to date here. Had a horrible time with the DJ Firestorm last weekend. Not your fault, a technical problem, but the way the technical problem was just too difficult to get it sorted out. So you brought out your own car, and I keep saying on commentary, please rename it because I can't get the letters in the right order. Um, and I believe your first goal today was to see if you get it into the runoff, which you have actually achieved now. How do you feel about that? I'm over the moon. Yeah, it's obviously a real shame not to be fighting at the, the front with the firestorm and it's nothing that DJ have done it's a it's a motor it's just obviously not coping with the, the vibrations of that engine which is obviously <laughs> quite extreme motor that so um, yeah it just didn't seem sensible in a four-day week to try and turn it around it's, it's about 10 hours to change the the motor yeah. and it's you know just w w this was the low-hanging fruit really um, <laughs> So you just went to, well, that's sitting there, let's, let's get her out. I know it wasn't, it was going to be run here anyway, but um, so uh, you're happy to please. The car is still improving, you're still developing the car, and uh, et cetera, et cetera, but are you happy with the progress of the car this year? I'm very happy. I think what, what's brand new for me is when I'm normally driving a car like the Firestorm, I don't think, ooh, I wonder if that bracket's strong enough to do this. <laughs> Does that make sense? So I know that the, uh, the name is, is giving you trouble, but I'm sitting there worrying about, you know, uh, wishbones and, and, and calcs and bending moments and all sorts of things. Um, so gone are the days where I can absolutely send it into a corner and think happy days, you know. They're, they're, you're worrying about all the little things, but 
I just want to get it to the top every time. Um, I did a I did a 36.0 or a 35.99 or something with this engine in the Firestorm, but being a steel space frame, this is a fair bit heavier, uh, and the plan is to, to change that, but at some point. But um, to be where we are, to be fighting JV, I mean J Johnny's driving brilliantly, and, and mm. Jack Cottrell and so on. That's about my target, and as long as I can live with those guys, then then great. I mean Jack's got a bit more power, John's probably a bit lighter. Um, but, but fundamentally, they should, with, with the engine in this, it, it should sort of cancel out. So it's great to have competition, but to see it out working, to get to the top, to speak to people about it, other engineers, people who've, who've built, built cars themselves, that's the kind of passion element. Um, so it might sound glamorous saying that was there, so I'll take that, but it's obviously been seven years with my mum, my wife, my dad, Trevor Willis has helped a lot, of course, DJ. Um, so to get it out at a national and get it runoff is a, is a dream come true. Um, I would just wish it was 300 horsepower more and 50 kilos lighter, but life doesn't work that way. And um, yeah. So this is the hazards of going from a driver of the race car to the designer and the builder of the race car. Yeah. So every corner here says, well, if I change that geometry a bit, it would have grabbed that, you know, a little bit more bite here and a little bit more grip there. And yeah. um, if I do this and move this over here, I might be able to get a bit more launch and so on and so forth. So, so you're, you're not a driver today. You're engineer testing is what we're dealing here. The, the problem I have, and I think most uh, car builders would say, I'm blinded by parental love. <laughs> right, yep, so yep. I'm not very objective about it. I mean, I get other drivers in it. Richard Spedding's driven it, Dave uh, Warburton, um, and Trevor Willis, and they come out and go, "Oh, you know, that doesn't work." And I'm going, "Don't, don't be nasty about it." <laughs> uh, but uh, I'm having to kind of cut that out and say, "No, that doesn't work, and that needs to be changed, and so on." So there's two elements to it. There's obviously that I want it to do well because I'm invested in it, and it's my baby or our baby, I should say. Um, but I also have to be grown up and sensible and think a bit, a bit like I do when I drive the, the McMurtry. It's, it's a tool, it needs to be uh, tested to its limit, but in a sensible, controlled way. And I've got to make the improvements. Because let, let's be honest, I, I've been three seconds faster up here than I have in this. Yeah. So I, I, could, I could go and throw it in a barrier trying too hard. The point <laughs> is to get it to that speed sensibly and not put it in the wall and, yeah. and to make sure that those brackets and those bits and those wishbones and so on are safe yeah. and then we can go hunt big performance. I'm not saying I'm not trying, <laughs> but... You um, never not try on the hill. <laughs> but I'm not completely sending it because yeah. I am just slightly concerned, not concerned with it, nothing specific, but you know, naturally concerned for its well-being, I suppose. So, this afternoon, mm. I take it the ultimate successful weekend will be at least one point in this car one point and you you saying AFSP 40 that would be that would be that would make my I, I will be practicing all afternoon on that the AFS is my initials yeah that one um, I figured out but uh, the, the summer's purple turtle is the alternative if you must the, it's been when Trevor Willis first saw it painted he said oh, it looks just like a purple turtle right hence the turtle logo right I'm not enamored with that but if you must call it something else then the thing that people will recognize would be that but um, I, I, will, I, will, I will, hand on heart, try to get all six letters in the right order this afternoon. It just, it, you would say the GR59, just say the P40. And that, and I, 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 I agonized over the name, but it, the, the Firestorm, the Raptor, the Predator, those names have been done, haven't they? And I could, True, we're running out of dinosaurs and other, other prehistoric animals, so. Yeah, that, the, but a turtle is a prehistoric animal, if you think about it, yeah. if we go back far enough. Yeah, I suppose so. It's not as glamorous as, or as scary as a T-Rex or something like that, but... Um, it's the one. It's. It's. Uh, I've had that inflicted upon me, but I sort of see the funny side of it. I think. Yeah, but there's the tortoise and hare story. <laughs> so everyone else is going out. You're slow and steady. You can. You're, you're going to come up on them when they don't see you coming. Well, yeah, that would be nice. But yeah, no. A point would be a dream, but I'm not going to cry if I if I don't. I, I think to get it to the top, put it back in the trailer in one piece, and have a pint at the end of the day would be. Uh, you know everything I could could hope for in a second. Right. Well, I'm going to push your target. Second quali uh, qualify for the second runoff this afternoon, so I got something to talk about. Excellent. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thanks, Alex, for your time. You take care.
two on the phone. So no sure. One, it's there watching the down that one duration. So the up that one has up and to the right, to the right. And um, if I walk up there, I'll probably find it. You should probably. Yes, believe it or not. You really want me on commentary? I'm gonna have to. Uh, they, no, they, no, we're actually really going to stop me, are they? Come here. Come here. You, I can get a few minutes out of here. Yeah, for about 30 seconds. Hi, Rich. <laughs> Right, I'm with Will Hall. Uh, Will, this is the first year in your new Ghoul GR59. It's still got all the carbon patterns from the original molds, but you're getting quicker and quicker with this car as the years gone on. So you're happy with the development process and you're getting used to the car and everything? Yeah, yeah, really starting to enjoy driving the car now and uh, um, confidence in the car. So yes, and we keep on improving and improving, so over the moon. So. So you're starting to get some really good results in the top 10 runoff. So is that boating well for next year? We're going to go full challenge. And uh, I know you run the series anyway, but looking to get yeah, to yeah, yeah. knock Wallace off his uh, perch, shall we say? That's the aim, yes. <laughs> We're not doing it for no other reason, but you got that number one number, yes. Right, so it's all carbon fiber at the moment. Are, are we going to do a paint job, or have you gotten used to this and it's like, oh, naturel? It just gives it sort of that sort of more evil, get out of my way, I'm not messing about look. Originally, we was going to paint it, and then we ran out of time with the car at the beginning of the season. And then the amount of people who like the interest of the different carbon weaves and so on, yeah. but I think more than likely we will paint it because when the sun's shining on it, the heat inside the cockpit is horrendous so a little warm inside the car is it yes yeah so it does the weight loss some good but <laughs> yeah um beautiful car i know i talked to you earlier i think it was the beginning of this year or just yeah. the end of last year and you were still waiting for this package so yeah. now we've seen it in person was it it was worth the wait then i take it uh, yeah yeah absolutely yeah. so sean gould this is a gould gr59 sean gould has put together an excellent package yeah. and uh yeah you're happy with it and uh yeah, so we're looking for top threes and then the maybe a little bit more. I would like a win. <laughs> we haven't had a win for quite a while. Can you do it today? It'd be nice, but it's going to be a tall order, but we'll try our very best. Track going to get slick a little bit with the, the hotter tarmac this afternoon. I mean, we've got sunshine out here, which is throwing everybody off. Um, the soft slicks, sometimes they don't like a too hot a track. You start to lose a bit greasy. Do you, yeah, what do you think? We manage our tyres, keeping them in the shade and stuff like that. So. We've just got to manage the conditions we've got. Does it make the track a little bit trickier, like drive up? Uh, do you have to compensate your driving or expect a little sliding? or uh, Just used to it, really. You know, your knowledge of hill climbing. Yeah. Experience is what you're saying. It's grey hair, yes. <laughs> Thank you very much for your time, Will. Good luck this afternoon. Yeah. 
Second, David. Uh, do you let me just do these? You want to tighten your nuts? Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Ah, I no, definitely okay. want to tighten the nuts. Look like Tony Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, yeah. No, no, I don't. Yeah, I don't ever get in the middle of somebody's nut thing. That gave me exactly the four points I needed to uh, just, uh, just oh, jump Spedders. Oh, you jumped? Because I was in 11. Right, okay. And jump Spedders in 10, but I needed four to jump in. Can you get to nine, or is that a big ass? No, 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 no. Right, so you're, right. Just, you're just fighting for 10 for I'm minutes. fighting, I'm fighting for 10. Mind if we have a chat about it? Yeah, let me just do that last one. All right, but David Warburton, you were number nine this year after you finished in the top ten last year. Coming into this event, you're actually 11th. You're outside the top ten numbers for this year. You finished in the runoff seventh. That's giving you four points and put you up into tenth. You've jumped Richard Spedding, who's been having some car troubles and issues. Um, what are you going to do? Can we try for ninth? Or are we going to hold? What's I your think, plan? I think realistically, in terms of what we've got, we've got Paul Hames in ninth. He's in the sister car to this with a turbo. He's now got reliability. He's got the seat time. Nearly twice the horsepower. I'm, I'm happy with 10th. It's a little bit too much of a jump. So your target is essentially the rest of the season. Uh, we've got three technically rounds left. Um, is to try to maintain the 10th. Don't because Richard Spedding is, in, he is here in another car, and that other car did qualify in the first runoff. Is there a danger he could qualify in the second runoff, and you two are going to be trying to chase it all the way down to the last event? Well, Spedders isn't running this afternoon because Jonathan Varley could win the cup. So they, he just doesn't want to risk that. But rumor is Spedders is going to be coming out in another Raptor, not his own, at Lowton. And if you put Spedders in a Raptor, he's he's going to do well. So I would like to get a few more buffer points this afternoon. Okay. And then if, if that car does come out at Lowton and he's in it, then, then you know, it can go down to the wire at Lowton. So this is a sportsman, uh, sportsmanship thing. Because um, Richard's engine went a couple of rounds ago. He was in, actually, Alex Summers' car last weekend at Lowton. Um, Jonathan Varley, who did qualify for the top ten runoff, and like you said, he's gained points in the, in the cup. He uh, has, Richard's been driving his car, but Richard stepped aside in a sportsmanship move to make sure that nothing happens to Johnson's car for this afternoon for Absolutely. him to continue points. Um, and that's, that's sportsmanship, that's what makes British hill climbing so great, doesn't it? It does, it does. Like, um, when the Summers family found out that I wasn't going to have this car for Wiscombe, they offered to let me have a drive in, in, in their car, um, the, the P40 which was great of them, and that has happened throughout hill climbing history. If you're out of a car, someone tends to offer, if you're safe, 
yeah. then someone tends to offer you, you a drive, which is great. So the fact that you're actually respected by the Summers clan to them to offer a car, that's got to give you also a, like a confidence thing because they recognize your skill as a driver. You're running a two-liter car and you're fighting with the, the big V8s. Yeah, yeah, and it gives me even more confidence that that car went back in the trailer <laughs> absolutely fine with all four wheels left on it. Um, but yeah, but with, with a 1600, being able to mix it with, with the big cars, you know, it, it's hard, it's quite stressful because even though you're way down in the pecking order, every single point counts. So, I do always say in this sport, it's either number one or number ten and then it doesn't really matter what number you get in between. As long as you've got a number, it doesn't, it doesn't really matter. So getting a, getting a number on a 1600 car with how the sort of the, the field is at the moment, I'm, I'm really happy with that. And if we can carry that through to the end of Lowton, then that'll make my winter. That's what giant killing's all about. It takes the fun. Beat him with something you shouldn't beat him with. Exactly. Give uh, it a go. Give you a, uh, good luck this afternoon. I will be on the microphone, so don't let me down. <laughs> good luck. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Broke a drive shaft. <laughs> These are the new Bluetooth drive shafts. Well, there's several things depending on who I talk to. <laughs> you got a minute to? Oh, of course I have. Yes. You got a second?
Right, I'm with Damian Bradley, the driver of the Subaru Legacy that you see in uh, front of yourself, a developed car. This car is becoming quite, would you say, famous or infamous on the hills? Maybe infamous would be a better way, yeah. Yeah, infamous on the hills. Um, they've been developing it. They've been starting. You've got, is there still some, uh, you're still hunting for some class records at various venues still, aren't you? Just the one at the moment, so Dune is the is the last one for the car, and then the car's got a full sweep, although next year we plan on entering the full Bridge Hill Climb Championship, hopefully venturing across to Craig Antlet and the Channel Islands and see if we can get the full, full house. So that, is the, that includes you heading down to Jersey and the Channel Islands? Yeah, indeed, that, yeah, yeah. So we get plenty of messages from people asking us to come along and have a go in the Channel Islands, so yeah, we're going to have a crack at that as well. So yes, I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to pull the elephant out of the room here. You're not the quickest in class after the first time runs. Yeah, we're back to the old days of rallying where Mitsubishi versus Subaru. Now, I forgot his name. Steve, 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 my friend, Steve in the Mitsubishi. He's been quietly just developing this thing and plodding along. The quiet farmer from down south. And he's just been sneaking up and sneaking up. He's, he's been playing with PBs and everything the last month or so with that. Um, are you worried or is he like, do you feel the pressure a little bit? Steven's car is phenomenal. It's insanely fast and very, very well developed. And he's a great driver and he's been doing really, really well this season. Um, it's great to have a battle. Um, let's, let's see how we go. Is it true that your, your car engineer slash co-driver sometimes slash critic actually called you after that run before you even got back down to the paddock area saying what were you doing because he was watching the live stream he did indeed yeah yeah so uh steven's there steven darley's there always uh on my shoulder giving me instructions and uh paul blameyer as well just uh sort of analyzing all the information and seeing so obviously he's got the record Stephen Darley's got the record in this car uh, and we only had two gears when he took that record here because um, I'd broken the gearbox on the previous run so he's saying to me with all the gears and the fact that, as you know as we discussed earlier it's now pretty much automatic yes. <laughs> yeah, 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 <laughs> then uh, it, it should be easy shouldn't it apparently not <laughs> <laughs> indeed it's not no it's definitely not okay are there going to be uh, just to let our audience know um, any developments for over the winter or just fine-tune, tweak things for next year? It's going to be some significant upgrades. You've got to keep going. Uh, as we mentioned, Stephen Darley, he's got a new car coming out, which we've heard lots about, but uh, that should possibly be having its first outing next weekend um, at Harewood. Uh, and then that car is the same as this, but 100 kilos lighter with a crazy guy behind the wheel. Uh, so I need to develop this car to stay ahead of him. Um, so we'll see. Oh, this is not, this is a go get your own car and, and let's see what you can do. So no more sharing next year. This is going to be you versus him, theoretically? Uh, quite possibly. The, the, the sharing is definitely not ruled out, so I quite fancy having to go in his car myself, maybe return some of the favours or put some of the scratches and things like that that he's put on mine, <laughs> hit a few thwackers. <laughs> so yeah. we'll see how we go. Yeah, a bit of scuff here and there. You know, it's always like someone wearing a new pair of trainers and they sort of like, yeah, no, we'll put our foot on it the first time out. Yeah. So okay, well we look forward to it. So you, you after today, are you you running any more events that we're going to see you at? We've got the big E. The big E this year is the, is the finale of the Tin Top Challenge, which is going to be at Lowton Park in a few weeks' time. Uh, so Stephen Darley is currently leading me three to one um, on that. Um, so uh, I think maybe I'll just ban him from driving the car for that event. Um, but if his is ready, then great. Uh, so that's going to be great fun. But if it's not, then so you can of course. So we might see a debut of a new car at Lowton. That would just be amazing. That would definitely make my year to see his out and him enjoying it. As long as it's not painted white with the same graphics, because it'll do my nut in commentating. Thanks for your time, Damien, and good luck this afternoon. No worries. Thank you.
I'm just done, Davey, and I'm going to do the car. I'm trying to get the tin top for a bit of cover. So I don't, you don't have to interview. I don't want, but I'll talk about the car. Did you said PB? No, 43. Yeah, we'll yeah. start. Yeah. 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 They made it an automatic, and it shifted in the third of all time. So we found that Stephen Darley was on the phone and yelling at him before we even got back down to the time because he wants to buy the lunch. <laughs> So, brother, there you go. You said, uh, I know. 997, man. So I'm just going to say the reverse. Yeah, hold the camera, come on. Yeah, wrong camera. Right, right. Could be dead here. Where is it? On it, watch, really? You're going you're gonna to avoid the interview then. Okay. Right. Um, now for the other side of the, the coin. We just saw the Damian Bradley Subaru. This is Stephen Moore's Mitsubishi, currently leading the class by a tenth. Um, Stephen's not available in the moment, but I've got his car. I might drive off with it. This is over 600 horsepower. This is the Mitsubishi Evo 6. And Stephen's been developing this. It does have launch control, track control, and all the goodies. And it's that typical back to the back to the 90s and the 2000s where you had the Mitsubishi versus Subaru battle and rallying. Well, we've got one here this afternoon at Prescott. Um, Stephen is is the two completely different driving styles. The cars are completely different in balance. The Mitsubishi's probably got a little bit better handling. The Subaru's got a little bit more grunt. So there's a trade-off on that. But as you can see, this car is absolutely mint. It looks like it just came out of the paint shop. Not a scuff on it anywhere. Stephen really looks after his cars. Um, so this just gives you an idea what the comp competition looks like in the in the who's the quickest. Car with a roof up the hill this afternoon. Um, Stephen does tell me there's more in it, so are we going to see a quicker time this afternoon? Is he going to get that get that synchronized run, all the corners lined up and everything? We'll have to wait and see. Thanks, Steve. I won't dare talk to you. I know she's leading the class. <laughs> what is your PB on there? And what is your on? More in it? We do a load. Put the wheels on the grass. It's working. No. Some people have tried that this morning. So, it's all going well. Having a good weekend? You guys back at Lowe's? So I'm never going to see you again. You take care of yourself. I'll see you down the road somewhere. <laughs> right, okay, here we go, folks. Um, my name's Owen Kuehl, Canadian accent, and introduce yourself. I'm Ben, um, one of the commentators here at Prescott. Uh, I've been spending all my time with Owen here and, and Chris as well. Um, so I'm one of the voices who hopefully you can now put a face. Yeah, now you know why we're commentators and not television presenters. <laughs> but uh, what do you think this afternoon? Um, 
you know, the excitement of the championship, that's been decided. But um, what do you think? Are we going to be look? We've got some very, very tight times and, and competitors very close in the classes heading into the second runs. I think you're going to have an up. Do you think we're going to have an upset, or everybody's more or less going to stay where they are? Well, I think the first surprise uh, this morning was David Uren uh, getting into you know top qualifiers in the first runoff uh, this morning. So let's see if he can repeat that. Uh, when I was watching the, the split times, I really thought he would he would do it. And uh, yeah, that was really exciting to watch. Uh, Trevor Willis was very impressive. He improved his time by about eight tenths from his qualifying run. So that was really good. Uh, big uh, shout out to Trevor for this one. Okay, and further down the field, we've got like the 1100 class. We've got like 22 cars in there, and some of them are only hundreds of a second apart. Have you got someone that's not leading the class that might pull out a quicker time? They did below their performance in the back of your mind. Any ideas? Um, difficult to to tell. Um, I'm sure all the drivers will be pushing again this afternoon. What we need to watch out is the British Hill Climb Cup. Um, with John Varley, the, the top three drivers are drawing on the same amount of times. Um, so we, there's going to be a big battle uh, between all of those drivers uh, to snap the British Hill Climb Cup. Yeah, that's something we don't talk about much. There's the British Hill Climb Cup, which is sort of the mainland run. So they, it, it, it's all the same rounds as the British Hill Climb Championship, except we, they don't travel overseas to the overseas rounds. Um, and Jonathan Varley, we spoke about him earlier on, on our lunchtime paddock walk. And Richard Spedding has stepped out of the car for this afternoon because Jonathan Varley made it into the, excuse me, made it into the top 10 runoff, got some points. There's an opportunity for him to actually jump ahead in the British Hill Climb Cup. So there's a lot to play for this afternoon. We will try and keep you updated on many stories as they come. But oh, the second runs always seem, they always throw the cars at us a little quicker than the first runs. Yeah, and uh, it's been a beautiful day. So the drivers will have the confidence to push. So yeah, we'll, we'll keep an eye on the great results that we can have. Actually, uh, one of the ones that could uh, get into um, the British Hill Climb uh, Cup is just the car behind us with Rodney Isles uh, in Alfa Romeo 4C because those drivers, it's not just single seaters, it's all uh, classes of cars that can get into that cup. Yeah, this is, uh, we'll just see if we can get the camera up here for a minute. This is Rodney Isles. Uh, I talked about him this morning in the road going uh, class over two liter. He's the class holder um, and he's holding off. If you see on camera, you see this whole row of Porsches, the, uh, the VXR220, and he's holding them all off with a very unusual car, an Alfa Romeo 4C, which is this one here. He is currently leading the class. Now, this is important in regards to collecting points for the British Hill Climb Cup. As you can tell, you can have any car in any class, but you've got to be competitive in that class. I do know that Rodney is trying to actually set a new class record with this car. He's about, oh, I can't remember the timing, but he's, he's less than a second off of it. He's not far off. He's not far off. If he could actually break the class record, that would give him a bonus point, wouldn't it? Yes, exactly. And this is all about this, uh, what we are going to watch uh, this afternoon. So, yeah, John Varley, for example, already holds the records. Rodney Hiles as well. So they have to build, build their own records, um, which is going to be tricky uh, for those drivers to do. But let's see if they can do it this afternoon. That's what we're going to be watching. Yeah, it's essentially setting themselves new personal bests, which is always the target of a hill climb competitor. Because um, the first target you want to do is better than your last run, and then you look at the competition around you. So it's another one to watch this afternoon. And it, it's, it, 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 in the class, it might be all right, but it's also the British Hill Climb Cup.
There's loads of things to apply. Yeah.
Here I am with Roger Moran, father of Scott Moran, uh, British Hill Climb champion himself. Uh, I'm going to ask him a few questions about how he got into it and what, so what was it like back in the day. Roger, what was, how did you get into hill climbing? Oh, a friend of mine by the name of Bill Morgan persuaded me. Oh, it took him years to get me to come and do one, but it was after the... Uh, I was heavily involved with the Motor News Championship back in the uh, late 70s, early 80s, and then they changed all the rules and regulations, took the, took the fun out of it for me, really, and I wanted another direction, so... Just quickly, you said Motor News. I mean, we're talking rallying now, aren't we? Was this road rallying, stage rallying, or what? Yes, road rallying, yeah. Yeah, I remember the Motor News Championship uh, back in the day. It was RS 2000s and Chevettes and things like that. Uh, what car were you running then? Yeah, I had an Escort and RS 2000. Yeah. So, so here we are, uh, hill climbing. Uh, now, you told me that Scott started racing in 1995, I think, and I think it was a Caterham. Now, at that time, you were racing the single seaters. What were you racing, and how did you get on? Um, that would have, 95, I, I would have had the, the smaller pill beam with the 2 litre. We started off with a 1600 and then moved to a 2 litre engine with that. And Swindon Racing Engines gave us that engine to use. And I managed to win the, the, the then the equivalent of the Cup Championship that I got now. It was called the Leaders then. And I won that uh, two years running, 94 and 95. So you won the leaders. That, that that's not the British Hill Climb Championship, though, is it? Or or, or is it the equivalent of no? no it, was, it was like the class. It was a class-based um, championship within the British Hill Climb Championship. So so we were running a two-liter then. So then to win the British Hill Climb Championship, you probably needed a bigger engine and a different car. So what what did you get then? Yeah, that's when we bought. Uh, I sh I, we I went into part shares really with a with a new pill beam. Um, that would have been the MP72, and that we did that with uh, George Ritchie from Scotland, and uh, and that at the time had a three and a half litre Judd engine in it. Ah, so that being like a Judd V8, presumably, um, and then, so, did you win the championship straight out, or did you run up or anything? No, sadly not. No, I was outside by Roy. Ah, <laughs> so, explain to us about uh, who, who was Roy? Roy? Roy Lane. Roy Lane. Yeah, Roy Lane. He was he was one of the top people at that in that day. You know, and he's got. Um, if you have a look at some of the statistics, some of his things are still unbeaten. Some of his wins and um, and the number of times he qualified. Uh, well, was that in the era of ADO and, and people uh, like that? Well, that was a bit before my time, but yeah, ADO was there. ADO at the time was actually driving a two-litre pill beam, um, just on a, on a works basis, really. But he was still very good. Yeah, so thinking about this, Roy Lane, I know, was an exceptional driver. There were some great drivers around that era, so to, to win championships then was pretty tough. But you did win the championship. When did you do that? Uh, that that was a year after 1997 and that's when um, actually David Grace and myself finished we finished on a tie break and I, and I beat him on the tie break I don't know how that worked but I was lucky enough to get it so but it went right to the right to the very end of Dune and it was it was a really nail biting nail biting finish much like it was last year yeah well I remember David Grace because I commentate with Billy Grace at Shelsley and um David won the championship, I think, five times, and it just goes to show the sort of the, the excellence of the competition, if you like. Um, so now that um, you're not in the big single seaters, what are you driving now? Well, I'm driving a Skoda R5 car, which is um, it's actually parked across the way there. It's, um, it's an R5 Skoda, it's an homologated car, but I have to run it in Sports Libre because um, they haven't built enough of them to. Uh, to allow it to run in the modified saloons, which is a bit confusing for spectators, but those are the rules, I'm afraid. We're trying to get them changed. How long that'll take, I don't know. It's a spectacular car, the R5, um, and I know you've got another one which you raced at Loughton, a different one, but I still love seeing these fast rally cars. This is latest spec modern rally car. Uh, Roger drives it very well. You've still got a, 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 an Escort at home as well, haven't you, which you bring out now and again? Yeah, I've still got my Mark II Escort. Yeah, I wouldn't really part with that. It's, uh, it's got a lot of good memories. Well, listen, it's been wonderful catching up with Roger. Um, we'll see him out again in the Skoda later on. Thank you very much, Roger. Pleasure as ever. And uh, good luck for the weekend. And yeah. good luck to Scott yeah, chasing the you. championship. Yeah, yeah, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Okay.
Right, uh, I'm with uh, Ray Lower now, and uh, he's sharing this car. I think this is your car, Ray. Um, when did you buy this car, and what, what was it like then? Well, I bought it in 1995, and I bought it to go for, for hill climbing, and originally it had a Ford Crossflow in it, and uh, it was quite good at, uh, at the time, but then I soon realised that uh, in order to go a bit quicker, it needed a, it needed a, a twin cam engine, so I, I uh, managed to buy a a Vauxhall, uh, a Vauxhall cleaver engine, uh, which was a two-liter twin overhead cam engine, and then and then rebuilt it and have rebuilt the engine several times to bring it to its present state. So you had the car since '95. I mean, I know I know you, and I've commentated on this car many times. But so this is this is old school technology. You're on twin 48 Weber carburetors, aren't you? What sort of horsepower and um, and, and you haven't gone down the bike engine route? No, I, I, I like the tradition engine, so it's, it's not only, as you say, twin Weber 48s, it's, it's, it's an old-fashioned um, uh, H gearbox, manual gearbox, um, and, uh, and we, don't have, we don't have launch control, we don't have traction control, it's, it's, so that's all up here. <laughs> and uh, I quite enjoy that, actually. And I, and it, and, uh, so I, I, the, the one, the one uh, sort of uh, area where we did go a bit modern, we, we don't have a distributor, so it, so it, 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 it is on, on uh, proper, proper management, but still carburetors, but it means that you, you have um, uh, electronic spark um, production and you do have a map. So in that sense, it's, it's, it's a bit modern, but because uh, distributors are, mm, you know, a bit dicey, they easy can, can, get, can go out of, um, out of whack. Yes, I remember that well. Back in the day, I used to have cars on points and distributors, and I, I can remember just even sort of half a thou could make it out of TR5 at the time. And I, I remember putting a, I think it's called a Lumination system at the time. This was quite old school stuff by the today's standards. Yeah, I think this, I think this one was on Lumination when I first got it, because it was certainly on distributor with the Crossflow engine. But so when I put the when I put the Vauxhall engine in, um, then I went straight to uh, to, to an Omex. Um, uh, 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 yeah. Oh, is, did you say Omex? Yes. Uh, yeah, that was Richard Rag, isn't it? Yeah. And right. and I mean, I know Richard produced great systems. So so it's what we call normally aspirated, but on electronic ignition. And what sort of horsepower? And and does it, is it front wheel drive, rear wheel drive? What is it? Oh, no, it's rear wheel drive, and it's got a it's got a good ZF plate diff. That's a limited slip diff. That was actually part of the original spec of the car, which is actually very. It's the one thing that hasn't been changed on the car. I changed it from a Sierra five speed box to a six speed box, but still an H box. Um, the thing that really produces more power, though, is is bigger valves, bigger. Uh, uh, these are nearly full raised cams, and 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 then the carburetor. So this makes about 250 brake, and the original Calibre it made 150. Well, that's a, that's a that's 100 brake increase then, that's significant, and uh, is there an LSD on this car? Um, yeah, 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 that's yeah, right, the, yeah, the, yeah. The, 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 the ZF diff, is a, that's a limited slip diff, a plate, a plate diff, okay, so it means it works as a limited slip diff, even if you've got one wheel off the ground, whereas quite a lot of diffs, if you have one wheel off the ground, then it no longer does give you the limited slip capability, but this does, so it's a very good diff, actually. I just want to tell the, the viewers, um, Ray is actually uh, a travelling professor, a visit, I know, visiting professor uh, in mechanical engineering, isn't it? That's correct. Yeah. yeah. Well, well, I originally graduated as an, as an aeronautical engineer, so I'm very into things aero. And then I did a PhD in mechanical engineering at Bristol. And then much more, when, over the last 25 years, I got invited to be a, a visiting professor of the Royal Academy of Engineering. And then I was at Oxford for 24 years doing that in the Department of Engineering Science as a visiting professor. I think that's absolutely wonderful. Well, listen, Ray, thank you very much for chatting to us. Uh, we're going to take a few pictures of your car now, actually, if you don't mind. And But uh, we appreciate you going to go up the hill shortly. So uh, thank you very much again. That was fantastic. Brilliant. Oh, pleasure. pleasure. Good morning. Um, we were talking to Nigel Elliott today, and Nigel has a rather beast of a car, a TR7 V8 with twin turbos. Uh, could you tell us a bit about it, Nigel? How long you had this car? 
Um, since the early 2000s, um, it was an old tarmac rally car from North Wales originally um, and uh, had a three and a half litre um, V8 in it at that time on the carburetors and I ran it for one season and then I built a 4.6 litre V8 for it, normally aspirated, ran that again for a, a few years and then decided I needed more power so that's hence the twin turbos, so another rebuild and lower compression and uh, twin turbos and I've run it that way ever since. Okay, so so that in itself is a, is a, a really serious engine. The four six or would, you know was normally well they were three and a half the Rover Buick weren't they? And then four six was pushing them out, and they're possibly pushing nearer five liters. The best ones now, perhaps yeah, you can get up to five point three. In fact, there's an MGB that runs a five point three, normally aspirated. But because I'm turbocharging this, I wanted to try and keep as much um, ceiling face on the top of the bores. So I've left it at four six. It's essentially a Range Rover uh, 4.6 block, but it has top hat liners, which are uh, a better arrangement because the old four sixes did leak a bit. So it runs some special liners. It runs Chevy four piss four forged pistons, um, which I get in from the US, uh, um, so it's low compression, about 7.8 to 1, and um, otherwise it's a fairly standard build, build. it's got um, uh, ported heads, um, but other than that it's just balanced, and so it runs on standard comrods, revs to about 6.2, and makes towards 500 horsepower, so it's good fun. Now, now that, that, that's pretty serious, 500 horsepower. I remember these back in the day when Tony Pond was one of the works drivers, wasn't he? I think Pear Eckland also drove them as rally cars and they were pretty competitive. But again, they would have been three and a half litre uh, were they normally aspirated then? Yeah, they were normally aspirated, but they were making about 320 brake then, but they revved a bit harder, seven and a half towards eight. So um, they were good builds in those days. In fact, I, I used to work with one of the guys who used to build the engines for them, for one of the ex-Abindon guys. So um, yeah, no, they were pretty well sorted cars, even in those days. Question I wanted to ask, you know, you, you've been competing for many years. So when, we, well, look, we're pretty chilled now, aren't we? But when you go to the line, does your sort of ante sort of up? Yes, it does. You get the old butterflies and you just keep tightening the seat belts and squatting down in the seat and checking you've turned everything on that you should have turned on. And um, yeah, just sort of, uh, there is a little bit of butterflies, I would say. And not too bad at most of these hills. The place I suffer the most is Goodwood if I do, do a sprint because Goodwood is so fast and that does make you really think about it. But once you get going, you forget and the red mist comes down and then you start flying. <laughs> Do you, so, so you mentioned Goodwood then, because, with, you know, obviously on a hill like this, what have you got, five, six speed, five speed box have you, and then what would the car be geared for potentially? Okay, it's um, in, in fifth, this would do something like 160, um, but I only use four gears on, on the hills. In fact, here I only use three. So, um, Chelsea Walsh, I'd be using four. So, um, by the time you get to crossing at Chelsea, I'm in fourth, and then just down to third for the S's and back up to fourth on the finish straight. It's so torquey with the turbos, it'll come out of top S spinning the rear wheels in, in third gear. So, when would you talk with your talks so, you know your usable power came in about three and a half thousand perhaps yeah, I mean, it pulls strongly from the three, and um, if you change up anywhere from, say, four, five to five and a half, it pulls like a train. So if you, if you, go, if you do third to fifth accidentally, then you might as well leave it in fifth, because it'll still pull it. It won't be quite as quick, but it'll, it still pulls it pretty well. Now, just a quickie, um, two or three years ago, you had rather a big moment at Loughton. I, I remember that, and you obviously remember it better than me. But you've had to totally rebuild and reshell this car. How long's that taken? Uh, it has taken me three years, basically, from the crash. It was August 2020, and uh, I went off just after the kink and Cedar Strait got on the grass and uh, launched up a bank, so a big end over end roll, and that um, destroyed the car, really. The shell was too badly damaged to use again. And luckily, I had one that I'd purchased some years earlier, a spare one in storage. So um, it took, although that took, you know, a good year, years worth of welding, because TR7s tend to suffer from the old metal moth, and so it did take quite a lot to get a strong shell again and a, a new welding cage, and it's sorted. But um, it's taken a while back together, so I'm being very tentative with it at the moment. Well, Nigel, that's, that's amazing. Well, listen, it's fantastic to see you back on the hills lovely car do love it and uh, obviously you're in a pretty hot class with all these boys have a brilliant weekend and we will catch up with you another day okay, thanks thank thanks for chatting much. to us yeah thank, thank you very much
Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome back. If you were online, welcome back. And if you're in the on site here, live with us today in this beautiful Sunday afternoon in the Gloucestershire hillside, we're at Prescott Hill Climb, and we are just getting ready for second time runs, leading to our second British Hill Climb Championship runoff, which will take place later this afternoon. So before, uh, before lunch, you saw the first runoff, and uh, Wallace Menges did just enough to clinch the 20, 2023 British Hill Climb Championship. Um, Sean and Matt Ryder, Sean, Mar sorry, Scott Moran and Matt Ryder actually tied for fastest, uh, for, for the win in that class, so they're sharing the win on that. Um, Wallace finished, I believe, fourth, but it was enough to do the job with the job scores and things. So we're back. There is a lot to play for in some of the other classes. A, there, the, the, the British Hill Climb Cup that runs alongside the British Hill Climb Championship, and what that is, that's for a, all the events except for the travel events, so not down to uh, the Channel Islands and not over to Ireland. But the, the rest of the events on the mainland do count, so there's a few less events. And we've had, there's a battle going on. We had a three-way tie on points coming into this event. Um, and so far, um, uh, the, the points have been gained with uh, several of the competitors. So I'm not even a mathematician, so I'm not going to try and figure it out. But there is a lot more to play for this. Um, you know, the, the competitors in the British Championship, they're looking, you know, for, for the top ten. And the, the, the golden target is always to have one of the top ten numbers. If you make the top ten, you actually keep, that's your number for the following year. So if you finish ninth, you're number nine. If you finish seventh, you're number seven for the entire year. And the challenge is to keep a number in the top ten the following year. So, uh, and we have had... Uh, uh, we have had a competitor that was stuck in 11th is actually now gained four points and actually got to the number 10 spot but now the challenge is can he hold on to it but i'll follow you in on that later right uh so we are going to be lining up and our first car is coming up to the start line now so we're starting second time run so i'll try to keep you up to date on who's doing what so essentially it's the best of two timed runs so they've all done one timed run this morning and then they all do a second time run, and who, whichever best of the two times, that's their best time, and that's what they go up against the rest of the class. So I've got David Garnett in a road-going Renault Clio, uh, sh shares the car with Ian uh, Richards, and this, Ian's been running this car for about seven years, and uh, so yes, he's on the line, ready to go to open our uh, open the play of business for this afternoon. Uh, with me is in and out will probably be Ben. Why, Ben? Are you there, sir? Yes, hello, uh, Owen. Yes, we're back up and running with David Garnett already off uh, through uh, the bridge at 61 miles an hour. Uh, this will be the the battle of the Clio's in this class, and there's something to watch in this class. Uh, so far, Peter Siddle and John uh, Langman uh, are 0.01 of each other so they've been battling for the honors in this class peter siddle uh early on uh, this weekend was uh, admitting he's gonna go for the class record and they're very close to that so i'll be watching for this run meanwhile uh, david garnett is already three ds's and semi circles uh he'll be looking to get the car into the 52s uh ian has been taking the honors so far in this car yeah uh ian will take our car over so David Garnett has uh, improved his time of 52.24, so he's gained a, and he's gained a position. He's actually in front of Ian at the moment. We'll see what Ian has to say. David Wilson in the Peugeot 205, currently sitting in fifth. This is father and son team, David being dad and Robert being son. And at the moment, they're like four tenths apart. So we'll see if he can improve there. And off the line, Mazda MX-5 of James Chalmers. Yes, uh, David uh, going through uh, the finish straight now and uh, he'll be posting a time of 50.60, so a great time for him. Uh, the exact same time on his previous run. Uh, James Chalmers uh, already through the entry of uh, Pardon. He'll try to get as much traction out of this tricky corner. 
in this beautiful uh, MX-5. This is one of the favorite sports cars and one of the most reliable and economic sports cars that you can get in this class. This is the second generation. This is the uh, Mark II or the NB for the specialist here. And uh, yes, this is powered by 1.8 liter at the front and I believe a uh, big diff at the back. Uh, James going through the uh, second part of this run, 56.38 uh, is his time. Yeah, we've got Peter Siddle. Now, Peter uh, is leading the class by one one hundredth of a second right now. And Peter wants the class record. He's actually made it clear to us that he is not going to settle for anything less than the class record. Um, so he is throwing in the scenery at the moment. Coming around, left rear tire is actually off the ground coming through there. He is giving it all. He's only got, he's only on one hundredth of a second ahead of John Langmead. So he needs, oh, he had to make an alter. He had to change directory a little bit in the S's. So that's going to scrub off some speed. A little bit of mistake there, but he's still up on his time. I'm going to carry through, Ben, but if you check what the course, the class record is, he crossed the line with a 48.70. Yeah, still in the improvement on his previous run, but not the class record for uh, Peter Siedl. Uh, great time nonetheless. James Hudson already uh, launched off the line and already onto the entry of Harden into the left-hander. Uh, no problem. This is a 1.816 valve Golf, and this is the Mark II. Uh, you'll hear all the rev out of that engine. That probably has about 180 horsepower at the front. Uh, power to the front wheel drive, like all the Golfs that we have seen. This is a wonderful car. He's going through semi-circle. Let's see what time he can push. He was really quick and lot and park last weekend. Uh, he's going through the finish straight and it's a time of 50.84 for James Hudson. Yeah, actually a second slower. So his first time run will count. He's currently in third in class. We've got Richard Pates on the MGF uh, trophy. The I got it for 500 pounds and I'm just having fun hill climbing. He's not spent a whole lot of money getting involved and he's this is, his, I'm not sure, he's, he's done a few events now, this being the latest. And the point of next, with Jonathan Langmead, this is for the class win. He needs a hundredth of a second, and he's up in part and at the moment in the Lotus Elise. Ben. Yes, uh, great uh, split times uh, so far for John. 30.78 uh, exiting midway onto the entry of the S's and into uh, semi-circles. It's def definitely going to give him the class lead and the class honours uh, this afternoon and today at Prescott. He's going to go through the finish straight. So 48.59, great time. Yep, he's done it. He's beaten Peter Siddle. That puts him into the class lead uh, by two tenths of a second. So he really took some out of that. We've got Oliver Meek on the course in the Vauxhall VX220. This is an over two liter car, this one here. So we're going into the over two liter class at the moment. We have double drives to deal with, so we will back and forth a bit. Oliver uh, driving Dad's car, and so far beating Dad. Um, and he's gone slower, just over a second slower, that second run. Phil James in the Cayman is up to you. Uh, and Simon Tarling is also launched off in his 996. This is over two liter road going cars. Yes, uh, Philip James in the uh, Porsche Cayman uh, GT4, uh, one of many that we have uh, today. This is the 718 uh, with a 4 litre uh, engine at the back, so uh, 6 uh, cylinder and a great potential on this car. 48.73 but quickly followed by Simon Tarling in the 996 GT3. This is the Mesco 6 cylinder engine, one of a legendary engine. An engine that started uh, life uh, for racing uh, back in the uh, late 90s in the GT1 cars. And uh, yeah, very uh, powerful engine at the back of that car. About 380 horsepower. Obviously great traction out of the line in through the corners in the 911. Engine out, hanging out of the back. 49.99 for Simon Tarling. Yeah, that's a three-tenths improvement. Uh, can I put a call out to the general public? If Anne Starling Sorry, Ann Strutton can, is in with an earshot. Could you head to the club office, please? That's Ann Strutton. Uh, sorry, uh, uh, Ben. Uh, yeah, Ross McDonald's already up to you with a 3.2 liter. Simon Tarling didn't gain anything. He, he got quicker, but he didn't gain. He's still six in place. And it's, Ross McDonald's done a 5.0.64 slight improvement but Rodney Isles is on the track he's hunting for a class record to improve his British Hill Climb Cup championship run 
and he's on purple sectors at the moment, Ben. Yes, uh, the class record uh, in the Class A2 is 46.93. He's already done a 46.85 this morning, Rodney Hyde. So he'll look to improve on this. There's uh, points for grab for class uh, leading uh, times in 47.02. So good time for Rodney. Yeah, but it's two tenths down from this morning, so he didn't get a class record. He won't be happy. Uh, we're going back to Road Series cars up to two liter. This is Ian Richards. We saw David Garnett go quicker. Sorry, David Garnett go quicker than Ian in the inter drive the same car battle. So Ian's looking to improve and jump back above Dave. Yes, uh, Ian uh, looking to get under the 50 second mark and let's see if he can do that this time around. He's already through the finish line, an improvement of 52.16. Six. Yeah, so that gives Ian the winner in the dueling uh, same car driver category by, oh, what's that, eight one hundredths of a second. Right, back up to the, uh, the port business, road cars over two liter, otherwise known as the Porsche with an Alfa Romeo interloper in the middle of it. Um, Right, where are we? So Richard York in the Cayman is just heading over the line with a 51.24. That's a seven tenths of a second improvement. And we've got Robert Wilson in the little Peugeot 205. This is an under two liter car. Currently sitting in fourth. He's hunting down, uh, uh, sorry, James Hudson for third in the golf so he's trying to beat the golf here he may just do this he's looking good he's going across the line with a time of 50.13 a little bit quicker but not enough stucks in four, fourth place and that'll be it for the day for there on the course just coming up to pardon is robert lancaster gay in the porsche cayman gt4 currently sitting third in class and i've got robbie Birrell in the porsche cayman gts just launched off the line ben Yes, uh, just uh, the this is the GTS uh, version, so this is four-cylinder, 2.5 uh, turbo. Uh, Cardo is a bit controversial when he went out. Uh, the fans were like, oh, why have you not put this six-cylinder? But he's got great tuning potential, and actually, uh, in that car, he's been uh, getting closer and closer to the GT4, the track-orientated version of the Cayman. And so, great time for uh, this uh, on the second part, and a great balance from this mid-engine uh, Porsche. Yep, absolutely. Robbie Barrel's just coming around semicircle. That's actually a drop, visually as a drop off there, which throws everybody out. 47.22, and that's uh, an improvement and keeps him in second place by a little bit more. Let's jump to a four wheel drive car class. We've got Ian Fido in the little Toyota Yaris, uh, more or less standard, currently third in class. Pete Richards is holding second with another Yaris. And Izzy Lawrence, who's up next, is in, or up, will be up shortly, is in uh, leading the class at the moment. We've got David Meek on the line with the Vauxhall VX220 Turbo, just launching off the line. We saw Son Ali in that. That's, a, that's an over two liter, two liter car. Ian Fido, 51.33, no improvement there. Slight slower. David Meek's with you. Yes, uh, David Meek uh, in this beautiful Vauxhall VX220, and you might. Uh wonder why you look so close to one of the Lotus Elises that we've seen previously. Well, this is based on the same chassis, uh, just a different engine at the back, a uh, 2-litre turbocharged engine, about 200 horsepower from the factory, probably a bit more um, in this car with a few modifications, uh, but a great uh, chassis and balance, and Carda has a lot of tuning potential uh, that has been very quick, but Izzy Lawrence has just jumped off the line and already through uh, hard, and she's got the lead in this four-wheel drive. Uh, class and uh, yes yeah, she's been driving this car beautifully she locks the wheel on the entry of powder but no problem gathered it together up through the gears through the straight and into the s's no problem for using that second part but she may have lost a little bit of time by locking the wheels on the entry of pardon yeah david meek went through and just uh when it moved, he moved up a position but just ollie just got him in the end is he's heading across the line now coming out of uh, semicircle heading across the line a 4802 that's a second and a half quicker that might be a PB I, I asked her lunchtime and uh, I think it was a 48 so that might be a personal best there and we got Peter Richings longtime circuit racer sort of gave that up and jumped is a and just jumped into the family road car if you will and started hill climbing this about a year ago I think it was and uh, currently second in class 
looking to set a new PB. He's, uh, I think it's a 50.8 he did yesterday in practice as a personal best. He's looking to improve on that. And, oh, he's done a 50.64, so that might be a new personal best for him. He'll be happy with that. And then I've got Ben Fisher, son of Phil, in uh, Dad Subaru. Ben's single-seater uh, engine is uh, not working, so he's just come out and jumped in the lounge car to slide around in a little bit, going around the hill. Up, the, up to you, Ben. Yes, a uh, great one for uh, Peter, reaching uh, actually his best time yesterday, so it's 50.87, so he's going quicker uh, today. And uh, Ben Fisher just crossed the line at 53.44, and now we're moving up um, to uh, the uh, next class, and this is Raymond Lord here. They've been uh, tussling with his wife in this car, a great car, and uh, you've just seen, if you've been uh, watching the streaming live, you've just seen an interview of uh, Ray. He's been telling us all about his adventures in the hill climb and in, with this car. Uh, he's already through the second part of the hill here, and uh, it'll be a great time for him. 42.24 exit in the entry of uh, yeah. Semi and yeah. through the finish straight. It's a 40, uh, sorry, uh, 51.52 for Ray. Yeah, just to clarify, we had a bit of a communication problem. Ray Lore sh sh shares his car with Joy Hoyle. They're just friends and everything. They're not married. Ray's wife is actually at home watching. <laughs> so, sorry, Mrs. Uh, Lore. Um, yeah, just a little bit of a confusion on there. So we do apologize. <laughs> Uh, but uh, the Joy and the Roy have shared his car and there's been longtime friends. Uh, anyway, across the line, Anthony Shearman goes with a 4999. It's an 8 tenths improvement, but no gain on position. Ray actually lost a couple of seconds over his first run, so no gain there. You got John Pick in the AMS Matoya, Matea. 42 of these were made, therefore, it does fit the requirements for a special production road car. It's got a Subaru Impreza underpinning, four-wheel drive, the two-liter boxer engine, so on and so forth, with a fiberglass body. So he's coming around the corner right now. And Jerry Neary in the Westfield SEI is somewhere near you, Ben. Yes, uh, just uh, going through a crossover uh, in the first part of the course and into the entry of Pardon, taking the uh, inside line into here and up through the gears into the uh, straight here into the entry of the S's. Just looking at the time for uh, Jerry Neri, 51.91 was his uh, previous run, so let's see if he can improve on that time in that second run. Yeah, so Jerry's coming up across the top now, looking to improve on a 51.91. Uh, we haven't had any movement in this class at the moment, a 51.25, so a 7 tenths improvement, um, but no move on position. Rob Lloyd in the Westfield SEIW is going through the S's now and coming out the other side. And then we're going to have Richard Price on the long line. Richard Price is currently second in class, three, three tenths behind Steve Garner. So Richard is going to throw it at the scenery to try and get that three tenths. But Steve Gardner is on the line ready to um, not retaliate. What do you call it? Uh, return to bed. <laughs> yes, uh, Richard Price in this uh, 1.6 uh, Caterham, so probably giving it a little bit of power compared to uh, the bigger capacity engine in this class, but Richard has been driving this car beautifully all day long today, so great turn of speed from Richard, and let's see if he can improve. He's looking good on the splits uh, so far, and I think he'll be uh, looking to improve on his time. Let's see what he can do. He'll be going through the finish straight in a few seconds. It's a time of... of 46.25 for Richard Price. Yeah, actually two 100 slower, so Richard's gained nothing. Stephen Gardner is currently leading the class. Um, I'm just looking, and other than Steve that's on the course, he's already leading the class. Joy Hoyle is the only other competitor left in this class to try and do anything, and right now she's two seconds behind Steve. But it looks like Steve might be up in his game here. He's on a 45.9. Is he actually going to go quicker to solidify his class win? Uh, no, he's not. He actually went slower, 46.22. So we'll wait and see if Joy can pull one out on uh, an, an upset, pull an upset there. Andrew Russell's on the hill. This is a modified class car up to 1400 cc. We have two competitors in this class today. We have the Janetta you see on your screen, and we have Eric Mori in the Hillman Imp that's just launched off the line like it's an angry bunch of, uh, well, noisy bits. 
<laughs> Andrew Russell uh, already through uh, semi-circles. Uh, no problem on this run. Andrew is a regular competitor. Let's see what he can do in this flat. Was that quickly followed by Eric Murray? This is a 1000 cc turbocharged engine. He's just rebuilt that car. Uh, the engine at the back is just uh, fresh off the bench, and he's. Uh, put the engine back on Friday and he's been uh, campaigning that car this weekend. He's not been turning up the boost so much on this car. It's still a thousand cc but probably a lot of power at the back and something that weighs about 600 kilos probably gives him a lot of speed. Let's go and see what time he can post. It's a 48.79. Yeah, that's a good time. Uh, Phil Fisher's with you right now in the Subaru and then I've got, then we move up a class. Uh, Phil Fisher's a road-going four-wheel drive car, so as you can see on your screen, he's uh, the last runner in that class this afternoon. And then we've got Duncan Andrews and a Porsche Cayman in the over two-liter modified. And then we've got the Battle of Japan coming up here, so brace yourself. Let's get uh, Phil through first there, uh, Ben. Yes, uh, Phil uh, in this uh, run uh, going uh well in this uh, second time run today uh, you'll be going through the gears up through uh, the finish straight it's a 54.04 but Duncan Andrew is definitely the loudest Porsche today on the hill 3.9 litre engine at the back six cylinder uh, engine and yeah beautiful sound from that Porsche today uh, great to see uh, Duncan running today a bit of smoke at the back of the car but no problem I'm sure He's uh, going through the finish tri line of 46.48 uh, for Duncan. Yeah, sorry, I'm going to carry this a bit because we've got some interesting thing going on. Stephen Moore is leading Damon Bradley, which is words you don't hear by a tenth right now. Stephen's actually quicker on the hill right now. He's purple sectors on his own time. Damien had a little issue on his first run, but he's just launched off the line as well. This has got the battle of tin tops. We've been waiting this all year. Stephen's been sneaking up on it. Damien has been doing what he does. So, uh, so you can see Damien on the screen. Stevens just ripped off a 43.36, so he's knocked another four tenths off of his time. Damien is down on Stephen Moore going into the S's. Head through midway, he's still down. He's slightly behind. Will he make it up? So he's coming out of the S's now. I'm going to take this all the way, Ben, just because this is really interesting. Semicircle, he's still behind Stephen Moore. Is, he, is this going to be an upset? It is an upset by one hundredth of a second, a 43.37 versus Steve's 43.36. You've just witnessed an upset in tin tops. Uh, Nigel Elliott's with you, Ben. Yes, uh, Nigel, uh, how to follow on this one, but yeah, V8 uh, sound of that car on the uh, TR7. This is a Royo V8 twin turbo, 500 horsepower. If you followed the stream, you might have seen the interview from uh, Nigel. He's just spent quite a bit of time rebuilding this car and is back into uh, contention and into this class. And yeah, he'll be pushing this car to the finish. But meanwhile, we've got Strato who's just launched his car 77 miles an hour under the bridge in the first part of the course. A little bit wide uh, on the uh, entry of uh, Pardon. No problem in the second part, so he'll be pushing this car. This is uh, he's the only competitor in this uh, class D, the modified specialist production cars. This car is powered by Hayabusa engine, four cylinder, uh, 13, 1600cc, sorry, and he's going to go through the finish line. It's a 43 4 1 for Stroud. Yeah, sorry about that. Trying to get my breath back on that one. Uh, so we got Mike West and the Fisher Fury. So, yes, stir it down. He did a tenth slower. Uh, right, now we're into the sports lever cars up to two liter. So anything that equals under two liter is in this class. And Alan McDonald is currently leading it with a 42.5. Mike West is currently sitting in eighth with a 47.1. His co-driver is just right behind him. So we're heading across there. We're going to dip around classes a little bit because Joy Hoyle is on the thing in the class B car. Now she's got it. She's looking. She needs two seconds to get Stephen Garner to take the class win. Mike West of the 47.65 went slower. So Joe Hoyle, back to Class B for a second here, the last runner in Class B, currently fifth. Ray, who they share the car together and nothing else, uh, longtime friends, is third. And Joe's looking to improve on this. He's carrying it all the way through. I'll just carry it off to the end here just to see what happens here. Across the end here, 48.85, 8.10 slower, so no improvement there. So 
Class B goes to Stephen Gardner. Sam Nicholson is with you. Now we're into Sport Libra. In the Malik, currently sitting fourth in class, looking for more, Ben. Yes, uh, Sam uh, already through the entry of semicircle and made his way to the top. No problem for Sam in this uh, beautiful Malik. 44.57 for Sam and Nicholson. Alan McDonald, currently the leader in class F. Uh, will be looking to probably improve on his time. Let's see if he can do it. He posted just a time of 42.54 uh, previously uh, this morning. Let's see if he can improve. Looking good so far when I look down at the splits. Let's see if he can get uh, even quicker than this. Yeah, uh, Alan McDonald's coming all the way through. Sam, it didn't go any improvement. No improvement, Mike West. Alan McDonald has gone faster by three one hundredths of a second to solidify his first place. But we've got some challengers still coming that are, that are close enough, could be a threat. David Bickley in the Radical SR1 is now out of pardon, heading across down into the S's, past Midway, or through Midway, sorry, down into the S's. And we got Martin Watson, the Silver Riot, ready to have a party on the hill. Yeah, no problem for David Bickley through the second part of the run. He's already uh, exiting uh, the uh, finish straight. 46.12 for David Bickley. Uh, an improvement on his uh, previous time, but about five tenths earlier this morning. Martin Watt in the Silver Riot, 80 miles an hour. This is only a 100,000 cc uh, car, so bike engine at the back is quite short, as you can see. And you can see all the drivers input. This is an open car so you can see all of the input from that driver is going to go through the S's. Martin is a very quick driver, knows how to drive this car. This car can be a little bit tricky to drive, sometimes goes a little bit sideways because of that short wheelbase, but no problem in this run. Goes through the finish straight. It's a 44.53 for Martin Watts. Yeah, Mike Lee at 44.53. Uh, no improvement there. Still uh, a couple of tenths down. I think the track heating up is actually slowing the cars down. The tires are actually sticking too much to the track in the straight line. Uh, Mike Lee in the Force LM. Looks like a single seater, but because it's got body work all over it, uh, over the wheels and everything, it's in Sport Libra. He currently sitting in third place. And then I've got, uh, let's see what happens. I've got Richard, Richard Matassian in the OMS SC1 currently in second place. Mike Lee's approved with a 43.36, but it's still stuck in third place. Question is, can Richard Matassian in that OMS SC1 grab the win from Alan McDonald? There's, he needs about seven tenths of a second, Ben. Yeah, it doesn't look like it, unfortunately, when I'm um, looking at the split, it's about five tenths uh, slower than Alan McDonald. So uh, Alan McDonald is going to take the honours in Class F, but it's a 42.54, about uh, seven tenths quicker than his previous run. So a great uh, improvement from Richard. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, not enough, but uh, an improvement all the same. Right, now we're going to sport lever cars over two liters. So these are the the big engine on the line right now. Are we on the course, you can see Bob Penrose in the Pilbeam MP92. Why is he in the over two liter class? He has seven liters of American V8 Chevrolet in the back of that thing. I swear that thing would rip the tarmac off if you blocked the front wheels and spun the wheels up. He's heading across the line with a 49.32. And Duncan Barnes in this European, normally seen, Norma M20 FC. Getting quicker and quicker. This has got a Honda Civic Type R two-liter engine with a turbocharger putting out 500 plus horsepower, Ben. Yeah, so you can hear the engine uh, popping and banging with the turbo at the back of that car. Uh, great uh, car, and so far Duncan Barnes has been leading the class in this uh, beautiful prototype car. Uh, it posted a time of 41.37 previously, and uh, let's see if we can improve. It doesn't need uh, a lot to do because he has quite a lead in this class so far. He'll be going through the finish line of 41.44. Yeah, actually, he lost seven one hundredths of a second, so very consistent. Next up, George Harding in a Ford Escort 2000. Why would you have a Ford Escort in Sport Libra? Well, if you stick a turbocharger on it, you're going to end up in Sport Libra. So George got a turbo on his two-liter Cosworth, and he's stuck it in a Mark II Escort, because why not? And he's having a time of his life. And on the line, I've got Graham Lokes in the Porsche-powered Lola T492 bed. Yeah, it looks like you can't say an escort has to go sideways 
in all the corners and this is uh, what uh, George has been doing uh, so far today in this beautiful uh, Cosworth Turbo uh, Escort. It's going through the finish straight and it's a time of a 50.08 uh, for uh, George Harding but quickly followed by Graham Locke. 79 miles an hour under the finish, uh, under the bridge, sorry. And uh, Graham is uh, campaigning this beautiful low light T492, always immaculate car. This is a six cylinder, 3.2 litre engine at the back. Spent an awful lot of time building that car, getting it right, getting all the right bits, and he's going through the finish straight. And that's the time of a 45.22 for Graham. Yeah, so uh, the three one hundredths quicker. So no real movement there. Still second in class. We've got Roger Moran in the Scotia Fabia R5, complete rally car, all of the spec because he's test he's even on the rally tires because he's running a rally in a couple of weeks and thought, well, I might as well bring this out to test. He had another one at Lowe's last week who's on slicks and a bit more uh, less rallyist, but he's already coming around the top. It's four-wheel drive, so it's in Sport Libra with a 45.22. And it's actually timed, tied Graham Lokes for second. Uh, we have a tie for second. And Mike Luck has stopped on course on your camera. And, oh, somebody cut the grass and spread the shavings all over Orchard. So we have a bit of a naughty. We may have a replay on this because Rich, behind the scenes, loves a good replay. So I'll fill you in in a second on this. But just going back to, yeah, so Roger Moran in the Skoda has gone up in a 45-22, matching the time that Graham Lokes did in uh, the Thor's Right. So this is, uh, you, yeah, okay, we are doing a 360 degree off the edge of Orchard and back on again. And he has continued on, no problem, and stopped at the next marshalling post. But our marshals are going to have to get the brooms out and our marshals appreciate getting the brooms out because well you know if they're not sweeping they're not doing uh so i'll just take a quick break here um i just want to shout out to the mar uh, marshals and if you're watching from another country it goes the same for the marshals there they all volunteer we'd like to take this opportunity to introduce our live stream partner for today's british hill climb championship and cup meeting footman james BHC Cup main sponsors Footman James have been at the heart of the classic vehicle movement for over 35 years and provide specialist classic vehicle insurance cover to owners, collectors, restorers and traders. Their classic car and classic bike insurance policies come with show and events cover as standard. Plus, you can tailor your policy to suit your needs with their flexible FJ Plus options. These options have everything from agreed value to track day cover. To find out more, please visit www.footmanjames.co.uk. Uh, sort of a 360 degree ugly pirouette and ended up kind of like, oh yeah, back end came out on him actually and chucked him around and he did a donut and a half and stopped. So no problem, he's a little bit dizzy but uh, we have grass going. Can I, a shout out to all our viewers online stream. If you haven't, and we've got a rolling total on the screen, and we thank you very much for subscribing. If you haven't subscribed yet, it costs you nothing. If you're watching us on, uh, on live stream on Hill Climb TV, please like, share, follow, and subscribe. We're, down, we're, we're, we're about, what are we at? We're about, um, Oh, what do we need? I'm trying to figure it out. All right, we need 426 more subscribers to hit our target. I'm sure there's more than 426 people watching that haven't subscribed yet. So come on, help us out. Doesn't cost you anything, but it makes riches year. Right, John McQuillan's on the hill, Fisher Fury. Sorry, Ben, I've been babbling on here for a minute. And Mike Luck is lined up again? Okay. Yes, I believe uh, the marshal may have uh, sent back my look. Um, I'm not sure. I think uh, they probably has asked him to just rejoin the paddock um, through the shortcut rather than going all the way through the top of the hill. John McKillen uh, in the Fish of Fury has been uh, carrying on his way. Uh, 48 to 8 for him. No problem in uh, the uh, Fury for him. Right, I've worked it out. Now, here's a neat one. 
Normally that would have been a no-time run, but he carried on and then the marshal stopped him and under put the red flag out and under those rules, uh, he gets a rerun. Figure that one out. There you go. The official just come and told me that one. So there's a bit of an anomaly, but that's okay. Um, on the line is Robin Nicholson in the Malik M uh, Mark 20. Robin's currently, uh, I don't know where he is at the moment. We're just looking at Mike Luck at the moment. And he's rerunning. And we still, this is Sport Libre Cars over two liters. And we're still waiting for Robert Penrose, Ben. Yeah, so uh, just uh, Mike Luck uh, just going through in this beautiful uh, Zolf GT. This is a. Uh, 12, one of 12 cars and one of two in the left-hand drive, uh, guys. But Robbie Nelson just uh, left the line, already through uh, the entry of the Tories here at the bottom of the hill, uh, 75 miles an hour under the bridge, no problem. This is one of the uh, club sports car that you'll see uh, running in Class F. And uh, yes, they've been uh, campaigning this car for quite a little while now and a beautiful car that we love to see in every of the hills and car that's been racing also in circuits as well. Yeah, a very popular clubman's race car this. Uh, double driven, uh, Robin is slightly behind Samuel at the moment. Sam's got fourth, Robin's in sixth. Robin's just heading across the line with a 44-36 at no change, but believe it or not, he's tied with Martin Watts for fifth. So we've now got another dead heat going, except this one's for fifth, right. Brace yourself, we got Ben Hamer on the hill, OMS 28, car 86. This is Class I, racing cars 600 to 1100 cc's. Guys, a blink will change the rate of standings on this. We've got a lot of cars, we've got a few broken cars from your program. But Ben's already up the top there in the 748 cc turbocharged version. That brings the engine size up just under 11. He's gone across the line with a 4045. No improvement, stays at nine. We'll get back to that in a minute. Robert Penrose in the pill beam is with you. Yes, uh, Rob, Rob uh, already uh, through the exit of uh, Pardon. No problems through East Run. Yes, uh, we'll be moving to uh, class um, I in the racing cars over 600 to uh, up to 1100 and the target time here the best time that we have seen today is around the 38 but many in this class will be aiming for 39 and a few of those drivers have posted those 39 times so they'll be pleased to improve 47.68 for Robert Penrose uh, as he goes through the finish line. Yeah about a second slower so no change there Duncan Barnes takes sports lever class G right back to the uh, this is going to keep us busy here for a minute so we'll, we'll keep it short and just keep going through the times and who's going where here uh, Richard Weaver the Empire Evo is already uh, heading up in the part currently Richard is sitting in 12th place in this class we've got uh, eight uh, what are we on? we're down to I think 18 runners left uh, and then Richard Summers is on the line Alex Summers is dad in the family DJ Firehawk he's currently 10th Ben Yes, unfortunately we had a few retirement in this class with some uh, technical mechanical issues, but no problem Richard, we've posted a 41.52 in his previous run and the 41.59 is a great consistency from Richard, but Richard Summers, uh, 85 miles an hour under the bridge in this uh, beautiful uh, single seater. He's uh, one tenth uh, quicker than Richard Weaver. Let's see what he can do. Richard Summer uh, posted a 40.46 in his previous run, so I'm sure he'll be aiming for that 39 second time uh, in this uh, second practice run this afternoon. Already rounding uh, semi-circles through the finish straight. Let's see what time, a 40.97. Yeah, uh, 4097, actually half a tenth slower, so no gain there, Richard stuck in ten. Dylan Flesher, uh, this is the Flesher family OMS 28, and they are currently, uh, let's see, uh, one Flesher is in six, and the other one is in eight. So, and there's only seven one hundredth of a second in the inter-family battle going on here, so Dylan's already heading up semicircle. A little bit wide, comes around across the line of, thir whoa, a 39.24. He's jumped all the way to second place by one hundredth of a second. He's just pushed Tom Weaver back to third, but we haven't seen Tom yet on the second time run, so that's a heck of an improvement. Tony Bonfield with you in that Jedi Mark IV, currently in 13th, uh, sorry, 
Uh, yeah, currently 15th in class at the moment, uh, Ben. Yeah, great improvement from uh, Dylan Flesher, almost eight tenths quicker from uh, this uh, morning, and uh, quickly followed by uh, Tony Bonfield in the beautiful uh, Jedi. This is quite a short car, but a great car to see. About 300 of those Jedis have been made uh, over the, the, the years, I think, probably a bit more, and they're very popular cars in this class. He's going through the finish straight, it's a 44.33 for Tony Bonfield. Yeah, tenth of a second improvement, but no change of position. Now, Nigel Pitt, there is between second and uh, seven, uh, six tenths. And I see uh, Nigel Pitt has decided to do a 180 turn. No problem in the Torres, Ben. Yeah, no problem. He just overturned the car, really. Um, so, yeah, no problem. Nigel is uh, carrying on uh, back on his way, but the marshal will have asked him to uh, wait for a while. So, uh, I don't know if they are going to let him carry on on this run or whether he's going to uh, be sent back to the paddock. I believe he'll be sent back to the paddock. Uh, I can see the marshals just. Uh, asking him to wait uh, for uh, probably decisions. Yeah, no, uh, no, yeah, I've just got a replay coming up here, Ben. He's coming into a Torres, no problem, turns in, and the back end just scooted around. There's a little, he was a little bit sort of wide a little bit. I don't know if there's any debris on the track there, like, you know, just a little the dust or something like that. But he's, he sort of drove through the grass, back onto the marshalling station, just sort of at the exit of the Torres. And he brought the, he was very kind. He brought the marshals some clumps of grass. He's been very generous. Uh, so he thought he'd save him the walk and bring it to them this time. So just a quick clean up there and we'll be on our way. So he is heading back down the hill and he'll be redirected back into the paddock. So that'll keep Nigel in position for the day. So no gain on that one. Uh, oops, he ran out of motivation. They're gonna have to, oh no, he's still running actually, so he's gonna drive her in. Nah, that's, that's the boy, Nigel. Way to go. Right, on the line, I have car number 97, Ben. And car 97 is Mark Schlanker in the Force HC. Did not get a time first time around. So we've got two cars that didn't get times, that failed first time run. So I don't know where they're gonna end up. So Nigel's still in six, but like I said, there's hundreds of seconds dividing the top 10, 12 stars. Crazy how close these guys are. Yes, uh, best time for Mike Shankler yesterday in practice was at 41-2-1. And fortunately this morning in his uh, uh, first run, uh, he overturned the car at Harden. It looks like he used the... Uh, wide line outside of uh, Etoris, but no problem, he's still on his way and all the way through the straight, he'll try and get as quick through the S's, let's see what he can do. This car looks to be handful to drive, to be fair, uh, but no problem in the second part, already through semi-circle, carry the speed, bit of throttle, up through the gears, through the finish straight, let's see what he can do on this run, 42.30 for Max Shankler. Yeah, that moves him up to 13th, but that was, um yeah, interesting run. You may want to watch that one on live stream later. Graham Williams is in front of you uh, in the OMS 2000. And Graham is currently sitting in 17th. And then I've got Emma Rayson on the line who didn't get a time either the first time. So let's see where she can, how far up the ladder she can get her car and time bent. Yes, uh, Graham posted a 46.75. In this car earlier this morning, it was already through semicircle. Uh, let's see what Graham can do. It's already through the finish straight in the so 46 2 about seven tenths quicker. We'll be pleased with that run. But Amy Rinson uh, in the uh, beautiful Empire, the yellow car today on the hill, uh, already through semi uh, through the exit of Pardon onto the straight onto the S's, no problem. Some spark coming out uh, as the car bottoms out at the crossover early on uh, run through the uh, semi-circle, carries the speed up through the gears, onto the finish straight. Let's see what time Emma can do, 40.79. Yeah, that jumps her up to 11th place, right by Richard Summers, only by about a tenth and a bit. James Moore is uh, already, hey, uh, this track is starting to look a little slippery. We got a lot of cars at the back end just not sticking a little bit, so got this drifting competition going on this afternoon. I wonder if anybody can get a full drift all the way around the corner. 
So James Moore is on the hill heading up. We've uh, stopped the car at the start line for some reason. I'm going to possibly get some grass checking again. James does a 42.78. No improvement. Ah, we have gravel kicking up this time. I think that was you had a car that was using the banking on the exit of Vittori's, was it not? Um, yeah, we had a... Uh, uh, Shankler were uh, just uh, using the wide line on the exit, so he kicked a little bit of the uh, uh, gravel on the track, so the marshals have been busy in that corner this afternoon, uh, but they've been dealing this uh, very quickly. Uh, we'll be back up and running in no time. Uh, they've got four brooms here, very effective, those four guys. Yeah, actually, I've just watched the replay, and uh, that's why he got wide going in there. It was James Moore that went across that gravel and then onto the grass. He went quite a long way on the left side tires. And then when he went up into Pardon, made the corner, the back end came out. So I'm wondering if he picked up some uh, rubbish on the tire and that just lost him a little grip. Our ever vigilant and thank you very much, Marshalls, continually thank you for uh, letting us go play racing. Um, uh, your support is, is muchly appreciated. But we're good to go. I've got Stuart Bickley on the line, car 101. And if you can't see the number, trust me, you'll know it's coming. Uh, so Stuart currently is a little down on class, but he's right smack in the middle of a tenth here and a tenth there and a hundredth here and a hundredth there pile jammed up, all piled up behind David Tatum. So David Tatum's got a little bit of a breathing gap, but everybody behind him is literally, you can't blink that quick to cover the other five cars above. So 92 miles an hour under the bridge, heading into a Tory's bend. Yeah, I'm not sure if you blink, you would uh, miss this car. Uh, you can't miss this car in the bright yellow. And uh, yeah, starter currently uh, third in class, uh, 39.46. Uh, in uh, his uh, first run this uh, morning, so he's going to look to improve on that, and I'm sure looking at the split is in good course to do that. 28.5 at the S's, good time so far. Let's see what he can do. He'll go up the gears through the finish straight, and he'll probably be a time of a 39.30. Yeah, he actually gained uh, 1.16 second, but no change in position. He's stuck in fourth, but it's given him a little breathing room over the couple behind. So he's got a couple. He's got a couple tenths now in hand. Uh, Gavin McLaren uh, in the OMS 2000 M currently 16th on a 42.76. That's how close all these cars are. It's like two seconds swamping most of the field. He's come out of a Tory, heading up and departed, bouncing, waggling, and all the rest of it. And then I've got car 104 on the line. I'll get back to you in a minute. Yeah, well, a great uh, class uh, that we have in this. Uh, Gavin uh, going through uh, the second part of his run, a 42.76 on his uh, previous run. So uh, looking to improve as ever on this uh, second run this afternoon. It's quite hot uh, for all those cars. It's a 42.58, so an improvement for Gavin. Yeah, a couple of tenths improvement actually jumped him up a spot to 15. Dave Tatum is holding the class lead in this. He's on a 38.81. Uh, nobody's come clear, Nick. He's got a few more challengers, but if he uh, he's already looks like he's lowering the time on the split. He is. He's actually going quicker, and this may put the nail in the coffin for the rest of the competitors. However, we've got some very strong cars still to come. He's lost a little bit of midway. Ben? Yeah, Dave, uh, one of the few competitors uh, campaigning one of the DJ chassis. This is the Firehawk uh, car here today on the hill and it looks, looks like a cracking run for him. A 38.33 for Dave Tatum, so almost five minutes quicker than his previous run this morning. Impressive time. Yeah, I don't see anybody coming anywhere near this, but Will Kerr is going to have a go. Currently in fifth place, he's only a few tenths out of third place, so we've got, uh, or actually second place, We've got five cars, six cars on 39.2 to 39.9. So uh, I'll carry it over, Ben, just to the end here for a minute. So Will just wiggling around 39.58, uh, keeps him in fifth place, no gain. Tom Weaver currently in third. He's only 100 behind Darren, Dylan Fletcher in second. Can he find that second? I'm not sure if he can get Dave Tatum, but he's got a good shot at second place in class here. Ben? Well, uh, I'm not sure if that is, run is going to go as, as expected, unfortunately. Tom overturned the car at the entry of 
a tourist and he'll be frustrated with this run but he just uh, carried on onto this run yeah he will have a frustrated Tom at the yeah. return back end going into a Torres back end came out turned the car 90 degrees sideways he's just driven across the grass and carried on no problem no danger but no run so no time for Tom he's stuck in third by a hundredth of a second but he's actually rolling back to the finish so he'll be uh, he'll be annoyed with himself but there we go. We got Debbie Debbie Summers in the DJ Firehawk. Now Debbie's currently eight, and she needs maybe a tenth to actually jump up to about six. So not a lot in it here. It's already up to Pardon, heading up into the hill. So far, looking all good and tidy. They're heading across the straight into the S's bend. Yes, uh, Debbie and other competitors are chasing the 39s. Uh, she posted a 40.05 on their first practice run uh, this morning, so let's see what she can do. I've lost my time, Owen, so I'll rely on you to give us the time. Right, yep, I'm still going here. Uh, across the line, 39.56. She's jumped the fifth. Two, one hundred, or two, two one hundreds ahead of Will Care. So laid down at 39.56 and actually jumped several positions. So well done to Debbie. Uh, and I believe that uh, we've got Jonathan Flesher um, still to go. He's currently eighth. Uh, Dylan Flesher in the same car is second. So we're going to have to see what he does. He's coming out of semicircle now. Heads across the line with a 39.60. Jumps Nigel Pitt to seventh. Drops Nigel to eighth. Uh, but no further improvement of that. Last car in this class running is Ben Bonfield. Dave Tatum has got this class sewn up today. We've had a few amazing last minute changes. There are hundreds of seconds dividing these cars. It's unbelievable. Anyway, Ben's coming up to you uh, with the mark, the Jet Jedi Mark IV. He's currently in 16th. Yes, a uh, great run so far for Ben uh, in the uh, Jedi. Going through the finish straight, no problems through on this run. It's a time of a 42.42. Yep, uh, and that actually keeps him in 15th place. So that's class I done. Dave Tatum takes it, uh, but you got to check the results, folks. There's, ten, there's two 100s between multiple cars in there. Kirsten Dodd in the Formula Ford now. This is Formula Ford racing cars up to 1600. After first time run, Sarah Bosler did a 47.93, which is a new personal best for her. Kirsten is currently sitting in fifth, but there's three cars in the 49s, and she's the third one. So she's looking to improve on that. And Carol Nichols in the in the 60s and vintage Nike Mark IV is on the line and heading past you now. Kirsten is just crossing the line, Ben. Sorry about that. 50.12, no improvement, half a second slower. Carol's with you. Yeah, Carol already into the entry of uh, Pardon, no problem. Carol, the great supporter of the sport as ever. She loves that car and she'll be uh, taking any opportunity to drive that car in the on the hills, but Charlie Rayleigh just uh, launched uh, off the straight and uh, the uh, 66 miles an hour under the uh, bridge. Uh, Charlie uh, currently just uh, posted a 50.2 weight, so we'll be looking to get into the 49 on that run. Let's see if we can do that. Looking good so far. Uh, when I look at the splits, he might get into those 49, so that's looking uh, like a good run for him. Yeah, Carol's down to 54.90, so an improvement of four tenths. Uh, keeps her in seventh place. Charlie's really motoring along here. He's uh, he's looking good if he keeps this to the end. Les Buck is launched off the line. Current Les is currently third, but only by a couple of hundred. So here we go, Charlie. Yeah, all 49.98, but not enough. Uh, he stays in sixth. Kirsten Dobbs keeps fifth. Right, we've got four left, and it's all to be played for here. Uh, Let's Bark is on a 49.03. Poor Markham's on the line with a 49.08 from first time run. It's uh, Ben, take it. Yes, uh, Let's Bark uh, through the second part of the hill. 49.03, so uh, now's the driver that will be looking to go down uh, the uh, second mark. And uh, yeah, looking at the splits, it looks to be on course, but I'm not sure it will be enough. It's a 49.47 for Les, but Paul Morecambe already is through, uh, in my view, at the bottom of the hill into the entry of uh, Antares, up through the gears into uh, the kink of Crocsover, no problem into the entry of uh, Pardon. Quite a white line, but no problem. Gathered it together, up through the gears, no problem. It's a manual gearbox at the back of those cars. Four-cylinder uh, from Ford. 
1600, this is the Academy car, so wonderful cars. Paul Malcolm uh, posted a 49.08 uh, previously, so another one that I'll get to uh, try and get a 48. Looking uh, good so far. Uh, let's see if that's a 48.47 indeed. Yeah, 48.47 to improve, but no change in position. Sarah Bosworth is on the course right now, heading up the pardon. Been setting personal bets since about, oh, yesterday afternoon, from what I understand. Uh, very experienced competitor, but not in a Formula Ford. Still still trying to find her the that last couple of percent in the car. She's so used to uh, driving a different car for years. Very competent driver in all sorts of cars, but is taken to this Formula Ford and is currently leading the class and is looking for more. Can she do a new PB? Not quite, 48.09, so a little bit slower, a tad slower, but uh, is still leading the class, but we've still got Caroline Ryder to go. We'll see her shortly. Andrew Greenan of the Greenan uh, brothers in the e Empire Evo. Now this is class J2, 1100 to 1600 CC cars, and this one is even tighter than the last class. Whee! Big lurid slide coming out of the S's, gathered it up, another lurid slide going through semicircle. 38-21, he's actually jumped the position. Uh, he moved up a position, he's now third in class, but that was uh, that was some car control. Neil Coles is off the line in an OMS 28. To you, Ben. Yes, uh, Andrew Green, a great time, uh, one tenth quicker, and Neil Coles will be looking to improve another uh, driver today, uh, chasing the 39s in here at Prescott, so let's see what he can do. Uh, posted a previous time of a 40.31, so he needs to go three tenths quicker than his previous run um, to get into the 39s. Neil's already uh, into the S's, coming out of uh, the left-hander into the entry of semi-circles. Carries the speed through, we'll see Alex uh, following him in the same car, his son, uh, 40.25 uh, for Neil. Yeah, six, with six one hundred improvement, but no change in position, still 11. Liam Cooper uh, shares this white, uh, uh, shares this car with wife Olivia Cooper and son Archie has been helping us out with the live stream cameraing, uh, cameraing, whatever that is, is that even a word, cameraing? Anyway, he's been helping behind the scenes, Rich, today with all the footage that you're seeing on the live stream, so shout out to Archie. Uh, anyway, Liam Cooper is already heading up, currently sitting in ninth. Uh, Olivia is actually in six, so uh, looks like Liam's doing the ch uh, dishes at the moment. 38.92, yep, he's stuck with the dishes tonight because Olivia's still quicker from the first time run, but she's only in six. She's not much to get all the way to four, so we gotta wait and see. Alan Warburton, uh, father of David Warburton, who keeps taking this little 1600 car and shoving it in the top 10, so here's Alan's dad. Uh, currently sitting in 8th place in class, it's already up to you. Yes, uh, great turn of speed uh, straight off the bat, 103 miles, under, uh, miles an hour under the bridge and uh, great split uh, looking at the uh, time so far from Allen. Uh, this is a car that has got a lot of potential, this is a full carbon tub, so this is the Gold GR 59, the most advanced car that you can probably have today on a hill in the UK. He's going through the finish straight and that's a 38.47 for Alan Warburton. And Yo, he's, he's ju Alan Warburton's jumped to six. Andy Short tried to shorten Ettore's a bit. Uh, looked like the right side wheels. Uh, that's curb hugging on a rather extreme state, has it not been? Yes, uh, that was uh, the, um, let's say the inside inside line of Ettore's uh, from the look of it. Uh, but no problem, Andy uh, carried on on his run, but probably lost a bit of uh, momentum through that corner. He's uh, been slowing down on the second course, second part of the course here at the top of the hill. Uh, not sure if there's a, an issue with the car, hopefully not. I think it's one of those, oops, I'm not gonna go any faster, so let's just get it up the top and off the end so we don't hold up the rest of the running. Knew the, knew the run was gone, so there's no point pushing. Darren Gumley, last weekend had no clutch, so you never saw him. This weekend, he's back with a clutch. Currently eighth, but there's like nothing in it between eighth and fourth. So it's not gonna take much to jump a whole load of cars. Darren, a, a, an experienced competitor on the hills. And uh, yeah, so he's coming through the S's. A little bit of a drift here. The track is looking a little funky. The back wheels on a lot of these cars is just drifting just that little bit. Gary Hill's off the line in the OMS 2000M. Gary, Darren Gumley 
Oh yeah, he's jumped up sixth place with a 38-46. So he's gained some positions there. And he put Alan Warburton behind him by one one hundredth of a second. This is crazy how close these cars are. Ben. Yeah, great run from Darren Gumbley. Uh, obviously improving on his previous run, but Gary Hill uh, here at the bottom of the hill. Uh, and also one taking the inside line uh, into uh, the uh, entry of his hurries. He's carrying on onto his run, but this will be uh, calling the marshals to sweep uh, some of uh, the grass that's been kicked uh, onto uh, the track. Gary already is through the finish line of 39.77 and we'll have a little bit of a uh, sweeping action here just in front of me. Uh, those marshals just hey. on that post, they've earned their day. Yeah, I was going to say, we seem to be picking on one particular post of marshals here. Um, I know earlier they wanted a little broom action. I think we better retract that. No more broom action on the exit of the Tories, please. Um, they keep uh, the gravel. There's a lot of gravel there for safety. That and it just the wheels are just touching the edge, but it's kicking some up. Um, I have a feeling the clerk of the course may just have a quick look at this to see uh, see what's going on because that's a little too frequent for their liking. So they're just going to have a quick check to see what's going on. Uh, let's see. So um, the hill car, Gary Hill just did enough to push Neil Coles down another position. Um, not by much, but he did a 39.77 and he actually jumped the place. So he's moved up a bit. Uh, we still have the four of the top five cars to run in this class. And I've got car one, two, three on the line next. We're just rolling cars back for the restart. We're getting into the cars that are a little highly strung. So if you're fairly new to the hill climbing, some of the, the more specific racing cars, the engines are built with such tight tolerances, they don't like heat. Um, so it's sort of a game with it. It's like you start the engine the right time, you get just at the low end of the heat temperature. So by the time you finish at the top, you get, uh, you know, you're not, you're at the right temperature, so, and you're not getting too hot, because a lot of these cars, the cooling systems are more or less non-existent. If you're watching on live, that's our Clark of the Courses, two of them, and they are doing a track inspection, because it's just been a lot of stuff click, kicked up, so they want to check for themselves, uh, just to make sure everything's good to go, and that our sweepers are still okay. Um, they are in the shade right now, which is kind of okay, but uh, there we go. So, uh, safety first, as always, when it comes to motorsports. Um, right, a shout out to our viewers. We're on 9,600 subscribers. I'm sure there's 400 people in the paddock that haven't, and, and watching today here that haven't subscribed to the Hill Climb TV channel yet. So, oh, we only need 399. Thank you very much for subscribing. So, keep us going. We want to get Rich and his Hill Climb TV program up to 10,000 subscribers before the end of September. If we could do it this afternoon on a beautiful afternoon like this, please do. So what's the old saying they say on YouTube? Like, share, follow, subscribe. Subscribe. It doesn't cost you anything. Just hit the subscribe button, folks. I'm on a one-man promotion band. I'm, I'm in his marketing department to get him to 10,000. So uh, keep going here. We've gained five while I've been babbling. Um, so anyway, there we go. And listen, everybody that supported the Hill Climb TV, all the volunteers and marshals around there, if you're watching from around the world, if you're watching from the UK, um, the uh, response to what Rich has done and, uh, and all the comments, he also runs Hill Climb UK's Facebook page, so he keeps you up to date with all the data and everything else. This boy, this man puts like, there's not enough hours in the week, the amount of put he puts in there to bring you what you're seeing here. He's a one-man band that's doing this with a couple of helpers on the weekend. So, um, you know, the support by subscribing just shows how much you appreciate. So, please, um, you know, if you happen to see Rich wandering around the paddock with a camera and he's not pointing it at some idiot with a microphone talking, I'm talking about me, not Chris, um, then, um, you know, please, you know, tell him how much you appreciate it. Put it in the comments, tell him how much you appreciate it. Where, you know, it's, it's been a crazy long year and um, 
we're uh, yeah, <laughs> we're up to yeah, we're up to 30 in the time I've actually been doing 30 more. So listen, I feel like I'm doing one of those. Um, I, I feel like I've got to say something, but you're do, doing too much of a good job here, Owen. <laughs> yeah, if you can top that, Ben, go right ahead because I'm going to have a beverage. <laughs> yes, uh, no. Thank you to everyone already who has been uh, following Hell Climb TV for uh, quite a while. Uh, so, so far, it's been fantastic to see uh, everything and all the great comments. Uh, we appreciate it. Uh, it's great to have everyone. And obviously, if you're here live, well, um, you just could get a little more uh, for your uh, tickets and you can watch it all back. So if you think that you've missed uh, the action uh, from one of the cars today, or if you want to rewatch one of your favorite cars or your favorite drivers, you can do this when you come back at home. Uh, I'm not sure if everyone will be happy at home, but uh, maybe keep the sound down. Because yeah. Yeah. There's John Stockley uh, on the start line, 1.93 off uh, at the 64 feet, 96 miles an hour. We're now moving up to class um, J2. So this is uh, not the one that we're all going to look at. There's a fantastic car here from John. Uh, great turn of speed so far in this first run uh, at uh, Pardon. Up through the gears, through the straight on the second part of the course. John Stockley uh, currently uh, standing uh, at with a 40.76 in this. So another uh, driver will be chasing a 39 today on the hill. Let's see what he can do. He's coming towards his end of the run, up through the gears, 39.47. Well done, John. Yeah, he jumped from, hang on, he's actually jumped from 14th to 11. Jumped three positions, uh, that did so excellent, well done. Robert Capper in the Empire Race. Very distinctive design, the Empire Race. You see the, the side pods and everything are more swoopy and wrap around. Um, and it looks like it's almost wider and lower. Somebody squished it, another a normal car there a bit, but not a problem. Robert is currently, now, we gotta watch this one, Ben. He's currently fifth. There's nothing in it all the way to second, so we gotta see what he does. I'll follow him to the end, but you've got Stephen Potter coming through an Empire even on a minute. Robert Capper's at a 38.74. No improvement, he's actually three tenths slower. To you, Ben. Yeah, Stephen Potter is one that will be looking to improve on his time from this morning. Had a little bit of a um, moment uh, exiting a um, Atoris this morning, uh, the, the car just uh, almost overturned on him, but no problem on the second part and on this second run. It's looking at the split, it's looking uh, very good for him. Uh, currently in this class, uh, Stephen Potter 39.33, just posted a 39.47, so fairly consistent for Stephen. Yeah, 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 a couple yeah, of tenth, uh, tenth and a bit slower, so no improvement, still tenth in class. But we still have the top th three out of the top four cars to run in that class. Let's back up a class for a minute. Formula Ford racing cars, 1600 pre-1994. They are running to Formula Ford spec. Carolyn Ryder is currently second. Sarah Bosworth is currently first. Carolyn Ryder would like to be first. She's going to need to do a 47.92 or better. Her first run was only a 48-1-1. She's just had a little bit of a slide coming out of Pardon. I literally slid up the hill, but she is up at Midway, and she's... I haven't got it. She's coming to you. Yeah, she is looking good on the split so far. Uh, I'm looking at the split, and it might be uh, one for uh, the class leader. It's a 47.80. Oh, she's done it. Carolyn Ryder just beat Sarah Bosworth by a tenth of a second. Adam Greenan has got to a Tories and just sort of gone, you know what, I'm just going to pull over in the gravel and stop. He hasn't hit anything, he's just in the gravel. So we're going to have a little bit of delay. He is not happy with himself. It's like, well, I'm sure the corner didn't go as right as this here, but it does. So he's literally locked it up, and it looks like I'm waiting for the replay because so far my, uh, my cat-like reactions to the lives has been a bit off. Just on cue, here's the replay. Comes through Orchard, out the other side. Just drift a little bit. Wiggle comes into a Tories, gets it down, comes across halfway through, and the car just drifted wide and into the gravel. Not quite sure what happened there. I didn't see any lockups or anything. It's just like, it, just like the steering wheel just didn't turn far enough. So I don't know if he lost front end grip, and it just understeered into the gravel. Really strange. Marshals are there. Um, Right, 
Looks like we might be sweeping some gravel this time, but uh, they've got the car out of the gravel and they're just brushing the tires off so it doesn't track anymore. And I think they're going to be sending the car back down the hill. And yep, one of the start line marshals is off to go get the gate. So uh, our marshals are on the daub. They're uh, keeping us going. Get it in there. It's like, what are you doing there? Let's get it out of the gravel and back around. Uh, what's it like from your view, Ben? Yeah, so <laughs> definitely those marshal, those falls have been, will be the hero of the day. And they're all heroes, you know, the Orange Armies, but this fall have really put a shift today, uh, helping uh, those drivers this afternoon. Uh, they're now pushing him down the hill, so uh, hopefully he'll be able to uh, get back to the paddock. Doesn't seem to be any damage to the car. He's been told apparently to roll on the grass because I think he probably has a few gravel on the wheels so we don't want to drag this uh, further along on the track. If we can save some sweeping actions for the uh, marshals we'll try and do that. He's going to go and uh, carry on his way and he'll be back in the paddock uh, very shortly so no problem. A frustrated run for Adam Grunen um, today on this one. Okay, Ben, yeah, sorry, I'm just getting some technical information because all of us are, that marshalling point is called a Tory's marshalling point. So guys, if you can hear us, keep going. What we think might be happening here is if, if you're watching the live stream, you see they come through Orchard, under the bridge and through Orchard, in the shade, and they're hitting the sunshine. A lot of them do not have tinted visors on, and I'm, we're wondering, and even if we're here, we're just having a conversation in the control booth, that um, the sun, so there it is on the screen there. You can see they're in the shade through Orchard. They come out to a Tories to the enter there, and the sun's suddenly there, and we're not sure on the angle, so I don't know if I can get a, an on-track reporter. Ben, maybe you maybe get a better view of this, but does it, it may be blinding them and throwing them off a little bit, trying to find the turning point on the corner. Yeah, I see what you mean, uh, Owen. Um, I'm sure uh, it's, as you go through, yes, you'll, you'll come just to, onto the entry of uh, Atoriz as you get towards your, your breaking point uh, on here. So remember, this is uh, one of the quickest uh, sections of the course before uh, this very uh, tricky 180 degree uh, corner. And you just want to be patient on this one. But if you just get blinded and uh, you haven't got like the right visor for the conditions today, uh, it would be quite easy for the drivers to, to get caught and sort of miss the, the breaking point. Um, so Adam Grumman hadn't had any uh, challenge and uh, no damage to the car, so maybe that's what happened. Uh, we'll see if we get more of those. Hopefully we don't, uh, because those marshals uh, will be knackered by the end of the day. They may be knackered already, but uh, you can see on screen, thank you Rich for that coverage there. So we're back in the paddock. Uh, we're starting to get ready uh, we're getting into the bigger car class. Lining up right now is car 116. And this is Alex Coles in the OMS 28. So Alex is currently, ooh, where is he? Um, he's beaten dad, the 1600s. This is class J2. I'll have to check in a minute. Um, Alex is uh, currently standing fourth, I believe. Yeah, that's what I think, fourth, but there's not much in it, so he's going to be looking to improve. So he's off the line with a two-second 64-foot time under the bridge, 98 miles an hour through Orchard. Comes out of the shade, into the sunshine. He has a tinted visor on. I'm, so let's see how he gets off, Ben. Yeah, a great uh, turn of speed uh, so far and in, into uh, the uh, crossover onto the entry of Pardon. Carry the speed uh, beautifully through uh, part and you can do that sometimes and then you put your foot down uh, into the straight into the S is no problem. Beautiful uh, line through uh, the second part of the course. I look to carry as much speed on this last run of the day. Let's see what I can do. It's a 38.18. Yep, and actually he's jumped the position to third. He's moved from fourth to third by three one hundredths of a second. Uh, Adam Greenan was actually second in class, so I don't think there's anybody else that can do this. Olivia Cooper, who's uh, making, uh, beating uh, husband Liam, so he's doing the dishes tonight. 
she's just launched off the line. Had a little bit of a delay getting off the line, but she's launched off the line now, 2.18. Currently sitting uh, somewhere about 7th or 8th. I haven't got it on the screen at the moment, but is actually uh, in the sort of in the lower half of the top 10 in this class at the moment. Is absolutely flying with this thing. Up pardon already around the other side. No hesitation whatsoever. We're not getting a purple sector. At midway, she's even with the time. This is a flyer, folks. She's currently eighth. If she can hang on to this thing, this is going to be something else. Slightly down at semicircle, but I think this is going to be an improvement. Let's see what she can do. Cross the line, 38.61. No, no improvement. Stays in the same place. David Warburg, giant killer, 1600cc, gets into the top 10 run up in the British Championship and scores points. Ben? Yeah, the only driver under the 37 seconds in this class. And in this class, sorry, and David uh, already going through the entry of S's and onto the uh, tricky 90 degree left hander into the entry of semicircle. Carries a lot of speed through that corner and uh, he also goes through the finish straight. It's a 37.17, an impressive uh, improvement, almost seven tenths on his previous run this morning. Uh, actually, he went slower. Sorry about that. Uh, I, need, I need to read 36 and 37. Yeah, yes, it's all right. 37, <laughs> it's a little bit slower, but the question is, will it be enough to qualify the top 12 runoff again? Because he's looking to get into the top 12 runoff for British Hill Climb Championship. Uh, sorry, to maintain his number, t uh, to maintain a top 10 number for next year. That's his goal with a 1600cc car. Remember that, folks. Nicola Dearden in the Delara F394 with no side pods, because while well, it's hill climbing, why do you need them? Kind of like a, I don't know, what you call it? A submarine or a bullet or something like that. She's heading across. The, yeah, I'm, I'm losing it. <laughs> anyway, Jonathan Evans is somewhere up there. Nicola did a 49.87, so she's gone slower. Trish Davis has just launched off the line in the Force TA. She's currently, well, either fourth or fifth because I got two DT Davises. But anyway, Jonathan Evans gone across the line in a pill beam. He goes on to 43.08, moves up from place to seven. Trish Davis with you, and I'm going to go lie down. Yes, sir. John Evans, a great improvement of so 43.08 compared to 44.18 uh, this morning. But Trisha Davis uh, quickly uh, follows him in the beautiful uh, V8 uh, two-liter engine uh, car, the Force TA, a car they've been campaigning this season uh, for the first time, a uh, car that she shares with her husband, uh, Terry. And uh, yeah, she's already going through the finish straight to 41.78 uh, for Trisha, a great time, uh, about uh, four tenths quicker than a uh, previous run this morning. Yeah, uh, no improvement in position, but uh, is quicker, so that's a good one. We've got Eric Colbert. Now, he they broke a shaft on the regular family car, so um, the owner of this car said, well, jump in mine. So <laughs> Aaron's actually switched cars and is driving a completely foreign car today. Um, Aaron normally is driving the Van Diemen RF2X. Well, he's sitting in a Formula Renault car at the moment. So uh, let's see what he does, Ben. Yeah, Aaron uh, looking to try all the Formula cars uh, from the look of it. So Aaron already through the finish straight. Uh, great uh, time for him, a 44 or 3. So uh, big improvement on his uh, previous time at 46.55. Clive Austin is uh, back up and running uh, again this season. Uh, 86 miles an hour under the bridge with this uh, turbocharger 13 cc car it looks to be a bit slow uh, on the exit of pardon uh, yeah. almost didn't get through that corner but no problem he carried on the speed but he'll be frustrated with that second uh, yeah run. i think he's abandoned that run the no the, the car understeered he tried to get out the exit it just went straight uh, so he just avoided the uh, the embankment there so he's just pootering around in the end to get there um that yeah, so we've jumped up into the uh, 1600 to 2 liter class at the moment. I think we've bounced back a minute. We've got a couple of swaps around here. And Einan Price is on the hill. And he's in a, yeah, let's get back to the 1600 to 2 liter class. Um, I'm just trying to work this out here. It was Simon Barnwell. Simon Barnwell, shout out to Simon Barnwell for letting Aaron Colburn drive his car because um, Aaron just went faster than Simon in his own, in the car so you may regret that Ian Tucker is coming along he's coming through a tall race now Einan Price did a 37.68 but no movement he's three tenths behind Jonathan Varley uh, in the class runs now Jonathan Varley is on the line 
he is looking to qualify for the top 12 again, but he's going to need a 36 or a 36 or a 37 lower than he's done. Anyway, back to you, Ben. Yes, uh, Jonathan Varley, I believe, uh, has uh, beaten his own record and this uh, morning uh, competitive run, so he will be looking to improve on this. Uh, Jonathan is one of the British Cup contenders, uh, all tying with Arnold McDonald and Duncan Barnes uh, at the top of the Cup and the leading board. And uh, there is extra points for drivers that can uh, snatch the uh, class record. Uh, you gain one point extra. Jonathan going real well again in this car, in this beautiful DWR. Uh, Predator is going to go through the finish straights, finish line, 37.65, a great run for George. Yeah, that's uh, three tenths down, but more importantly, is it enough to get into the top 12 runoff? We're going to have to wait and see on that. On the line, John Chalmers in the Rolf 302. So we're switching, we're bouncing a little bit back between K1 and K2 at the moment, folks. We're, it's just the way, because the cars are double driven. John goes launches off the line. He's currently fifth in this class. This is K2 up to two leader car. Paul Hames is actually leading the class, and his first run time actually qualified him for the top 12. But whether he can do it again, we'll have to wait and see. So yeah. John's already two, you been? Yeah, this is uh, now moving into the uh, big snail or supercharger class, so uh, forced induction cars on here. So mostly those cars will be running a uh, motorbike engine at the back yeah, with uh, either supercharger or turbo strapped onto. John Charm is always one of the <laughs> loudest cars here running the anti-lag engine popping and banging as he goes through the gears and it's a uh, time of 39.83 for John Chalmers. Yeah, tenth slower than his uh, first run so no improvement there still in fit. Pete Tatum now, Pete Tatum here, he set two personal bets today already. He's on a 38.00. Paul Haynes has gotten the class lead with a 36.07. Pete wants a 37. He will go home the happiest man in this place if he can get a 37. He is absolutely going to go for this. Uh, very precise driver, been really carrying the speed. Brother, ooh, bit of a drift going through the S's there, but he's still carrying the speed. Heading across there. Uh, and he's going around semi-circle. What's he going to do, Ben? Yes, it's probably going to be a time in the 38 to 38 to 6, so uh, not quicker than his uh, morning run, but a great run for Pete. He'll be happy with uh, his running today and this weekend. Yeah, keeps him in second place in class. He'll be happy with the weekend, but it's just that 37 was eluding him. Kelvin Broad is on the line with a 19764 foot. He's 95 miles an hour already coming to you. Not a tinted visor on, so he's got the clear visor. Uh, he's currently sitting fourth with a 3922, but there's nothing between him and the car in front, which is only 5100. So, Ben, can he improve? Yes, uh, I'm looking for uh, time for Calvin, and uh, Calvin posted a 39.22, so let's see if he can improve. I'm just looking at the previous time from John Chalmers. I think this will be in the lower end of the 39 seconds. It's a 39.46, great time for Calvin. Yeah, no improvement though, so he stuck it fourth. So now we've got Paul Haynes on the line. He's got the class win, but what he's looking for is a time to qualify for the top 12 runoff of the British Championship. This is a 1300cc motorcycle engine with a giant snail on the back of it. And number eight means he finished eighth in the British Championship last year. So another David versus Goliath job here. He is looking for a qualifying time, nothing else. He's got the class win, that's okay. He needs a time to get into the top 12. Yes, uh, big snail, uh, but doesn't mean any slow. Uh, it's actually very, very quick and uh, quick runs uh, so far and splits for Paul Hames. Just looking at the time, uh, 26.26 uh, at the S. He's already uh, going through the finish line, 36.35. Yeah, Paul Hames. he actually dropped the left rear wheel off just in the grass just before the flying finish. Uh, that was interesting. Right. Uh, where are we? So Jonathan, uh, Ina Price, Jonathan Varley's leading by three, 100, oh no, he's got a bit more than that. Yeah, so we... Andrew Henson's currently third, and this is, so now we're back to normally at 1,602 liter, back to K1 again, sorry folks. Andrew Henson's in third. Um, he needs a couple of seconds to get a second. He's improved, 39.79, but it keeps him in third place. Jonathan Varley, we've got Terry Davis to go, but I think Jonathan Varley's got the class win at least. 
We'll have to wait and see if he actually makes it into the top 12. Jonathan Evans is on the line right, oh, hang on, on the line right now. So I'm not quite sure. We've got a hand up. Uh, something's not right. We're having a combo. Bear with us. Right, on our subscriber side, Ben, we gained 64 in my begging plea. 336 more to go. We've got to have that many people lying around here somewhere. Run around the field, grab everybody's phone, log into uh, YouTube, get on there and just hit subscribe, will you? Go on, Ben, you know you can do it. Yes, uh, please, uh, go, let's get those 10K by the end of the day. It will be wonderful uh, for everyone and it will make uh, Rich so happy at the end. Um, we still have a lot of fun to do uh, at the end of this season, so I'm sure we'll get there, but if we can do it today, it will be wonderful. John Evans has just uh, launched uh, off uh, the line in the PLB MP88 in the 2 litre uh, Ford engine at the back. Uh, Jonathan Evans uh, posted a 43.08. Uh, 40, no, 44.18. I seem to have a time on my screen though for my <laughs> second run. This is weird. Uh, uh, yeah, there's been a correction on my screen. So we'll just. Uh, 44.18 on his first time run. Nothing for the second run. This is it. Yes, uh, you're right, uh, this was the time that uh, it was hosted by Kevin Creven that shares this car. Um, so uh, let's see what we can have, 43.55 for Jonathan Evans. Yeah, that actually moves him up to 8, pushed Aaron Colburn to 9th and Simon Barwell to 10. Now Terry Davis, is, I think he's the only one left who's got a shot at moving up here. He's currently 4th in class. Andrew Henson's in 3rd for the 39.79. Terry's done a 40.39, so he needs about 6 or 7 tenths. Um, he can do it. We'll have to wait and see. I don't think he'll catch John Barley or Ryan Price. They're in the 37s, but he's going to give this a go in his own custom-built engine, two-liter uh, Yamaha motorcycle bit V8. Now the strange thing is, it's the same engine in Jonathan Varley's car, but in a different chassis. Yes, uh, Terry, uh, going well so far. Uh probably going to be a timer uh, just looking at the splits uh, looking quite well so far uh, not sure he's going to get uh, into the third position no it is a 39.87 very close uh, to Andrew Hansen there's just one tenth less than a tenth between those two yeah that would be eight one hundredths in the th I don't know how I took at it and figured it out in my head but eight one hundredths off of Andrew Hansen but he gave it a good go he got all he got 95 percent there anyway Simon Barnwell, who uh, has uh, generously allowed Aaron Colburn to jump into his car as because the, uh, the Colburn's car broke a shaft and they can't fix it. So uh, he's currently in 10th. Uh, his new co-driver is in 9th. So can Simon do anything about this? Again, slides a little bit, touch the grass. Uh, an improvement, but not enough. Stays in 10th place. But from sportsmanship side, number one for me. Jason Tunnicliffe in the eighth Empire Wraith. We're back to the force deduction cars up to two liter. Empire Wraith coming at you. Yes, uh, popping and banging and all the right sound uh, from uh, this motorbike engine. Uh, great turn of speed between uh, the SS. This car is so agile through the entry of uh, part and it just rotates beautifully through the uh, straight into the S's, carries the speed, let's see what it can do. He's into the 90 left, into the entry of semi circle, carries the speed, uses all the downfalls from those single seaters uh, through the finish straight. It's a time over 41.84. Uh, yeah, absolute time, uh, no improvement. Nobody improved in this class on the second time run. Paul Haynes takes the class. We'll have to see if Paul did enough to get into the top 10. Now we've got Class L playing. We've got 23 of these guys coming out and girls with a mixed, mixed bag here. Racing cars over two liter, i.e. v 8 or something else. Anyway, Sandra Tomlin's already to the top of the hill. Had a fail the first time. The car's been giving her trouble. She sets a time, moves her up three positions, the 20th. Bernard Kevel who shares this car with Simon Andrews, is leading Simon by one hundredth of a second. When these two share a car and compete against each other, they don't mess about. So Bernard is holding off Simon. I think last event, Simon was holding off Bernard. Anyway, Ben, who's going to do it? Yeah, this is a friendly uh, battle between those two. A great turn from Sandra uh, Tomlin, the 41.71. 
Uh, Bernard is going through the finish straight, it's a 40.38, so an improvement. Let's see if uh, Simon uh, can uh, get better than this. Yeah, he actually drifted that car around semicircle. Um, it, it's looking like it's just getting a bit slick. The tires look like they're just getting a little overheated by the time they get to the semicircle. So we've got to keep an eye on that. Uh, yeah, so Bernal the 4038, no improvement in the overall time. Lynn Owen, that's Mrs. OMS, is on the hill, heading through the S's and coming out the side. She's currently 22nd. Uh, we'll be looking to jump up on that. And Anthony Hunt has just launched off the line in Terry Graves' DJ 55 XD. Yes. Lynn, sorry, Lynn's just done a 43.69. No improvement. Yes, yeah, so this is uh, one of the uh, big uh, Gold uh, GR DJ 55 today. Uh, this is the Cosworth XD engine at the back. A lot of power on that car. 2.65 litre and a car that obviously has been really successful holding a few hill records across the UK here and Anthony Hunt through the finish line it's a 41.24 for Anthony yeah no improvement on the time but no improvement in position right next up we've got Sean Gould now Sean qualified for the first runoff and he's looking to do it again shares the car with Matt Ryder who actually tied for the win in the, the first runoff this morning so we got Sean on the line. He's looking to improve in class. He's currently sixth in class, and he's looking for a time that we are now into the, I want to get into the runoff uh, hunters. So qualifying for this runoff, I think it's going to be a little tricky. The tires versus the track is a little slippery in places in the sun. Right, off Sean goes, 195 uh, off 64 foot, 140, uh, 104 miles an hour. Under the bridge comes into you. Yeah, great turn speed already for Sean. Um, the car moving uh, on the exit of uh, a tourist, but no problem. Onto the entry of Pardon. Keeps it uh, tidy through there. Up through the gears. Going to use all the power at the back of this uh, car to go through the uh, corners into the 90 left. Onto the entry of semi-circles. Carries the speed. Use all the grip of the tyres and the aero on that car. He's going to look for a time in the mid 36 is 36.63 for Sean. Yeah. Just uh, sort of a half a tenth off this morning, so we'll have to see where that goes. Graham Wynn in the line. The car shared by Scott Moran. So Graham's lost off, finished second in the runoff at the last event in the crazy weird weather conditions. Uh, his best ever results. Had a couple of thirds as well. So he's already through a Tories out the other side. Graham is currently 11th in this class on a 39.19. So he's going to be looking to approve here somewhere. Uh, it heads up the hill. And then I've got uh, Lindsay Summers, Alex Summers' mom. Uh, on the line. Yes, a uh, great turn of speed for Graham in the second part of the hill uh, here. And it's going to look to carry all that speed through the uh, second part of the course here. And it's a 39.01 for Graham. So yeah, so that's a, sorry, that's a tenth of an improvement, but still an 11th overall in the class. Lindsay's launched off the line. She's looking to improve. She's currently well, 23rd with a 44.41. So she's looking to get at least into the 43s, maybe the 42s in the AFS P40. Yeah, I'm always, I'm always impressed by how well they can launch this car. 1.88 off the line. Uh, so great launch control on that car. And uh, 83 miles an hour under the bridge. Lindsay is going to try and make it and improve on her time. 44.41 this morning. Let's see if she can improve on that time. Carries the speed through the second part of the course, and Edmund Burgess uh, finally got a 39 seconds today. He was really happy. 39.98 was his time earlier today. He's going to try and improve on this time. If you can do it once, you can do it twice, Ed. Um, so I'm sure he'll be going to go and improve on that, and it's go looking very well for him so far. I'm looking down at the split and comparing with Graham, who's got a 39.01. He's looking very good so far. Let's see if he can uh, make it uh, through the finish line. It's a 38.58. Great for head. Absolutely excellent. He's over 1.4 seconds quicker. Jumps up to 10th in the class. He'll be chuffed with that. Susan Young's on the line in the family. Gould, GR51. Older model. Sue, uh, Sue and husband Derek were regular competitors for years. They've taken some time out. They've got to build a new engine. Derek stuck it in the car. Susan said, yeah, let's get back on the hills with it. So Sue's racing. Uh, Derek's spannering. 
and she has launched it off the line. Uh, they actually breed trotting racing horses for trot trotting now, so quite an interesting thing with her daughter. And Paul Cripps on the line in his Jaguar powered OMS 28, Ben. Well, I'm sure uh, this car is not short of horses uh, with this V8 jet at the back, probably about 600 horsepower. And Susan is using all of them onto the course uh, today, uh, going through great sound from that V8. This is uh, obviously the GR51, uh, a car that was really successful uh, straight out of the box when that car was uh, the latest model on the hills, the 39.46. Paul Crute already on the hill already at uh, 88 miles an hour. This is uh, the OMS 28 with the Jaguar 3 litre V6 at the back and uh, Paul is always a great contender. It's one of the most beautiful car. This is the iconic uh, Jaguar livery that we have seen in the early 2000s. Already through semi circles, runs this off and then through the finish straight, up through the gears and it's a time of 41.69 for Paul. Yeah, that's an improvement of six tenths. Um, Sue approved by half a second. She's up to 13. And Jack Cottrell's off, start off the line in the Dallara Cosworth. So back end is kind of like a DJ Firestorm type thing. And the front is the next Dallara, I think one of the three car, he said. And uh, yeah, a little different combination, but he's got it. He's been getting into the runoffs with this in the last couple of events. Uh, so uh, at, the, at the bottom end of him, so he's been doing well, really improving. And I've got Harry Pick on the line in the OMS 28. Watch this car go, it drifts all the way around the course. Yes, uh, Jack Cultural boosted a 37.14 in the runoff uh, this morning, and he just boosted his exact same time uh, on this run. So uh, hopefully they can get him a place in the second runoff for today. Yeah, I think the timing screen's a little goofy, but uh, 37.14 this time. He did a 37.55 in the first run, but I'm not sure what he did in the runoff. So that might be what you're on about. Anyway, he's done a 37-14. Is it enough to get into the top 12? Harry Pick is trying everything he can to get up there. This car, you'd swear, had a pendulum in the middle of it. It's just sort of swings back and forth. And Oliver Tomlin, the son of the car owner. Oh, Harry's really drifting this car. 39.07, uh, slower than his time this morning. Keeps him 11th in class. Not sure it's going to be enough for the top 12 run-up. Well, Oliver Tomlin is with you. Yes, uh, Oliver Tomlin, uh, busy up through the gears and using the right pedal. Uh, beautiful uh, Tomlin speeds through, uh, pardon, and uses the right line into that corner. Banging the medal into the S's, into the 90 left. It's uh, looking good on the splits. Uh, we are aiming for 38 there, and I'm sure we'll be uh, doing this time. He'll use all the power, 600 horsepower, at the back of that car, 37.87. Well done, Ollie. And actually, um, that's almost two seconds quicker. He's pushed a whole bunch of cars down and jumped to 10. So Ollie's really put in a blinder there in that second run. We'll have to keep going. Right, Simon Andrews is on the line in the Bernard Kevill versus Simon Andrews battle. Bernard Kevill has it with a 4038. Simon Andrews only has done a 4055. So can he beat Bernard? We're about to find out. Here he goes across the line. 4042. Nope, missed it by four hundredths of a second. So, looks like Simon's got the dish duty on that one if they ever go to the same house and have to do the dishes. Stephen Owen, the top boss, top man, designer, builder of the OMS car, race car, is with you, Ben. Yes, uh, Stephen will be hoping to get in the, the 39 in this run. He posted the 40.07 previously, so let's see what he can do in this beautiful um, green OMS. He's already through the S's, carries the speed onto the uh, 90 left, into the entry of the uh, semicircle, carries the speed. Let's see what he can do. There's a little bit slow through semicircle from uh, my commentary box, but 39.91 under the 40 second. Objective done. Well done, Stephen. Yeah, uh, good improvement. Uh, no moving position overall, unfortunately, but a lot closer. Terry Graves, the flying electrician, is uh, up into... Uh, where are you? Pardon, that's where you're at. Uh, regular competitor, long-time competitor in this DJ55 Gould. And he's flopping around, flopping around to you. And then we've got Will Hall in the carbon fiber special <laughs> on the line. Yes, uh, Terry uh, making uh, 
great progress second part of the hill 39.51 for Terry but Will Hall just launching in 1.82 uh, very quick off the line 170 miles an hour this is one that is very much looking forward for a runoff uh, place at the end of the day today let's see what it can do great lines through uh, this in uh, the Pardon through the straight into the S is no problem into the 90 left hander. Let's see if we can carry speed out of that corner. A little bit of throttle to get onto semi circles. Round, 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 and off he goes. Let's see what he can do. That'll be a cracking time. It's a 36.19. Yeah, so four tenths slower than the first run, but I'm a little suspect that we're going to see time because of the heat in the air. We're also losing a bit of the air density, so that'll affect it. David Uren's on the track. He was the top qualifier this morning for the first runoff. Had a little bit of a, just an e, a little bit during the runoff run and didn't, didn't, uh, didn't hold the position. But uh, anyway, very quick in this older Gould GR55B. So can Dave pull off the top qualifier again? He's actually the lead class leader in this class still because with the class, both runs, best of both runs. But for the runoffs, it's only the second run that counts for the second runoff. So here he goes, around the hill, up the 36-19. Um, and that ties Will Hall in the uh, battle of the runoff. That's the quickest time so far, 36-19. Should be enough for the runoff, but can anybody go any quicker? Yeah, and also great performance for David Oren uh, again uh, today in this second run. So a uh, great time, and I was uh, really uh, seeing probably running the first runoff, but he didn't, he completely drifted uh, harder in the first runoff. Let's see, Matt Ryder, what can he do in this run? Obviously, another runoff contender, 109 miles under the bridge into the entry of uh, Eteris, no problem, up through the gears into the entry of Pardon. This is one of the young guns in this championships. He moved up to that big car uh, that he shares with Sean Gould, who is the four litre judge at the back. What a wonderful car into the 90s, uh, left under and into the right under. Carries the speed through all the way through the top of the hill. It's going to be a great run. It's a 36.14 for Matt. Yeah, and that puts the, he's the quickest qualifier so far in my work it out of my head routine. Unless some of our other smaller cars have got quicker. I don't think they have. Trevor Willis in the OMS 28 is uh, coming at you up the hill around the corner. Well, it's a hill climb, so you got to go up a hill at some point. Head towards the S's. Now, let's see. Trevor's currently sitting seventh in class, but he's going to need a low 36, I think, to qualify for the runoff. So he's coming around semicircle now. He's heading across the line with a 36-35. 36-35. That uh, actually jumped him up a place, sixth in, sixth in class. Uh, that should be enough for the runoff. Scott Moran is just coming around. Won the first run off on the tie with Matt Ryder and is looking to prove he's still number one on this hill. So he will be wanting to win the, the second runoff by himself to you. Yeah, this is uh, going to be an early 36 uh, from the Luca Vita. Uh, let's see, a uh, 35.63. Great time for uh, That's Scott. That's absolutely six tenths quicker than anybody else. Now, Alex Summers. Here's the key, he got it into the first runoff, didn't score any points, wants to get it into the second runoff. He's actually thinking about a car design while he's driving this, because he built this thing, he designed it, and it's like, well, is this better and this better? He's literally telling me, it's like, well, I could change it. He's actually making engineering changes in his head while he's driving up the hill. That's, you know, but good young lad, very quick driver in the AFS P4T. And he's coming around semicircle now. Can he get a time in? Good enough. A 37.54. We're going to have to wait and see. That may be the bottom of the top 12, but wait and see. Wallace Mengen is on the line, working on his tan by the looks of it. He's got a nice tinted visor on. Visor goes down. He's off and running. 178. He's like, okay, Scott, okay, we're going to go. 106 mile an hour to you, Ben. What a launch off the line of 178. I think that's the quickest we've seen all weekend long. 106 miles an hour under the bridge. He's not hanging around. Beautiful lines through, uh, pardon, onto uh, the uh, straight into the S's. Carries the speed beautifully through there. Always such a tidy driver, uh, Wallace. Let's see what he can do at the top of the hill. Engine popping and banging through the semicircle, up through the finish straight. It's a 35.62. 35.62, that's uh, always put one, one, one hundredth on Scott Moran. 
just to say, uh-uh, we're going to play. Stay tuned for the runoff, folks. This is going to be interesting. It's the, uh, all the gloves are off for this one. Championship's been decided. This is going to be a throwdown for bragging rights. Right, moving on. We've got Amanda George in the Chevron B19. Uh, beautiful classic uh, sports racer, this car. He's already coming up to you. And Andy Tippett in the Brabham BT30X from 1969 is on the hill with that V8 in the back, Ben. Yes, uh, Amanda is through the top of the hill uh, and uh, currently uh, with a 48.55, but it's a 48.10, so five tenths uh, quicker in that second run. But let's see what Andy can do in his beautiful BT30, uh, powered by the beautiful Rover V8 at the back. It makes all the right noises and it looks absolutely wonderful on the hill. If you like your single sitters from this era, this is one of the most beautiful car that we have today on the hill. Andy Tippett already going through uh, semi-circles. Andy just uh, currently uh, leading this class of 45.20, 46.01, so no improvement for him. Nope, sorry, I think I spotted a top 10 list somewhere going around, so I'm trying to be nosy. Uh, I don't know what it is yet. Grant Crashley in the Brabham BT21B is up heading through the S's now. And I've got Martin Jones that just left uh, the start line with a Brabham BT21, which is the next Formula 2 car, but with a genuine original Formula 1 gearbox on the back to, because it was used for hill climbing and not circuit racing. Uh, so Grant Cratchley goes across with a 4902. Uh, no improvement, a little bit slower. Amanda George went quicker. Um, Andy Tippett went slower, so, but Andy Tippett still holding the class lead. Martin Jones is up the top. Robin Johnson in the Tiga SF83 has just launched off the line. And uh, yeah, Ben, talk to me. Yes, uh, Martin uh, already uh, through uh, the finish straight and uh, it will be a time of uh, 47.33. So small improvement on his previous run from Martin. Quickly followed by uh, Robin uh, Johnson in the beautiful Tigre. This is powered by a 1.6 Peugeot engine with 16 head uh, valves. A bit more modern engine than what you would find at the time. This uh, car was originally a Formula Ford uh, car, one of the many manufacturers that we have uh, seen at the time uh, running the Formula Fords. And uh, we've seen so many chassis. This is a car that will be going through the finish straight to 47.47 from Robin. Yeah, 10th down on a second place time. These are class N cars, sports racer. On your screen now is Tom Brown. Yesterday, he drove a Malik Mark 17. They went home, painted it, upgraded it. It's now a Malik Mark 20. Now, uh, this is actually Dad's circuit racer. Uh, a little bit of history on this. This is actually the former Martin Groves Champion, uh, Midland Hill Climb Championship winning car from the 90s before he got into the big cars. So got a lot of history with this car, but Tom's heading across the line with a time of oh, 45.88 and actually gives him the class lead. He went from second to first, put uh, John Mackerel down to second with a 46 flat. We'll have to keep an eye on that. John Harding in the whiniest car here. This thing has got a honking supercharger on it, and when he opens it up, it just sounds, well, it's loud. Jagger E-Type, you got some specs on this, Ben? Yes, uh, this is a 4.7 litre um, XK engine at the front of that uh, Jaguar. And uh, yeah, you're going to hear it uh, coming towards your way because uh, it's the loudest uh, supercharger. Elfie goes off the line, 2.52 for John. Uh, through the uh, bridge, 64 miles an hour. And you can, uh, I thought it was the whistle <laughs> for a moment, but no, it's the supercharger. It goes around there, uh, it is no problem. Up through the gears in this beautiful Jaguar E Time. Enzo Ferrari called this car the most beautiful car in the world. I will tend to agree with him. Uh, this is a wonderful car. A uh, car that is uh, obviously very. Uh, competitive in historic racing at the time and uh, still to these days uh, will be snatching uh, podiums uh, places with the Cobras and uh, this car has been coming into a beautiful engine six cylinder but also V12 guys towards the end of the run of the production. Uh, John going through the finish straight to 50.52 for John. Yeah, 
Uh, so Johnson in the A type, a good time there. And uh, Simon Durling shots, but Simon Braithwaite in that beautiful Mark I Escort RS 1600. He's uh, making a good job of it heading up uh, the top of the hill. And Matt Clark in that Austin Mini. It's a, you can, sorry folks, it's a British motorsport event. You have to have at least one Mini present. It's in the rule book somewhere. Wherever you go, there's got to be a Mini. Anyway, Matt is absolutely drives this thing, and it's a beautifully prepared car. He's done it himself. So Simon Braithwaite did a 5055, a little bit off his previous time, but that uh, gives him there. So we're into the Bugatti Owners Club Handicap Saloon Cars. So they are working the handicaps, but on your screen and what you're doing, the fastest in the class so far is Matt Clark in the Mini with a 5068. So he's looking to improve it, and trust me, he is trying to improve it here. He is up purple sectors all the way across the line. 5073, he lost it just at the end there. Next up, you got Tom McElroy, Matt, uh, Ben. <laughs> Yes, uh, Matt was going through uh, this morning, uh, drifting into Orchid, uh, coming off the uh, uh, straight uh, at the start. And yes, uh, probably has been uh, uh, the highlights of the day for many people today on the hill. Tom in the uh, Renault Twingo, this is a 1.6 litre engine. Uh, it's already going through at the entry of Semi Circle, 133 horsepower. Uh, great uh, car, great handling car, based on the uh, chassis of the same basis of the Clio 2s. A little bit less power, 58.56 uh, for Martin Sanders. Uh, quickly followed, uh, sorry for Tom, and quickly followed by Martin Sanders in this uh, second of the escorts today. This is the Mark 1 uh, with a 2 litre engine, and uh, Martin has been going through uh, the finish straight. He's going through uh, in a time of uh, 50, 1.63 for Martin. Yeah, uh, you've got Richard George. You saw Amanda George in the uh, Chevron B19 early, uh, not too long ago, actually. And you've got Richard George in the car now, just heading up through Parted. Uh, ben, I have the top 12 runoff here. I can tell you who's in it. I do too, because I have it on my screen. Aren't you special? <laughs> yes, uh, Richard George uh, going through in the Chevron B19. This is powered by a four-cylinder uh, Ford engine at the back, a uh, beautiful engine. Have a look at this car in the paddock. It's immaculately presented, a 48.94 for uh, Richard George. Oliver Slatter in the Ginita G15 uh, follows him. Uh, it, this is uh, one of the uh, few cars that we have here based on the Ullman Hemp. And uh, this is uh, running 1,000 cc at the back. This is the car, the, the engine that you'll find on the Ullman Hemp. And uh, yeah, very well balanced car. Uh, next up on the hill is Austin Wellman uh, in the Lotus Elise. Uh, this is a 1.8k Rover. This is the Series 1, so the first that came out of the factory. A very simple design. 21st year's anniversary for the uh, Lutus Elise. The Lutus Elise unfortunately has gone out of production uh, since last year, so you can't get one anymore. And the first series are very becoming very sought after now. Uh, the, the lightest of those cars and the purest. Uh, not that the latest model were uh, much heavier than this, but uh, obviously uh, when it comes to weight, uh, any uh, kilos count. It's a 56.19 for Rebecca, uh, for Austin Wellman. Yeah, Austin Wellman, 56.19, no gain on that. We've got uh, Becca Crocom in the uh, Van Diemen, shares his car with Lawrence Marks. We don't want to get them mixed up. This is Becca in the car, so we'll say she for that. And coming up the hill going into Pardon is Jeremy Rivers Fletcher in the Triumph Special. Why is it special? It's the only one that exists. And so uh, Rebecca did a 52.31, so four tenths slower. And um, yeah, and Joe Mackerel is, is launched off the line in the, the double-driven Tiga. He's actually up on times at the moment. And Peter Hockey has just left the line in a Renault Clio RS200. We're, we are hitting the Bugatti Owners Club Handicap uh, Championships. So they're, they're basically trying to prove them their personal best. Uh, it is spot one of the the saloon one is sponsored by New Barn. We thank him very much for the continued support. And Joe Mackerel did a 44.79, and actually has gone 1.3 seconds quicker and took the lead from Tom Brown in the, there. So there's a there's a turnaround. Um, so yeah, the New Barn Arsini Club is on the screen. You've got a Clio, so I'll let you talk. 
yes, uh, the clear already uh, through the S's. Uh, so this is uh, the distinctive plate. So this is clear FTD for fastest time of the day. Not sure it'll be the fastest time of the day, but uh, they've been campaigning this car for a few seasons now, and they're, they're always running uh, in you know the top spots. It is we are running towards a handicap, so they are try to get as close uh, towards their best time. It's a 58.19. I'm going to take a quick look at uh, how this is looking like against the um, handicap time. Nothing official. I'm just uh, going through the uh, information that I have on my screen here. I don't think I have an handicap time for this car, but quickly follow. Uh, we have um, Patrick Hadley already on the track in this beautiful Morgan Plus 8. This is a V8 Rover, 3.9 litre, a very beautiful car. Uh, if, believe it or not, there's uh, pieces of wood on that car that form parts of the chassis of that car. Uh, Morgan has been manufacturing car uh, since the start of the last century. They're still manufacturing those cars and uh, they update them, modernize them uh, to the latest uh, spec and safety features. And you can get one still from the factory, 54.16, uh, Patrick Hadley in the Morgan Plus 8. Yeah, so that's an improvement on his time there. So that's good, he'd be happy with that. Uh, we've got a couple cars gone slower. So Richard Morris is on the lot in, in front of you in the completely unmodified Mazda MX-5 because in hill climbing, you can run a completely unmodified car. Or you can, you know, if you want to do a little tweak to it here and there uh, within the rules, you're allowed to do that in the class. So, but it's a great place to start. And there's a Renault Clio RS on Rob Gutteridge. So Ben will start babbling on. So Richard Morris did in the M MX-5 did a 59.53, so a slight improvement. Rob Gutteridge in the, oh, he's got racing stripes on, so it'll go quicker. Uh, he's looking to improve on a 62. So I wonder there. And then Stuart Diaper, who's the fastest class in the caterham, he's on the hill as well, Ben. Yeah, uh, French Hot Hatch is probably the second thing to come out of France after uh, you'll guess who. I'm not going to say it. Um, but Rob uh, Gutridge is uh, looking for a time of a 62.17 is his handicap and target time. Uh, he got really close to that uh, in his previous run, a 62.34. Uh, so. Uh, 63.42, a little bit slower for Rob on his last run today. Uh, on today, uh, Start Diaper already is through uh, at the top of the hill, uh, already through semi circles, going through uh, the finish straight. Let's see what time a 46.76, great time for him. Uh, two tenths almost quicker than his uh, previous run this morning. Yeah, Tim Stokes in the Suzuki Swift Sport is coming through S's. You know why you can read the computer screen, Ben? Because you have still have eyesight. I'm not. I need reading glasses and a magnifying glass to read that. So I'm going with the paper model. Anyway, just thought I'd get that in. Tim Stokes is heading up the top. He's looking to improve on a 56.87, which was his first time run. He might just do that. Let's see what he does. Uh, no. Uh, yeah, 57.40. So no improvement. A little bit slower. Jonathan Elwood, first re first year racing in these Honda Civic Type R. Uh, relatively no modification. I think he's got an air filter and a sport exhaust on this, which you're allowed to do in the class, but nothing else. So he's looking to improve on a 58.54. And I've got George Perks with another Renault Clio keeping Ben occupied down in Pardon. Yes, uh, the new Bon uh, Championship uh, here run by the Bugatti's Owners Club is a great way to get into hill climbing. And if you just want to have uh, a go first and uh, not too sure what you can run, uh, well, it's a great way to get into the sports. You get to uh, compete against yourself first and then uh, before you can start competing against others uh, as you were to go up through the ladder of the different championship. George Perks uh, through the finish line of 54.51, uh, quickly followed by Colin Richards, already through the exit of Pardon in this beautiful MG Midget. So this is a 1380cc engine, so a little bit more uh, capacity than what you would find usually at the time. I think the, uh, the biggest capacity engine on that car was a 1275. If you had a Mini in your time, you'll recognize all of that. It's the same engine at the front, but it's not a front-wheel drive car. It's pushing the um, cars, the wheels at the back, and he's going through the finish straight, the 6135 for Colin. And last but not least, Lawrence Marks. We saw Becca Colcom go up the hill. 
in the car. They swap drivers, and Lawrence is heading up the hill. Stay with us, folks. The top 12 runoff is going to be coming up shortly. So Lawrence here, and we've got, oh, sorry, we've got some more cars. Uh, I got Maggie Richards in an RS200 on the line, ready to go. Uh, Lawrence did a 5059 the first time. So he's kind of leading the class on the uh, on scratch time, but it is a handicap class, so there'll be a handicap applied to this. And he's done a 5083, so a couple of tenths slower, but a nice tidy little run. He'll be happy. I know they both uh, they were last minute uh, on the reserve, and they said, "Oh, you know, you can come if you want. We've got a room." So they made uh, they got it all here and everything, and they've had a good weekend. Maggie Richards in the Renault Clio RS200. This is actually, I believe, Mrs. Ian Richards if I'm not mistaken. And uh, so she's got her own car. She told the boys to stay away from it, although I think she did lend it to them one day when the clutch went out on the other car. But anyway, she's up the hill coming towards you. Yes, uh, Maggie is looking for a target time of 58.11. So uh, actually, I think she's beat that time in the first run in the 57.71. So Maggie going well in this uh, Clio. Let's see what she can do. Up through the feeling straight, up through the gears, and off the... Uh, finish line 57.62 yeah so that uh does that uh, actually a quicker time on improvement so uh yeah of course car going up we are preparing for the showdown and it is a showdown i'm going to call it a showdown all gloves are off Wallace Mengis, I'm just going to call it. Someone else is going to throw this all up. But Wallace Mengis and Scott versus Scott Moran, they qualified with one hundredth of a second between them. And I'm just going to do a reverse order here. Uh, Qualifying-wise, um, Sean Gould will be going first because he's actually a double-driven car with Matthew Ryder. So he'll be first, but he qualified somewhere about eighth. But Jonathan Varley, Alex Summers, and David Warburton, all sort of the small engine cars, or Alex with his new engine car, have all made it into the top 12 runoff. You want to go through the list there, Ben? Yes, I'll give you uh, the uh, qualifying uh, time in, in reverse order. So starting with John Varley again, uh, great uh, achievement for John qualifying into another runoff with a 37.65. Uh, next up we've got Alex Summers, a 37.54, so we'll be pleased to make it to the second runoff of the day. Davy Wilburton and the uh, Gold Gios 59, a 37.17. Jack Cottrell in the Dallara, a 37.14. And then Sean Gould, as you've mentioned Owen before, a 36.63, which is qualifying time, so the first driver under this 30 seconds uh, time. Paul Hames in the 1300 GR59 turbocharge engine, 36.35. Same time for Trevor Willis, a 36.35 again. Then we're getting into Will Hall in the EGR59, the all carbon edition, 36.19. Tying in the same time, David Uren, 36.19 in the GR55. Another great achievement for David, uh, running uh, six last time last season in the championship. Matt Ryder, number five, uh, 36.14, third qualifier. Scott Moran, 35.63. And as you've mentioned, there wasn't much between the two. At the top, Wallace Meninges, 35.62 uh, was his qualifying time. Thank you very much, Ben. Right, uh, I'm starting to see, it looks like Sean Gould is getting into his car now. If you're watching uh, live on stream, uh, that's the sort of the maroony red car to the right. You'll see he's the only one sitting in the car at the moment. The drivers are actually waiting to the last second to get in the car. Um, update on our on our subscriber drive, uh, Ben. 9,706. I want to shout out to everybody that's clicked the subscribe button. Thank you very much. Um, if you've already subscribed, thanks for joining us. Hope you're enjoying the coverage. Um, and yeah, we've got the real close. We've got a runoff where two pairs of qualifiers qualified on identical times. It's absolute craziness how close the cars are this afternoon. Um, so first to second was one, 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 one hundredth. 
Uh, and then third, fourth, and fifth were only point, uh, sorry, five one hundredths of a second. And then we've got, well, nothing. And then we've got a couple of hundredths again between Jack Quattrall and David Warburton. And, uh, yeah, and it just goes on and on. It is an absolute tight field. Anybody, I'd say probably 8 out of 12 cars in this runoff can win this. I'm going to stick my neck out on a limb here. 8 out of 12. No offense to the other four, but they just haven't quite got, I, it's going to be the 35s. We are going to be in the 35s. The outright, uh, Ben, you're my status, status, you got all the numbers. Um, what is the outright track record here? Outright track record here, um, held by uh, Wallace, is a 34.65. Uh, it doesn't have to, you know, um, snatch that time today, but I'm sure we'll be trying in this last uh, runoff. So, yeah, I think uh, I was just looking at the quickest time uh, in the first runoff uh, posted uh, here, and we had a 34.95, so we got uh, close to that time, about three tenths by Matt Ryder, uh, who uh, was equal on time with Scott Maroon. So uh, let's see if uh, how it goes, but it might be that uh, some of the top drivers need uh, the points. Uh, we might have a new champion in the name of Wallace Menges, but uh, there's still points to awards for the rest of the year, and this is um, the last runoff we will have two more at Lotton Park at the end of the season and obviously uh, you want to try and get the best number on your car for the next season. Yeah there is a, a still I think a close battle in the middle of the numbers uh, territory. Um, I will say if you're on Facebook and you're following all of this if you go over to Hill Climb UK Facebook page uh, which Rich also, also runs um, he puts all of the points and everything else on there so he will have updates and will tell you exactly where it's going on and what's going on also the british hill climb championship website um has got all the latest reports and news and everything else on there as well so you can read all about the stories and and what's going on right sean gould's car has been wheeled to the start line uh, at the beginning of the tire warming section. He will be first up. He's got to go up the hill, bring it back down, and they've got to reset the car for Matt Ryder to get in the car. Okay. It is warm, so they're going to keep an eye on the engine temps on these things, but uh, they've got ways of cooling them down. There will be fans flying around and generators back there. So is um, Caroline Ryder, who was racing in the Formula Ford and is Matt's mom, is actually... One of, the, one of the helpers brushing the rucks off the tires, pulling up to the start line now. And tire warms up. We're on the line. Here we go, folks. I'll try to give you uh, the times. As, as I'll try to make sure everybody knows what the times are so you keep track. I'm on a slight delay on the coverage but to the live, but not enough. So just here we go. Sean Gould. GR59JB, the Gould creator, if you will. Visor down, ready to go, and he's off the line, and off he goes to Dan with a 2.0164 foot. Hits it under the bridge, 108 miles an hour, hits through Orchard. Comes down into a Tory, brings it around right now. We've got no split times because he's the first car on the hill, so he's actually the target everyone else will be chasing. Up into Pardon, around Pardon he goes. No hiccups this time, right up against that wall on the outside. Didn't touch it, everything's okay there. Through the S's, over the curbing, around the corner right now. Out of the S's, up into semicircle. Around semicircle, here we go. Sorry, Tom Brothers, my voice, everybody squeers on it. Across the line with a 36.16, 36.16. There's the target, time for everyone else to go for. And let's see if Sean can hold any of them off or how many he can hold off. So, right, next up, Jonathan Varley in the two-liter GWR Predator. So, uh, under two-liter, so he's got the little car, nimble car, got it into the top 12 again. Can he get a point? 
That's his next target. He is actually one of the, he was, coming into this weekend, they were tied, three of them, Jonathan and two others were tied in the British Hill Climb Cup. Um, by getting into the runoff and actually setting a class record, he's gained a point there somewhere. So here's his target. Can he actually beat Sean Gould in a twice plus horsepower car with half the car? We're about to find out. Here we go. Off the line he goes. Launch control 2.07 on the 64 foot. Comes under the bridge, 104 miles an hour. Heads into Orchard. Through Orchard, comes into the Tories. Out of the Tories again. Kept on it, right up into Pardon. No problem so far. He's one second down on Sean Gould at the moment. Up out of Pardon, heads through Midway. Towards the S's, Midway's 1.53 down. Into the S's he goes, 1.81 down. Don't remember folks, he's got less than half the horsepower going here. Two seconds down. But he wants to the other cars he'll be trying to beat. So across the line with a 38.29, a 38.29. That's actually slower than his qualifying time. Will that hold enough for him to get an actual British Hill Climb Championship point? Wait and see, we got 10 more competitors. Next up, Alex Summers in the AFSP4T. Qualified for its second runoff in the world in the, in the row. He was chuffed when he got it into the first runoff. Can he get a point? I asked him earlier today. The point there, he just happy that it comes back in one piece. I know he wants a point. He's point one one up off the start already under the bridge, 102 miles an hour, heading through Orchard. A little bit of a drift, no problem there. Gets into a Tory. Heads out the other side, down into Pardon. Let's see what the split is with Sean Gould. He's only down 0.44. Around, out of Pardon he goes. Heads across Midway, into the S's. Only 0.89 down at Midway. This is a pretty good run. One second down at the S's, so he's still holding his own here. 0.94 at Semi, he's actually gained a little bit. Cross, out the other side. 37.35, uh, that puts him second uh, ahead of Jonathan Varley. Right, next up, we've got David Warburton in a 1600cc car. This is, this is absolute David versus Goliath. David needed some points earlier today in the top 10 to get to number 10. He doesn't think he'll get to number nine, but he needs to maintain it. He's, he, he was 11th, he's now 10. That covered at number 10 is what he's after. He needs to maintain results. Here he goes off the line, 1.96. 0 0.06 off the 64 foot. Here we go. Through Orchard, 104 miles an hour. Heads into Torres right now, out the other side. Right on it, winding this rubber band in this engine as much as he can, gets it in the part. Little hesitation under braking, but no problem, carries it. Only 0.39 down on Sean Gould. At Midway, he's only 0.59 down. He's gained some. At S's, he's only 0.54 down. A little bit of drift coming out of the S's. 0.58 down in semicircle. This is an absolute ripper of a time. Heads across the line with a 36.74. Only six tenths behind Sean Gould in the big engine, big car absolute stellar drive let's see where he ends up he's currently second so can he get hold it there or can he stay in the top five I would say let's go with top five can he get stay in the top five right Jack Cottrell's on the line and the Dallara Cosworth Jack qualified with a 37 14 he's gonna need a, he's gonna be looking for a 36 to get a good result here it's still balanced we've got 12 cars hunting for 10 points Position. He's off the line with 0.12 down at the 64 foot. 106 miles an hour uh, coming into Orchard. Heads into a Tory. Not a wheel gone wrong. Just went around the inside on the ground. Just a touch a little bit. No problem. Up into Pardon. He goes around Pardon. 0.24 down at Pardon. Heads into Midway. Through Midway to the S's. Still only 0.24 down on Sean Gould. He's S's, he's only 0 .40 down on Sean Gould. He's making a run of this, 0.53 down in semi. Can he get a time? Can he hang on to it? 36.55, way below his qualifying time. Second place at the moment behind Sean Gould. Next up, we have 
Car four, Trevor Willis. In the OMS 28, the only, I think it's the only, um, I'll shut up on that one. Right, just ready to go. They're pulling the tire covers off. Uh, the car's rolled to the line at the beginning of the tire warming thing. He's getting set. We've got the tinted visor on for this. The sun is setting here. We've got some weird reflections coming on. We've actually, believe it or not, we've got Alan Warburton, David's dad, and I think that might be Archie Cooper helping out as well from the Coopers. So um, all the teams help each other. It, this is what it's all about. Just got one of the tire cars. There he goes. Right. So Trevor Willis is running. Give him a little shove. Into the tire warming box we go. Couple of three short squirts there. He's gone with the, uh, just uh, the hop, skip, and the jump. Right, on the line. He's look, gonna be looking for, ah, he's gonna be looking for a 35 here. What did he qualify with? Trevor, he qualified with a 36, 35. He's gonna need a 35, I think, if he's gonna wanna get into the top three here. So let's see what he can do. OMS 28, visor down. Car launches, shakes like crazy, off the line it goes, and it's 0 .08 up on 64 foot time. So amazing launch, 105 miles an hour into Orchard, into the shade, comes out in the sun a little bit, gets it around the Tory. No problem there, back on the throttle, full throttle, right up, sparks coming up, going into Pardon. Rocks the left front up, oh, takes him wide a little bit, back end skidded around, he's still on it. 0 .20 up, he's still going, this is an absolute drive this. 0 0.02 up, heading into semi. He's gained some, 0 0.12 up on Sean Gould. Heads across the line, 0 0.40 up with a 35.76. Guys, you gotta watch that run. That was, that was a, a recovery job and a half. Brilliant drive by Trevor. Next up, the smallest engine car in the runoff. 1,300 cc's with the biggest hair dryer you ever saw. I don't know how big it is, but it's turbocharged. Number eight in the, in the championship last year. This is Paul Haynes, Gould GR59. Got the latest chassis, but he's gone with the 1300 turbocharged. Got the bugs out of it, been fighting gremlins in the past. It works, this car works. He qualified at a 36-35. And uh, this could be interesting. Let's see where he can end up here. Visor down. Tracks green. It's up to him. In gear he goes. Set. Race mode engaged. Thumping, vibrating. You can see the heat, the haze coming off of it. Launches off the line. 0.38 down on the 64 foot. But he's all a high winder. This one 110 miles an hour. Just about touch the grass at Orchard. No problem there. Gets it around the other side. Heads up for Pardon. Up into Pardon, let's see what he goes. Gets a slow day down, no problem there. Drifts it coming out of Pardon, but not lost anything. 0.78 down at Pardon. 0.64 down at Midway. 0.45 down at the S's. He's actually making up time. It's a high winder engine. He'll make up the time at the high revs. 0.51 at Semi. Can he get it there? Cross the line, a 36.42, 36. That's a 36.42. That's uh, for Paul Haynes, puts him into third. Quick review, Trevor Willis is a 35.76. Sean Gould, 36.16. Paul Hames, 36.42. Jack Cottrell, 36.55. David Warburton, 36.74. Alex Summers, 37.35. Jonathan Varley, 38.29. That's where we're at. We still got five runners and riders to go. David Uren's on the line, qualified fifth this time, tied with actually Will Hall, was fastest qualified the first time. Little mistake, lost him that. Let's see if he can make up for it. Launches off the line, 0.18 down on the 64 foot, that's not a problem. Under the bridge, 113 miles an hour. Slides it through Orchard, ah, back in, got it, he got it back again. Round, uh, where are we, pardon, yeah, we're hitting the pardon now, sorry about that. Around part and he goes, keeps it going. He's not letting his foot off. This is an attack and a half. He's up 0.26 at midway. He's up on Trevor Willis. He's up 0.27 at the S's. He's heading into semicircle. 0.29 up at the moment. He's ahead on Trevor Willis. He's gonna possibly get him. Can he do it? Yes, he can, a 35.60. That's a 35.60. 
0.16 quicker. I told you folks this battle was going to get interesting. David Uren has taken the top spot. It's 35s or nothing. Looks like it's going to get in there. We've got two of them. We know Scott and Wallace qualified with a 35. Can Will Hall and Matthew Ryder go quicker? Will Hall's car, he just pulled the line and it shut off on him. We'll just get that started quickly. We, they use jump batteries on these just to get them going. So if you're watching on camera, you'll see uh, the, his helper just going to plug it back in again. It just makes sure we don't drain the battery in the car. Right, there it goes. Sounded like it was like a, a bit grumpy. A little bit of fuel in the cylinders because it stalled a bit. No problem, he's all cleared up. He's gone with the clear visor on this. Race mode engaged and he's gone. 0 0.01 and 64 foot down. That is an issue at all. 116 miles an hour heading into Orchard. Absolutely flying here. Let's see what he can do. Around the tall he goes up the hill into Pardon. No hesitation. Obviously, it's like it's on rail. 0 0.06 up at the moment on David Uren. Heads into the S's there. Through midway. Absolutely even with David Uren. In the S's, he's gained 0 0.05 of a second. Heading up into semicircle. He's 0 0.08 down. He's lost some. He's lost some. Can he make it back up again? He's heading across the line. 35.75. No, David Uren hung on. Will Hall is in the second place, a hundredth behind, ahead of Trevor Willis. Here we go. This is, we may have to go to three decimal points to decide this one. Right, Matt Ryder tied for the win at the last runoff with Scott Moran on a 35.70, uh, I think it was a 35.75. Right, he needs to do better than that if he wants this one. Qualified with a 36.14. Here goes Matt. Head down. Shares this car with Sean Gould. Sean still holding fourth in this car at the moment. He's off the line and there he goes. 0.12 on the 64 foot. That's nothing. Heads over 109 miles an hour through Orchard. How far can he carry it? All the way into Torres. Gets on the brake car. Gets it rotated around. No problem. Out the other side. Heads into Pardon. Up into Pardon, no problem on the braking. Gets it rotated around, out the other side. He's actually up 0 0.08 at Pardon. He's up 0.17 at Midway. He's up, he's gained another 0.27 at S's. Heading for semicircle. Up again, 0.38. This is going to be quick. This is going to take the fast time. Cross the line. 35.17, 35.17. That was 0.43 faster than David Uren. He takes the lead. He's now under the qualifying time for Scott Moran and Wallace Mengis. Speaking of that, but here's Scott Moran. Are we going to see a 34? They can do it. Let's see what happens. We've got Matt Ryder on a 35-17. He's laid down a marker. We've got Scott and Wallace. They got not there. They are going for this. Is all for pride and joy on this one. Bragging rights is what's going on. Scott's 111 miles an hour hitting through Orchard. He's right into a Tories already. Gets the car turning absolutely spot on the rails. Hits up into Pardon. Up into Pardon he goes. Gets it slowed down. Rotates real quickly. That thing is stuck to the ground. He is on it right now. But he's down 0.11. Midway, he's only down. He's made up some. He's ahead by 0.01 in the S's. Comes out of the S's. What's he going to do in semicircle? Still only up 0.01. This is going to be close, folks. Across the line. 35.01. 35.01. He just knocked 0.16 off of Matt Ryder's time. There you go, Wallace. You want it, you're going to have to take it. So here we go. Wallace's odds are, if he pulls this off, this will be a 34. If he wants to win, he can do this. The pressure's off on the championship. He's going through his routine, making sure all, everything's good, safety equipment's in place, that he's comfortable, he's happy. Visor's down, race mode is on, and he's gone. Let's see what he can do. Pretty much even at the uh, 64 foot. 112 miles an hour through Orchard. Here he goes. Comes into a Tory. 
not a wheel wrong here. Get to the round. Stay a little bit wider than Scott did on Tories, but he's all carrying speed up in the pardon. Can he get it rotated quickly? Oh, yes, he can. He's 0 .07 up at pardon. Going into midway. He's 0 .23 down. He's behind. He's lost. He's gained a little bit. He's 0.18 behind at the S's. Can he make it up? Semi, 0.29 down. I don't think he's going to do it. What's he got at the end? Here we go. 35.51. Only third place. Scott Moran takes it with a 35.01. That's a 3.501. I'll run through the times quickly. Scott Moran, 3.501. Matthew Ryder, 3.517. Wallace Menges, 3.5.51. David Uren, 35.60. Will Hall, 35.75. Trevor Willis, 35.76. Sean Gould, 36.16. Paul Haynes, 36.42. Jack Cottrell, 36.55. David Warburton, 36.74. Scored another point for Dave Warburton. Alex Summers and Jonathan Varley, they finish out the top 12. Well, there you go, folks. Big news from the weekend. I hope you've enjoyed the coverage. Wallace Menges is the British champion for 2023. Scott Moran has actually won both runoffs today. Um, we've got Jonathan Varley qualified for both. Alex Summers got the AFSP4T qualified twice for the runoffs. He's over the moon with that. That is as close as you get. I hope you folks um, enjoy this. Uh, stay tuned online. There is going to be a runoff championship top 10 photo. Three car lap of honor championship top 10 photo after this. So stay tuned. There's a little more coverage to finish up from a competition side. It's all good. Uh, Benoit, do you want to say anything before we sign off, sir? Yeah, what a fantastic runoff. Uh, I was watching the different time, and Wallace was a little bit slower coming out of uh, Pardon, so that's where I think he lost the time compared to Scott. Uh, but a great effort from all of those drivers uh, today. I'd like to call out Trevor Willis. I think he will be my driver of the day. Uh, improved this time from uh, in this second runoff by over, almost a second uh, compared to the first runoff this morning. So tremendous effort. A great drive from Trevor. Great to see. I'd like to... Uh, uh, be uh, for the underdog and Trevor has been doing this real well today uh, so yeah thank you for all tuning in uh, whether you were online or live uh, if you'd like to come back here at Prescott well I'll run you through what we have uh, left for the season it's not over yet uh, in the 23rd and 24th of September actually the 23rd will be the uh, vintage sport car club so if you like your pre-war cars then uh, come and have a look at this. It's going to be a great one. This is uh, running the long course uh, in the 23rd of September. That'll be the Saturday. And uh, on the 24th, it'll be a car club day. And then uh, there's uh, two more events uh, to finish the season here at Prescott. Uh, the 7th of October uh, is the hill climb season finale. Um, so this will be uh, the last run for all of the uh, competitors. And then we've got something a bit special on the 4th of November is Rally Prescott. So a lot of rally cars if you like your rally cars they'll be running all day up until the late into uh, the afternoon early evening up until eight o'clock and it'll be wonderful to see the cars racing at night with the uh, lights on uh, later today yeah thank you ben um as for the british hill climb championship round there's one more weekend to go it's loton park in three weeks so um if you're around and about and you want to see the big guys again, finish the season off, there is still some, still some uh, unfinished business in, uh, between, uh, for the top 10 plus class championships to be had. So there's still a lot to go there. Um, I'm going to leave you now. I hope you enjoyed the afternoon. So on behalf, on, on behalf of Benoit, on Chris Ponsford, and myself, Owen Kuehl, uh, we thank you very much for your attention, and I hope you enjoyed everything you've seen. Uh, if you're online, stay tuned. There will be some uh, pictures, etc., of what's going on here. But at the moment, I'm going to sign off. So thank you very much from time. Wallace Mangues is doing a parade lap uh, British Championship. So there we go, three-car lap. Uh, honor. We should have two more. 
Matthew Ryder is now coming out, so I'll stay with you here, folks. And we should have uh, one more. I'm thinking Scott should be out here somewhere. Yes, uh, they're probably uh, firing the car, but what a great sight to see Wallace. Uh, Running at a more Here center. he comes, here seven, he comes. Yeah, the pace uh, this time. Uh, yeah. yeah, quickly followed by Matt Ryder. Here, here's your top three cars in the championship, I believe. And um, yeah, what a battle. But don't think they've given up. It's bragging rights at the last round. They will be there, and there will be elbows out, uh, leaving on the top. So uh, a shout out to the marshals at the Tories for basically hogging all the work from all the other marshals today. Um, they, you guys have done a stellar job. All the rescue crews, all the volunteers, all the marshals, and um, yeah. our timing, our timing uh, team, and everybody that's put this show on. Thank you very much, guys. And um, if you're still listening to us in at Prescott, uh, safe trip home. Okay, uh, be safe, and we'll see you at, a, at an event down the road. So from me. It's uh, Sayonara, and from Benoit, it's adios because, well, he's French. <laughs> <laughs> Take care. Buenas tardes, uh, everyone. Oh, yeah, I'll cut to you now. Okay, thank you. There shouldn't be much to come down. Right, Rich. Yeah, uh, this is fly, by the way, at the moment. Yeah, well done. Yeah, we'll have to do it here, Wally. Yeah. Yeah.
Sorry. Even for a weekend. <laughs> <laughs> Is he? 
Thank you very much for what you've done for all the whole time and all year, Rich. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't drop that. <laughs> <laughs> that, 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 that I guess, but, you can afford to fish. Yes. Come on, come on. I'm buggering off.
Yeah. I just need to shut this off. But. Cheers. We'll sort some now. Motorsport UK TV, the home of unmissable British motorsport video. Bringing you all the action from the British Championships. Taking you behind the scenes giving you top tips to succeed in every discipline. Showcasing the best equipment. And much, much more. Visit motorsportuk.tv today and make sure you never miss a moment. Motorsport UK TV, the home of unmissable British motorsport video. We'd like to take this opportunity to introduce our live stream partner for today's British Hill Climb Championship and Cup meeting, Footman James. BHC Cup main sponsors, Footman James, have been at the heart of the classic vehicle movement for over 35 years and provide specialist classic vehicle insurance cover to owners, collectors, restorers and traders. Their classic car and classic bike insurance policies come with show and events cover as standard. Plus. You can tailor your policy to suit your needs with their flexible FJ Plus options. These options have everything from agreed value to track day cover. To find out more, please visit www.footmanjames.co.uk.